Hello, hello, is this thing on? What happened? Hmm. Some technical difficulties going on on my side. Okay, I'm trying to get the music playing. Okay, I think I, I think I got it. Oh, cool! We already got somebody in the chat. Kiram C J N. Hello, welcome to the live stream. Okay, I'm just gonna be getting everything ready on my end. Uh, let me know if you can hear and see me on your end before I get started. Also, gonna give some other people the opportunity to join as we. Uh, continue to get set up here. I can see you and hear you. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. So, microphone and camera are working. Um, I think the music might be a little too loud. Hold on, let me turn it down a little bit. Okay, that seems fine. Shouldn't be too distracting. When are you going to do a deck on Landorus EX from 2014? Um, that was printed, right? But I think it was a 2015 deck, if I remember correctly. Was there also a 2014 version? Or am I just remembering it wrong? But yeah, I have been um, waiting to do a Landorus battle for a while now. Uh, somebody told me they wanted to do um, a webcam battle. It was another YouTuber who wanted to do a webcam battle using Landorus and a different deck. So we've been trying to get that set up for a while now. That's why I haven't showcased it. Um, okay, what else do I need? Okay, I got my decks. I've got the sleeves here. Make sure to have some water with me because I'm going to be on this for a while. Let me just... Oh, hey, Vanguard Metrics. Welcome back. There was a 2014 version featuring Raichu from XY Base and Mewtwo and Garbodor from Dragons Exalted. Oh, you know what? I have seen that version. I think the, the one that I saw was called Raichu and Friends or something, where Raichu is a pretty good attacker. I forget what the attack name is called, but I think it does 20 for every Pokemon on the bench or something like that. Yeah, I actually I have most of those cards except for the Landorus itself. Okay, I'm just posting to Twitter that I'm live now, so just spreading some spreading the word out there. So maybe we might get some more people, but we are also um, competing for airtime with the Orlando Regional Championship, so. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be watching that right now, too. Just a second, just a second. Sorry, my tablet is acting up right now. And posted. Okay. You became my favorite YouTuber because the top cut left March of 2015. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we do our best to make some uh, high quality, or at the very least entertaining um, matches here on our channel. Your video gives me vibes of the top cut. Oh, cool, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we're gonna be keeping it going for, I don't know, as long as people enjoy watching our videos, we're gonna keep the channel going. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So last time, for the people that were here, we stopped off after finishing the 2010 decks. So we're going to be starting off with 2011 for today. All right, so we're going to be starting off with the Reshiram Typhlosion deck. I've got it right here. Vanguard Metric says, gosh, I'm still sad the top cut ended. Puka just had to go to work for TPCI. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I, before I started the, the channel, I used to watch a lot of their content, too. So I'm glad we're still here to kind of fill that niche. Which one am I doing? Here we go. Okay, so interesting story back in 2011. This is actually the, the version of the deck that I used when I was competing. I didn't get the invite to go to Worlds during this year, but I did go to the, what's it called, the Last Chance Qualifier, also known as the Grinder. Um, I didn't make it very far. I think I won, I think, the first two rounds, and then I lost. I don't remember what I lost against, but <laughs> a lot of people were running this deck because it was, like, really cheap to make and really simple to use. Just use Typhlosion to power up Reshiram and just attack. It's for 120 damage every turn, or more if you're using the, uh, what's it called, plus powers. So it's a pretty consistent deck. I wish that the the one that got printed also ran the Ninetales with the Roast Reveal, but this version only has Reshiram and Typhlosion, and a couple of Cleffa too, just to help draw some cards in the early game. Let's see. Oops. Puka would got me hooked back into competitive scene back in 2012 during the black and white era. Yeah, that's kind of when I started competing in Pokemon events. Um, because prior to that, I mean, I was still collecting Pokemon cards. I just wasn't playing competitively. I was actually really into Yu-Gi-Oh! around that time. For any Yu-Gi-Oh! players. Um, I played during the beginning of the Synchro formats in Yu-Gi-Oh! But then Yu-Gi-Oh! got like, really crazy expensive, so I just decided to drop out of Yu-Gi-Oh! and get back into Pokemon. So this is around the area, era that I got back into it competitively. We need more coverage of local events. I love those videos. Yeah, I don't really do a whole lot of uh, that kind of coverage. Well, actually, I've never done it at all on my channel. I do go to... There's a local league here in my city. I, I go to it every now and then, but I don't do any coverage. That's just, you know, for me to have fun. And it's pretty cool, too, because at the beginning of every month, they have a learn-to-play event, you know, just to teach kids how to play the Pokemon TCG. So I go um, I go volunteer a lot there. I used to be a certified Pokemon professor back in 2014, 2015. But then um, I had to stop because I went to, I started going to graduate school, so I couldn't really do much of anything because being a grad student was basically a full time job. And then once I finished grad school, I, I never got my professor certification again. I've been thinking about it, but I'm, I'm just too busy nowadays to put in that kind of commitment. I don't know if we're going to have enough sleeves to finish up the rest of this deck, so I'll have to open a, another box pretty soon. It's okay, we got plenty. Is the lighting okay? Yeah, the lighting's fine. Last week I had the window open next to me just to get some natural sunlight, but it's, uh, it's a pretty rainy day out here today. There's not a whole lot of sunlight, so I'm just using um, light in here in my room. I was kind of worried that we might get a bad glare. So there's a bit of a glare on the sleeves over here on the left, but the cards themselves are okay. So that's good. Oh, Pokemon Collector. This card is so good. Just search your deck for three basic Pokemon. Add them to your hand. I think this card would be really good in today's format. I mean, we have stuff like Buddy Buddy Poffin, but that puts the Pokemon directly onto your bench. Plus, you can only search 
uh, 70 HP or less. So it's pretty restrictive. And Pokemon Collector is just, I think, better overall. I mean, it is a supporter, so you can only use one of these per turn. But since they go to your hand, if they have any coming into play abilities, they do get to activate. But I don't know. That might be a little too good. Do you want to give some decks um, too good of a setup? But I don't know. I just like that card overall. Landora CX, Mewtwo EX, Raichu, and Dredagon from Flash Fire, one of the US Nationals 2014. Yeah, that Dredagon is actually pretty good. It's the one with the revenge attack, right? You give it a double colorless, and then if one of your Pokemon was KO'd on the previous turn, it does extra damage. I think I used that Dredagon in, um, I have a 2014 version of Pyroar Charizard EX, and it also runs uh, a Dredagon. So it is a pretty good card. Rain in April, man. I can't stand it. It's raining here in SoCal as well. Oh, you're from SoCal? That's pretty cool. I used to be from there. I grew up in Orange County. And now I'm living in Oregon. Oops. Sorry to slip over here. All those cards only rely on one energy, which was the DCE and one fighting energy. Yeah, DCE is such a crazy good special energy card. I think it's too good, which is why they had to nerf it with the double turbo energy. Just make it do 20 less damage. Because, I don't know, attaching two energy per, per turn, essentially, it, I think it's a little too good. So they really needed a nerf. But even Double Turbo Energy is still really good, especially in Arceus decks and stuff like that. Okay, just finished another deck. Let me just put the Restoram on top. So we got the first deck of 2011 finished. Oh, there we go. Come on. There we go, next deck. This is the Yon Mega Zone deck. With a couple of King Droids. It's a pretty fun deck. Yon Mega in the early game uses Poke Body Insight. You can attack for free if you have the same number of cards as your opponent does in hand. So you just use cards like Copycat to have the same number of cards as they do. In the meantime, while well, Yon Mega's attacking, power up a Magna Zone. Lost Burn can hit for um, unlimited damage, just depending on how many energy cards you sent to the Lost Zone 50 times. So it can pretty much one-hit KO anything. And then Kingdra is there just to add extra damage with his Spray Splash attack. Pretty fun deck to use. The Yon Mega Prime was pretty much everywhere back in that format. It was such a good attacker being able to attack for free, so it can... Attack head-on with Sonic Boom for 70 damage, or Snipe the Bench with Linear Attack for 40 damage, so you can pretty much take the KOs against benched baby Pokemon, like the Cleffa, Pichu, or uh, Tyrogue. Oh, now we're starting to get a bit of a glare. Okay. I think if I put the cards off to this side, there won't be much of a glare. I've been trying to build some more decks from around this area, the 2011, 2012. And a lot of decks run the Yon Mega Prime. I actually just picked one up yesterday. I went down to uh, one of the local card shops here. And I found a Yon Mega Prime in pretty good condition. So I I picked it up alongside a, uh, what's it called? It's a tag team. Machamp and Marshadow GX tag team. So I got both of those cards. I bought a, a box of Triumphant for my birthday and pulled a Yon Mega when it was almost 100 bucks. Yeah, I know. It was crazy how expensive it got. I wanted to trade it away and got a bottom half of Cresselia Dark Ray Legend. Scammed myself. <laughs> I think in the long term, you ended up getting a, 
a better deal because the Unmega Prime, I mean, they're not that expensive, but the, those Legend cards, they really shot up in price. I'm actually really happy that I picked up um, the entire set back when it was still fairly cheap. Because nowadays, yeah, they're they're crazy how expensive they got. I do have a couple of, um, what are they called, extras. Like, I think I have the, the top half of Ho-Oh, the bottom half of Lugia, and uh, I think the top half of the Kyogre Groudon. So I don't know what to do with those. I don't know if I should just complete um, another set of those or just trade them away. I remember when Mewtwo EX used to be $59.99 back in 2013. That's expensive because I was only making $7 when I was 19 years old. Yeah, back in the day when you needed to have like three Mewtwo per deck just to compete. Yeah, pretty much every single one of the 2012 um, World Championship decks, the ones that got printed, I think they all ran at least three Mewtwo EX. Which is ridiculous. It just depended on what uh, you paired with it to accelerate energy. Like there was the Celebi Mut Mewtwo Tornadus deck, which used Celebi for grass energy. There was a dark gray one that used dark patches. Well, I guess you can only use dark patch on dark gray, but I think it also used um, what's it called? Shaman and energy switch to move the energy around. And then there was the Electric Mewtwo deck. Use Electric's Dynamotor to get lightning energy onto Mewtwo. And there's also the Terrakion Mewtwo, which didn't really have energy acceleration. Unless you count the EXP share. When one of the Pokemon is knocked out, you just move its energy to something else on your bench. We're back! Hey, yes! Welcome to the welcome back to the live stream. I did manage to watch uh, some of your videos, and yet <laughs> I, I get what people are saying, that get yourself a Dragonite. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty funny. Get yourself a Dragonite. Now I'm thinking I want to showcase a Dragonite versus Dragonite battle here on my channel. Which deck is this? This is the Yanmega Magnazone deck. Oh, with the Kingdra, so Primes, Prime Pokemon. Use Yon Mega to attack for free with its ability, and then use Magnazone to take big KOs with Lost Burn. And Kingdra can do some uh, chip damage with its ability. Judge, I think this is the first time that Judge got printed in the TCG. And also this this version of it from Heart Gold and Soul Silver, it's really hard to get nowadays, or it's pretty expensive. Which is a shame, because I try to build my decks to be as um, as faithful to the originals. I want to use like the original cards, but if they're too expensive, like uh, I'm, I'd rather just use the newer ones that are cheaper to get. Prime time! We're just about done with this second deck. So, for those of you that don't know or don't remember from last time, after I finish sleeving two decks, I'm going to be opening a booster pack from Temporal Forces. So last week, what, what did I pull last week? Uh, let's see, I got the, I got a gold rare um, iron leaves. I got the alternate art iron leaves. I got the Heroes Cape A spec. Uh, what else? I got Gengar EX. Uh, Walking Wake EX. And I think that's it. That's all I can rem remember anyway. So let's see if we get a second A spec out of the box. Good luck with the polls. Yeah, thanks. I'm still hoping to get another Prime Catcher. 
Walking wig. <laughs> Oh, actually, you know what? Um, pretty cool story. Yesterday, when I was at the one of the card shops, um, they had a bunch of packs from. Oops, so we put Young Mega on top. There was a bunch of Evolving Skies um, booster packs, so I bought a bunch. I bought like forty, so it's more than a box worth. They didn't actually have them sealed in a box; it was just loose packs. I bought 40, one, uh, 40 booster packs, and I got two alternate arts. I got the Glaceon V Max alternate art, and I got Rayquaza V Max. Alternate art. So it was, just, it was a really good deal. I mean, I was kind of hoping to get the Moon on, but you know what? I'm, I'm happy with the ones that I got. Okay, where am I? Hey, there. Okay, next booster pack. Let's see what we get. All right, here we go. Code card and... Frostmoth, Noctowl, Croconaw, Licky Licky, Delmise, Electivire, Chinchina, ooh, set that aside for the Lugia deck, Wiglet, Sawsbuck, ooh, the Dunsparce, that's actually really good too, and a Water Energy, so, okay, not bad, a couple of good colorless Pokemon. Alright, that was our first booster pack of the live stream. Alright, let's keep going with the other two decks. Next up, we've got the runner-up of the World Championships, Ross Cawthon's infamous deck known as The Truth. Trainer locked the opponent with a uh, Vile Plume, and then just had a bunch of different options you can use. Dawn Fan to deal damage with Earthquake. Um, Zekrom, it dealt more damage the more damage it had with the um, taking damage from the Earthquake using um, Outrage on Zekrom. Twins, because you were almost always behind on prizes, use Twins to search your deck for any two cards. You had the Legend card. Where's the other half? Lissy, Reuniclus. What is it? There it is. Suicune Entei Legend. Just a giant Pokemon, 160 HP, was, which was a ton back in the day. And just deal a ton of damage with Torn Blade. A Bursting Inferno. It did have the Rainbow Energy, so you can use either attack. Blissey to heal your Pokemon. Reuniclus, use Damage Swap to move damage around on your side of the field, just to ensure that your Pokemon don't get knocked out. So just a really cool um, setup deck. It did take a little while to get up and running, but once you did, it was almost impossible to stop. It also has Pichu, another one of my favorite Pokemon. Really good attack. Playground. Free attack. And then uh, you and your opponent can just load up your bench on turn one. So pretty good card. You gonna build that cool Lugia deck? Actually, yeah, I've been thinking about making that Lugia one. It does look like fun. Actually, before I started this live stream, I was watching the Orlando Regionals, and there was a um, a match between Lugia and, what was the other one? Ancient Box. I didn't stick around to see the end, but last I saw they were tie at 1-1. Uh, and also time was about to run out, so I don't know if the match ended in a draw or if uh, somebody actually took the, the final game. Yeah, this is one of my favorite decks to use. I just love decks that have a ton of options like this. I don't really showcase it too much because it can get a little one-sided. Um, just when you're going up against trainer lock or item lock decks. And when matches are too one-sided, they don't really make for good content. Because it's just kind of boring to watch one player is doing uh, you know, all the plays while the other one is just draw pass, draw pass. So it can get pretty boring. And that's why I don't really showcase a whole lot of um, lock decks or stall decks. I faced it twice on live last week. And I love how it worked. Oh, the Lugia deck? Yeah. It's cool how Lugia has kind of shifted to a a single prize attacker one because you run a ton of the like the Snorlax and the Chinchinos. I mean, Lugia is a pretty good attacker too, but it does give up two prizes. 
And I just like how it has such a good matchup against um, Stall and like Snorlax. Because he can't really lock you in the active spot because everything in the Lugia deck can attack. So it doesn't matter what they promote active. You're going to knock them out. But what I don't like about Lugia is that because it's weak to lightning, it's, you know, it can be pretty tough going up against the Iron Hands deck. Because they can just um, one-shot you if they have uh, a bunch of the Iron Crown in play. And then they take three prizes for knocking out one Lugia. Okay, just about out of sleeves in this box. I have to go to my next one pretty soon. Yep, that's the last one. Sleep faster, boy! <laughs> Morning! Hey, welcome to the stream, Striken. How you doing today? I heard that it's raining down in, in SoCal. Is that true? In your area? Uh, is there any deck that has Terrakion on it during the early days of 2011 or 2012? Uh, Terrakion? Yeah, the, the Mewtwo EX one that I was talking about earlier had a, has Terrakion in it which I'll be getting to pretty soon after I finish the 2011 decks. Um, what else was there? I think there was a Quad Terrakion EX deck. I don't know too much about it, other than it ran you know, for Terrakion EX. I think it has an attack that... I forget exactly what it's called, but you, you attack with it and you can accelerate energy to your own Pokemon, if I remember correctly. Um, that's the only two Terrakion decks that I know about. It rained pretty hard. Like it rained last night. It rained pretty hard with the wind. Really? It's kind of surprising to hear that SoCal gets any rain because it's, it's been a, such a drought. At least that's what I've been hearing. I don't know. I haven't lived in SoCal for like five years. Hey, that's a Pokemon Go. I'm gonna need to play. I'm gonna need that since I play Pogo. You play with Pogos? Dude, out of the last four weekends, three have rained. Yeah, it's crazy. It's weird how that works. Like, rain somehow knows when it's the weekend. <laughs> because uh, here where I'm living, like, Monday through Friday was just, like, pure sunshine, warm weather. But then Saturday, Sunday, it was just, like, cloudy and gloomy. So, of course, the days that you want to go out, you can't because you're stuck at work. But when you finally have the weekend to go out and do stuff, it starts raining. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how nature works. Sage's training. We kind of got a reprint of this in the form of, uh, what's that one called? Explorer's Guidance. But instead of looking at the top five, you look at the top six cards, keep two, and discard the other four. So it's not really good for too many decks because you'd rather just draw those cards instead of discard them. But it does work in the Ancient Box deck because you can just load up your discard pile with Ancient Cards, which increases the attack power of your Roaring Moon. I just don't want to scrape ice off my car anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem we have here in Oregon. If, we get, if it's really cold overnight, our cars, like, they, they freeze over. So you got to, like, go outside and uh, scrape the ice off the windows before you get to go anywhere. It's pretty annoying. I've been late to work a couple times because of that. I didn't even know that was a thing until the first time I went, I went up to Washington once, like in the middle of February, so it was still winter. I rented a car, and then that happened to me, like the the windshield was just frozen over. Like it didn't snow or rain or anything, it was just like the condensation from the night before. The, 
the windows and like the the door handle they were all just frozen <laughs> i couldn't do anything so i had to i had to take a couple minutes just to scrape ice off everything but now it's just kind of like a common occurrence every winter okay we are finished with uh the truth so i'm gonna put vile plume on top and we got one more deck to go for 2011 let me just put this one away Ink. And last deck. This is the one that won the World Championship by it's by David Cohen. Embor Magnazone. Embor. Attach as many fires as you want from your hand to your Pokemon. Just uh, spread damage. I mean, not damage. Uh, spread energy on your side of the field. Magnazone. Just take giant KOs with Lost Burn. It also runs. Uh, where is it? There's a Legend card. But also Reshiram. Where's the Reshiram? There it is. So Reshiram is another good backup attacker. It's a basic Pokemon. The damage is maxed out at 120 with Blue Flare, but at least you don't have to send your energy to the Lost Zone like you do with Magnazone. And then Rayquaza Deoxys Legend is just a good um, late-game finisher. Use its uh, Poke Body Space Virus when you take a knockout with this Pokemon. You take an extra prize. So a really fun deck to use. All right, let's start sleeving this one up. Black and white formats were cool. Yeah, they were pretty cool. Actually, I, I enjoyed them up until the EX Pokemon came out, like when um, Mewtwo and Darkrai were introduced. I don't know. I kind of, I think uh, the game took a dip in quality because back then you can just run like big stage two Pokemon like these. But then after the EX Pokemon were introduced, it was just big basics. And I prefer formats where evolution is like actually used. So that's why I like the current format, because there's pretty good Sage 2 Pokemon, like the Charizard, the Gardevoir, the Baxcalibur. Dank Pokemon profiles. Says, oh, hello. I say it's sleeving time. Yeah, it is. This is the second um, sleeving stream. We just had one last week. So we're starting up again today. We're up to the year 2011. And I know you like uh, the 2010 deck. So unfortunately, we finished those last week. So sorry. You didn't get to uh, see them last time. So, dank Pokemon profiles. Actually, I haven't uh, seen you around too much. Are you still posting videos on your channel? I did enjoy the... Uh, what are they called? The, the Christmas uh, videos that you, you put up. That's pretty amazing. Putting up a video every single day, running up until Christmas. That's, uh, that's a little too much work for me. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. Usually it takes me about a week to get a, a video up and um, posted. I can't do one every single day. I think the effort would drive me insane. Oh, Junk Arm is another really good card. Although, I don't know if it would be healthy for the format nowadays because it might be a little too strong, especially with A specs back in the mix. Uh, so with Junk Arm, discard two cards from your hand and then search your discard pile for a trainer and add it back into your hand. So you can just keep recycling like Prime Catchers over and over again. Unless Junk Arm was remade as an A spec, I think that would you know make it more balanced. You can only run one per deck. I don't know, that might be a good balance like that. Actually, they, now that I think about it, they did have that back in the day, but it wasn't Junk Arm, it was a dousing machine, which is actually really good. It was one of the best A specs, I think, alongside the uh, computer search. Well, I stopped around like August last year when I crashed my laptop. 
but I really should get back to it. Oh no, what happened to the laptop? Yeah, at some point last year, my um, my laptop, the video video editing software that I use, it just um, it stopped working with my laptop. So I had to buy a new um, computer setup, which was a pain because you know they're expensive. But it's actually working out a lot better now. I'm still using my laptop. I'm actually using the laptop right now to stream, but I don't use my laptop for video editing anymore. It's, it's just too old to handle that much um, computing power. Yeah, the Christmas stuff was insane. I started recording like three months in advance for that. And it got sometimes really close. Like one day I recorded the commentary outside of the university. Oh, wow, that's insane. Yeah, when I do the recordings for my videos, uh, I just use one of the one of the rooms here at the house, and we kind of have to make sure that it's kind of quiet because I mean the walls here in this house are kind of thin, so I can kind of hear everything. So we just have to kind of make sure to keep it quiet as much as we can. But every now and then I'll get some noise from coming outside, like you can hear like a neighbor's dog barking. Or just like a really loud car driving by outside. So when that happens, I kind of have to redo that part or edit it out. Because <laughs> I don't want to, you know, I don't want people to hear dogs barking in the background of my videos. That would be annoying. Well, the laptop story was super funny. So I had an internship and I was kind of late. Then randomly, the bus took the wrong turn and got stuck. Whoa! <laughs> So I had to walk the remaining three miles. I was 40 minutes late. I opened my laptop and it had stopped working. Not my greatest day. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that sounds messed up. Or my first impression in general. Oh, that was your first, uh, first day of your internship? Yeah, not a very good way to make a first impression there. Oh, hopefully they got to keep you around for a bit. Okay, just about done with the, the next 2011 deck. Yep, it was the first day, but the rest went fine. Okay, that's good to hear. What kind of internship was it? I remember back when I was going to grad school, I had to do... How many internships did I do? I did two different internships. Which was... Um, it was kind of a hassle for me because they were in two completely different cities. So I had to like, drive to one place and then drive to the other like every other day. Luckily, I never got them confused. I, I kept a pretty good calendar. Otherwise, it would have been pretty bad if I went to the wrong place on the wrong day. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be here today. But overall, I think they went pretty well, too. Got some good experience there. Okay, and with that, we are done with 2011. Uh, put Embor on top of this one. Set it aside. Now we can finally move on to 2012. All right. Let's just open up our next booster pack. See what we get. Come on, Prime Catcher. Or another Walking Wake. Either one will be fine. All right, here we go. Relor, Ponyta, Chatot. Cottony, Palafin, Scream Tail, Heavy Baton. Oh, that's pretty good with the um, Iron Hands deck. Let's set that aside. Foratris, Mr. Mime. Oh, an EX. Ferrigarath, EX. It's okay. Not the best EX in the deck, but you know what? It's still an EX. I'll take it. Twenty twelve. 
the year the world ended. Yeah. Um, how many how many apocalypses have I been through? So Y two K apparently the world was supposed to end. Twenty twelve the world was supposed to end, and I think a couple of years later, like twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen, the world was supposed to end again. So I've been through like three apocalypses, and I'm still fine. It's weird how people get obsessed over that kind of thing. Okay, let me just pull up the new 2012 decks. Okay, here we go. I got him. 2012 is when EXs took over, I believe. Yep, that's when it happened. You're going to see a lot of Mewtwo coming up. Dink Pokemon Profile says, So it was a math competition for school kids. I helped on creating the tasks, made some graphics and stuff like that. It was really cool as I participated in the competition back during the day. Oh, okay, cool. It does sound like fun. Actually, I love doing math. Back in... Um, Back when I was going to school, I, I joined the school pentathlon team. So a lot of, you know, academic um, competitions and categories. Not an actual, like, pentathlon, like, <laughs> sports-wise. I'm terrible at sports. But in my uh, in my age division, I got, I, forget, I think it was first place in science out of the state and third place in math out of the state. So you know, I'm pretty good at uh, those subjects. Okay, yeah, this is the deck I was talking about, the Mewtwo Terrakion deck. Uh, where's Terrakion? There it is. So these are the only two attackers, I believe. Let me just double check. Yeah, that was it. So Terrakion is just there to knock out Darkrai because you can hit it for weakness. And Mewtwo is just there to knock out other Mewtwo because it hits itself for weakness. That's pretty much it. You're just countering the two most popular EX Pokemon in the format. And you know what? It worked out. I think this is a junior division one, if I remember correctly. Alright, so let's get into this one. I wonder what the what the game developers were thinking when they made this Mewtwo. Like, eh, it won't be that bad. Um, you know, like the, they probably thought, like, oh, okay, the first attack is fine, but the second attack is a good one. You know, 120 damage. But, you know, X-Ball hitting for a ton of damage with double colorless energy. You could pretty much put this Mewtwo in every single deck. And it would always be good. So, yeah, I don't think this Mewtwo was very good for that format. It just made it very repetitive and kind of boring. What cards do you need in that deck so I can build mine? Well... We'll be going through it this one. Um, yeah, just these two are the main attackers. Oh, well, I was about to sneeze there for a sec. Sorry. Um, double colorless energy to power up the Mewtwo. Fighting energy to power up the Terrakion. And the rest is just consistency and support. So Eviolite to get you out of KO range. And the EXP share to move the energy around. Once one Pokemon got knocked out... Just move its energy onto another Pokemon. But I believe it only works on basic energy cards. Yeah, basic energy. So you cannot use this on double colorless energy, only on the fighting type energies. Okay, we just finished up another um, sleeve box. Let's go on to the next one. I am planning on doing a giant video doing um, deck profiles of all the decks that I have. I was thinking about doing like just individual deck profiles every now and then. But I figured, you know what, I'm just going to do them all at once. And that is that's going to be a, a long video. I'm thinking like a couple hours long because it's like 160 decks that I have. So I'm just going to do like... Um, a full deck list. I'm going to like display all the, the cards in the deck, you know, um, when they were viable, who made the, the winning deck lists and also just, you know, general strategy for each deck. 
So I'm kind of working on the script for that one right now. But it's gonna take my take me a while to do all the the recordings and stuff. Yep, there's a reason why they removed their weaknesses applied when Mewtwo EX got reprinted in 2016. Oh yeah, the the one that got to Mega Evolve, right? Or or is it the Mega Evolution? I forget, but I know which one you're talking about. Because otherwise, they would just the game would devolve back into just Mewtwo versus Mewtwo. Old cards look really cool with the silver border. Yeah, actually, I I agree. I prefer the silver border than the the yellow one. So I'm actually really glad that the Scarlet and Violet cards finally moved to the silver border, like um, like Japan has been doing it. I do want to make that Mega Mewtwo EX deck at some point, but I just haven't gotten around to it. It does look like a lot of fun. I think it has the, what's the, what's the attack called? Psychic Infinity or something like that? It looks pretty cool. But I have been focusing on building other decks pretty recently. Actually, in the past, I don't know, like the past month, I've built like five new decks. I'm just kind of build, been in a deck building spree <laughs> for the past few weeks. I've actually got them right here. I haven't put them away yet because this table's kind of taking up a ton of space in my room. But yeah, here's one. I built the Rampardos Fossil deck from 2019. Looks like a lot of fun. So I wanna I wanna use this one. Actually, I have not used it yet, but I want to. It looks like fun. Um, this side I have another 2019 deck, the Ultra Necrozma Malamar Giratina deck. Another one that looks like fun. Uh what else? 20 I think this is 2013. Altaria Garchomp. Here they are. Altaria to boost the attack power of all your dragon Pokemon, and Garchomp can attack for one energy with Mach Cut, so it can do a ton of damage for a small amount of energy. And I haven't sleeved this one yet, but this is from 2021. Um, what's that called? What was it called? The, the Players Cup Global Finals or something like that? The Spirit Tomb deck. I'm actually still missing a Dedenne GX. That's the only card I'm missing from this entire deck, but otherwise it's complete. And then I just have to sleeve it later on. So I've made these four, along with some other ones that I don't know where I put them. I made the Ice Rider Calyrex deck, also from 2021. Um, I finally finished my Mad Party deck from 2020. So yeah, I made a ton of decks recently. It'd be really fun to watch the Mega Mewtwo deck. Yeah, actually, I want to build it. I really like Mega Pokemon, like, as a concept, but I don't think they were implemented very well in the trading card game because of the Mega Evolution rule. Like, once the Mega Pokemon evolves, the turn is automatically over. I don't really like that. I think that made them too slow to use. Because as soon as they evolve, your turn is over, and then they just... You know, they just take a lot of damage or even get KO'd on the next turn before they get a chance to do anything. They tried to speed them up by using the Spirit Links. But I think that kind of made more problems. Because it was a specific tool you had to attach to a specific Pokemon. So if you couldn't search it out and you wanted to evolve your Mega Pokemon, your turn would end. And if you attach the tool... To evolve them, you couldn't attach anything else. Like, you couldn't give them any damage modifiers or anything like that. I think the Spirit Link concept might have been a little better if they just use, um, if Spirit Link was just uh, a tool that any Pokemon can use instead of having, like, specific ones. Like, instead of having, you know, Spirit Link Charizard, Spirit Link Blastoise, if it was just called Spirit Link. And it's going to be attached to any Mega Pokemon. It would have been. I think it would have been better because then you can use multiple 
mega Pokemon in the same deck. But I don't know. I don't know if that would have worked out better in the long run, but I don't know. I think it's just, it's just a fun little idea that I, I thought might have made the game a little more interesting. I hope it's going to be different when Legend ZA comes out and they make the Megas uh, again so, so they're more playable. Yeah, actually, you know what? I didn't think about that from the uh, trading card game perspective because they did announce that Megas would be coming back. Well, at the very least, you know, they teased it at the end of the trailer. But does that mean that we are going to be getting Megas back in the trading card game? And are, are they going to work the same way? Um, so that be that's gonna be interesting to see. Oh, here are the decks. I, they were right next to me. I forgot where they were. That's three Mewtwo EX already in the deck. Yeah, every deck runs at least three Mewtwo in them. It was crazy. And I was uh, I was there during that format, so people were trying to figure out what's the best number of Mewtwo to use. So at first, people thought, okay, just using two Mewtwo is enough. And then I remember the first time somebody used a third Mewtwo in the deck... Like, I don't know, people just, it blew people's minds. It was pretty funny. Like, oh my god, you can use three Mewtwo? That's insane. And then everyone started running three Mewtwo. But really, you don't need more than that, because, you know, once three Mewtwo EX are knocked out, the game is over. Each one gives up uh, two prizes. Oh yeah, so this is the, the next version of it. Mewtwo alongside Electric. Use Electric to load up Lightning energy onto your benched Pokemon. So you just give them to your Mewtwo and then attack with X-Ball. So. Same attack, just different way to power it up. But I will say for this deck that they actually did use evolution cards. So I think that made it a little more interesting. It did make it a little harder to set up because you have to set up your Tynemo first, wait a turn, and then evolve them into Electric. And if you were going up against a Dark Ride deck, they could get knocked out by um, sniping damage with the Night Spear attack. But I think overall, um, Dynamotor was the, the best energy accelerator. Because once you had enough Lightning Energy in the discard pile, you know, you could just keep recycling those energy cards. If your active Pokemon was KO'd, just Dynamotor them, the energy's back into play. Ooh, missed a lot of comments there. I guess Nintendo wanted to implement the Mega Stone somehow. But yeah, gameplay-wise, Spirit Links weren't the greatest idea. Yeah, I didn't really like them. Eels, Dynamotor. <laughs> a lot of people like Dynamotor. I was actually really happy that they reprinted Dynamotor on Flaffy back in Evolving Skies. I think they were hoping to recreate the original... Um, electric Rayquaza deck with the um, Flaffy Rayquaza deck, but it did not work out at all. I mean, it's a fun little uh, gimmick deck, but it was not top tier, which is a shame because Rayquaza is my favorite Pokemon. I was really hoping that it'd be a good deck, but it was too difficult to set up. That hurt my bank account in 2013. Mewtwo EX was expensive. Yeah, everybody was running it. Actually, I think I have some uh, extra Mewtwo EX lying around somewhere. And actually a lot easier to get now because they got reprinted in the Celebration set, which is good. I talked about it last week during the other live stream, but I really want there to be a Celebrations Part 2 with even more um, playable cards reprinted. That would be really good. Oh, 
like what are some hard cards to get nowadays? Like if they reprinted um what's it called Tropical Beach in celebrations, that'd be really good because it would make it way more accessible. Because even the proxy ones, like these world championship versions, it's still worth like fifty bucks. And the real ones, um, you're gonna be spending over five hundred dollars for an English one. Well, if you play in English, I mean, if you're playing different languages, they're usually cheaper. Unless it's the Japanese. I think the Japanese ones are also pretty expensive one. Shinku Dragon. Hey, welcome to the stream. Dang, just woke up and missed the first part of it. What year are we in? 2013? No, we're still in 2012. The Mewtwo EX era. And this is the second deck so far. And actually, you didn't miss that much. We've only done, I think, five decks. We did the four... 2011 deck, so we've only done one of the 2012. This is the second one. We finished doing the Mewtwo Terrakion deck a little while ago. I forgot which YouTuber I watched back in 2012 said that Shiny Ray from Dragon's Exalted used to be worth $80 to $100. And I was like, damn, that's expensive. I think it got even more expensive than that nowadays. I was trying to find that Rayquaza to put into the into this Garchomp deck, but then I saw the price and I'm like, nope, no thanks. <laughs> I'm fine without it. I think I got a reprint in that um, special Dragon set. What's it called? Dragon's Majesty, I think. There's so many special edition sets. <laughs> I forgot the names of them sometimes. But yeah, there's a, a cheaper reprint of it, but I just prefer the original one. I love the coloring on Shiny Rayquaza. Shinku Dragon says, I was studying during these times, so I know the not of the formats until like 2016. It's funny because that's actually the opposite of uh, the experience that I had. I was playing during this time, but in 2016, that's when I had to stop. I had to stop playing Pokemon for like three years. Okay, we just finished another box of sleeves. Let's go on to the next one. Just need a few more cards to finish up this deck. Yeah, the Dragon Vault Ray is cheaper. Dragon Vault, yeah, that's what it was. Dragon Majesty is from the GX format, right? But imagine 2012, that's expensive back then. 80 to 100, it's a lot of money for one card. Yeah, no, I completely agree. That is a ton of money for just one card. Especially because it was so playable. It was such a good card, it just attack deal damage for a single energy. Yeah, Rayquaza cards have been historically... Uh, pretty good. I think Jay Wits made a video a couple years ago of like the top 10 most uh, successful Pokemon in the TCG. And I think Gardevoir was number one because Gardevoir has so many good playable cards. And Rayquaza was also up there along with uh, Mew, Blastoise. Um, I forget, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of Pokemon that just have really good playable cards in them. Which I think is the opposite of Charizard. Charizard has like a lot of printed cards, but they're not always good. Most of them actually been been pretty bad. It wasn't until pretty recently that Charizard finally started getting good cards with the uh, Reshiram and Charizard tag team, Radiant Charizard, and currently the Terra Charizard EX. I think those have been like the only three good Charizard cards. Okay, we just finished two more decks, which means we get to open another booster pack. Okay, let's see what we get in this one. All right, code card. Here we go. Heatmore, Yamper, Tora Cat, Grubbin, Rose Raid, 
Keldeo, Iron Jugulus, Relor, Delmise. Ooh, Roaring Moon, nice. I've already got a full playset of these, but you know they're always pretty good to have. Let's see. Oh, it's funny. I also stopped around 2016, but that was because I got into Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got out of Yu-Gi-Oh in 2010, 2011. I still have some of my old cards. Actually, I recently started getting back into, uh, what's it called? Retro Yu-Gi-Oh formats. I have four of the Edison format decks built for Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I stopped in 2015 for Magic and College. Yeah, college is expensive. Speaking of Rayquaza, love the match you made against the Keldeo deck. Um, which one? I don't remember. <laughs> I've had so many battles. I've, I don't remember them off the top of my head. Sorry. So Sableye has also had many good cards, which I like. It's the only Pokemon that I actually collect. Oh yeah, Sableye has had really good ones. Um, especially that really broken one from the... Um, I forgot what set... What am I doing? One. Uh, with the uh, over-eager ability, you just automatically go first if it's your starting Pokemon. And Sableye was was the reason that there had to be a, a mid-season rotation because people were making the uh, uh, first turn kill decks. Just um, donk your opponent as soon as the game started if you opened with the Sableye. Retro Yu-Gi-Oh! is pretty fun. I loved Yu-Gi-Oh! for Pokemon, though. It was expensive. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! is crazy expensive. I think I got, a, got out around the time when um, the Teledad deck was good. And um, I think you needed, like, three of the Dark Arm Dragons, which were going for, like, $500 apiece. So your deck was almost, like, $2,000. It was crazy expensive. Oh, yeah, so this deck... Celebi Mewtwo Tornadoes. Hold on. Let me find the Mewtwo on this one real quick. This is the deck that I was using during that format. Um, how did I do? I don't remember. I also tried um, doing the last chance qualifier because I didn't get my invite for Worlds that year. I got farther in the, in the qualifier in this year than I did in the previous year. But I remember I lost one round because I was. We got down to it's Mewtwo versus Mewtwo. My opponent was also using it, and I just needed one more plus power to take the final KO and win the game. But both of my plus powers were prized, <laughs> and then I had to. Like, I couldn't take the KO, and then um, and then she knocked out my final Mewtwo and won the game. So it was really close. But it was still a lot of fun. But actually, um, after I I got knocked out of the last chance qualifier, I decided to do some um, volunteering at the World Championship because you you know you could just sign up to volunteer, and they give you free stuff. So I volunteered, and after a day of volunteering, I got a, a free booster pop. Sorry, bo booster box, and I got a staff copy of the um, what's it called. It's Tropical Beach. So that's how I got my staff Tropical Beach promo that year. Actually, I got two of those. Oh, the Battle Arena one. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. I want to do more of the Battle Arena stuff. Like, I want to do the, the Mega Charizard versus Mega Blastoise. I can get the Mega Blastoise Battle Arena deck. It's fairly cheap. I mean, it's still kind of pricey. I think I the last time I saw it, it was like between like sixty or eighty dollars or something like that. Which you know, it's manageable. I can do that. But the Mega Charizard one was like four or five hundred dollars, which is insane. And of course, it is. I mean, it's Charizard. Everybody loves Charizard. But you know, I'm not gonna just save it around to be a collectible. I'm gonna open them and play with them. But I don't think I'm ready to spend that much money on a, on a Battle Arena deck. Shinku Dragon says, there's still a video of the Sable dunk, Sableye dunk out there. It was wild. Yeah, I think it was uh, Jay Wits that did that video.
I'm here building some of the black white decks. And then Yes says, "Ooh, five hundred dollars." Um, five. Are you talking about the the Charizard X deck? It's five hundred dollars, or the Dark Up Dragon that was five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, we're just talking about how expensive <laughs> some of these pieces of cardboard are. I think if it's cheaper to make it with the singles, go for it. You know what? Yeah. I'm thinking about just doing that. Like, I want to do um, a structure deck battle with those decks from Legendary Collection. Because there's a, there's a Dark Charizard Legendary Collection deck, and then the other one is Dark Raichu and Dark Blast Toys. And I thought, oh, cool, I can make a, a video of those. So I looked them up on eBay. And they were super expensive. And I thought, nope, I am not going to buy those. But you know what? Actually, I have all the cards that I need to make those decks myself. So I figured I'll just do that. Now, the next thing is to actually get around and build them. I saw the deck lists, and they're not that good. <laughs> like, back in the day, structured decks were just bad. So I don't know if they're going to make for very exciting games. But we'll see how it goes. The Charizard. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, Charizard things are always going to be expensive, no matter how bad they are. I did get this um, video idea from another, um, from somebody who commented on one of my videos. And I've been thinking about it because it sounds like a really fun idea to try. He said to do, use um, like old Pokemon, like the Wizards of the Coast era Pokemon. But uh, the trainer cards and energy cards from like the current format like with supporters and tools and stuff like that. So I was thinking, okay, what if I build like a Dark Charizard deck going up against a Dark Blastoise deck from Team Rocket, and I can only use Pokemon from like base set through Team Rocket, but all the trainers and energy cards I can only use from like current standard format. I think that'd be pretty interesting. Like the Charizard deck would have access to the Magma Basin Stadium. And then you can use the uh, professor's research just to give them more draw power. So I've kind of been toying with that idea. It sounds pretty interesting. I mean, this music got really loud behind me. Um, is the music too loud right now? I can't tell how loud it is for you guys in the in the chat. If it's too loud, just let me know and I'll turn it down. Although I do like this song, it's one of the few songs in Pokemon that has any, like, vocals in it. It's from uh, Black and White. Black and White had some pretty good um, music in it. Horrible we're trying to build retro in the future. We're in the Charizard meta era. Yeah. Yeah, for the uh, Orlando Regionals, I saw that the breakdown for day one was like 20% Charizard, and then second place was Chien Pao with only like 9%. It's a huge jump. A lot of people are just playing Charizard, especially after Tord Reklev won the tournament last week. Okay, we just finished up another deck with uh, Celebi. Let me turn it down a bit if it's loud for you. That's actually not too loud for me. I just did notice that the volume kind of jumped up a little bit. So I was hoping that it's not too loud for the for the live stream and you guys can't hear me that well anymore. Okay, so this is the, the final deck of 2012. Darkrai and Mewtwo. So I think this is the, probably the most fun one to use because 
You can use a different attacker other than Mewtwo. Darkrai was really good. Has a super good attack with Night Spear. Hit for 90 and then snipe something on the bench for 30. So you just stack up damage. And has a really good ability too. Dark Cloak. Any Pokemon on your side that has Dark Energy attached um, has a free retreat cost. So you just move it, uh, move around back and forth if your active Pokemon is getting close to being KO'd. Also, I didn't talk about it sooner, but this Smeargle was really good in that format. With the Portrait, look at your opponent's hand. If they have a supporter there, you can use the effect of that supporter as the effective Smeargle. So you can basically use multiple supporters per turn. Like use one of your own, use Smeargle to copy one of your opponents. And if you have multiple Smear um, Smeargle, is there another one in here? Yeah, if you have multiple multiple Smeargle, you can just move them around. You can use like three, maybe like four supporters in a single turn. It's pretty good. But it is dependent on what your opponent has in their hand. Like if your opponent has um, like no supporters, then it doesn't do anything. Or if they only have like Professor Juniper, um, and you don't want to discard your hand, you, you're kind of forced to do it. So it's, it's kind of risky to use, but still really good. Oh, Terrakion is here, of course, to act as a counter against other Darkrai decks. I think this is also the first time that Ultra Ball got introduced into the format during Dark Explorers, and now it's become like a staple in every deck. It was so good. Discard two cards, search for any Pokemon. And discarding two cards isn't really that much of a, a cost, especially for decks that need cards in the discard pile. Like back in the day, you can use this with Darkrai because you can just get the energies back with the Dark Patch or use it with Electric because you could just get the Lightning energies back with Dynamotor. And even nowadays, like in Lugia decks, you can use your Ultra Ball to discard Archeops, get them back with the Summoning Star. So the cost of discarding two cards isn't really much of a cost at all to some decks. I like Prism Energy. It's like a good spin on the um, Rainbow Energy archetype. It only counts as a Rainbow Energy when you attach it to a basic Pokemon. So I think... A card like that would be really good with um, <clears throat> with Reggie decks. Because I actually really like using that deck. Back when um, Aurora Energy was still legal. You can use any of your Reggies to attack. But nowadays, I think the only one we have is Luminous Energy. So it can count as a Rainbow Energy. But if you have a second... I don't know what's it called. Special Energy attached to the Pokemon. It only counts as the... Um, Colorless energy, so you can't run more than one on the same Pokemon. I just really like it when we have rainbow energies in, in the format, because it just makes more room for creativity in, uh, in deck building. So right now, I think for rainbow energy, we have the luminous energy, which isn't really used and anything. I don't I haven't seen it. We have reversal energy, which I've only seen in the Gardevoir lists. And that was uh, before rotation. I haven't really been keeping up with Gardevoir lists too much, so I don't even know if they still use it. And then there's a uh, Neo Upper Energy, the A spec, but it's probably one of the worst A specs to use. There's better things to put into your deck. So yeah, not a lot of good uh rainbow energies in, in the current format. Okay, we just finished up another box of sleeves. Open up the next one. There we go. Let's see. Oh, what happened to the music? Oh, the video's over. Okay. Got some more background music going now. Some generic Pokemon theme music going on behind me. I don't remember.
remember if um, Darkrai was also featured on that top 10 Pokemon in the TCG video that I was talking about earlier? I think it was. Because we had this Darkrai, and then we had the other one in the 26, yeah, 2016 deck with the, uh, what's it called? Giratina EX. It had the Dark Pulse attack, so it did more damage for every Dark Energy you had on your side of the field. So you just load up your side using Max Elixir, and then you can use Double Turbo Energy on Giratina, which also counted as Dark type energies. And what other good Dark Cry cards have we had? <clears throat> I mean, currently we do have the Darkrai V-Star, which I think it does have a pretty good ability. The, I forget what it's called, but the V-Star ability, get back two of your discarded item cards. But it just doesn't deal enough damage to compete with the, the current format. I think if it just did a little more damage, it might be uh, more viable because it has a really good V-Star ability. If it's Sableye and Dark IV Star, it's okay. <laughs> Sableye has kind of become like one of the poster boys for Dark type Pokemon. There's just so many of them. I do like that they added the um, Sable Mega Sableye as part of the tag team with Tyranitar. Because I don't think Mega Sableye got its own individual um, card, did it? I don't think it did. Let's see. Which which Mega Pokemon were good back in the day? I know the Mega Kangaskhan was printed in the in the Fairy Box deck with Aromatisse. And then we also had Primal Groudon, which counted as a Mega Pokemon. Uh, Mega Rayquaza, of course. Uh, Mega Gardevoir. Uh, were there other Mega Pokemon that were good? I don't remember. Okay, we just finished up another deck, so we're done with the 2012 decks. Oh, I'm running out of space in my storage box over here. Okay, so last week I didn't have enough space in my storage boxes. But I did manage to buy a brand new one. To have more space. So I'll actually be able to store my my decks now. Um, oh yeah, booster pack time, I forgot. Next booster pack. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, Mega Adino. How did I forget that one? It won the world championships in 2016. Mega Adino and Oh yeah, Mega Main Extra is pretty good. You could accelerate um, two energy from the discard pile, right? I recently built a Mega Main Electric deck. Kind of forgot about that one. All right, here we go. Uh, Giraffe Rig, Roselia, Cutie Fly, Drill Burr, Iron Jugulus, Lycanroc, Salvatore, Metang. Ooh! Ooh, yes! I've actually been looking for this card. I love the artwork on this one. Okay, yes, I'm definitely saving that. Iron Thorns. I have like 20 Iron Thorns. This thing is everywhere. <laughs> and Metal Energy. Okay, so I, I did get one of my Chase cards. I didn't bring it up earlier because I kind of forgot about it, but I just love the artwork of all four seasons showcased in, in this artwork. I love that kind of stuff, so I'm definitely keeping this one. And Reverse Matang is also really good. Now I can... Uh, I'm going to be trying to build that Dialga V-Star deck, so I'm going to hold on to these two. So pretty good booster pack overall. <laughs> All season one card. Woohoo! Yeah. Actually, I took a, a photo similar to that artwork a couple years back. I am um, an amateur photographer, so when I was going to grad school, every season... I went to the same spot, so <clears throat> I took a picture of um, of like the the area covered in snow, and then a couple months later, you know, when the the cherry blossoms were in full bloom, and then 
in summer when all the trees were green and then in autumn when all the, the leaves turned like red and gold. And then I spliced them together into pretty much that exact artwork. It came out really good. I just, I don't know what I did with that photo. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to be moving on to 2013. And one of the most annoying decks to start off with, the Gothitelle Excelgor deck. I mean, I say it's annoying, but I actually, I played this deck back in the day, so I was that guy. So for those of you that don't know, let me just put the, let me get the decks, I mean, the, the cards set aside. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Dusknor and Excelgor, where's Excelgor? There it is. Uh, we also need the Floatstone and the Double Colorless Energy. Okay, so Gothitelle has the ability Magic Room with the active spot. Your opponent can't use any item cards. So only your opponent. It does not affect you. Axelgore has a really good attack deck and cover. 50 damage. Automatically paralyze and poison the opponent. But then you got to shuffle it back into the deck. But that's where the Mew comes in handy. Use its ability to copy the attacks of any Pokemon in play. So you copy the ability of Axelgore. Give it the double colorless energy. And then you give the Floatstone to Gothitelle to give it a free retreat cost. So you attack with Mew, copy deck and cover to paralyze and poison your opponent. Mew gets shuffled away. Gothitelle comes in. So your opponent can't attack, they can't retreat, and they can't use item cards. And then the next turn, you just get another Mew, powered up, retreat, and just do it over and over again. And then you use the Dusknoir with Sinister Hand to move damage around the opponent's side. So their active Pokemon never gets KO'd. It's always going to stay stuck in the active spot. And then once they have enough damage built up on your side, use Dusknoir to just knock everything out in one turn. So it's a really annoying, <laughs> but really fun deck to use. It did take a while to get set up because you needed um, to set up a stage two with the Gothitelle. And then another one with the Dusknoir. I mean, I guess Dusknoir wasn't always necessary, but it did help out. <clears throat> And this is also back in the era before Lysander, which Lysander is the uh, boss's orders before it was called boss's orders. So your opponent couldn't use supporter cards to move your Gothitelle out of the active spot. So they were pretty much just stuck there. Well, of course, you had Tropical Beach just to help you draw some more cards in the early game. Or pretty much at any point if you couldn't get an attacker set up. Reminds me of Glyscore Level X, but actually functional. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was really good. I think it won the U.S. Nationals that year. J4 says, hello, Holland. Hey, J4, welcome to the chat. How you doing today? We're in the year 2014. No, sorry, 13 which was the first year that the World Championships were not in the United States. It was in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. So I got to travel out of the country for that one. It was pretty fun. So funny story about being up in Canada. I'm not really used to you know Canadian currency. So a lot of their coins are like the equivalent of like uh, our dollars and five dollar bills. So I, I was just walking around with like a pocket full of coins that was like about twenty dollars. And I was walking around and there was you know there's a there's a guy outside, you know, asking for some spare change. So he came up to him the game man, can you spare some change? So I gave him all the coins in my pocket because I you know here in the uh, United States um, a handful of coins is, it's not that much. So I gave him everything. And it wasn't until later that I realized, oh man, I gave that guy like 20 bucks. <laughs> I needed that to pay for my lunch. But you know what? Uh, he probably needed more than I did, so <laughs> it was fine.
Vancouver is pretty cool. I want to go back one day. I know they have regionals there every now and then. And because I live in Oregon now, it's not that far away to to just like drive over or fly over. The thing is, I just don't have the time. <clears throat> I'm so busy, and I can't really take off too much time from work to go to Pokemon events. I mean, I'd like to. That would be the dream. Oh, yeah, computer search when I was reprinted as an ace spec. It was really good back in base set because you can run like up to four, search for whatever you want. But even at running one per deck, it was still really good. Computer search was one of the best ace specs um, printed back in the black and white format. Alongside dousing machine was also really good. And if you were running the Genesec deck, you needed to run the What's it called? A G booster for Genesect to hit for 200 damage. Yeah, there weren't a lot of um, really good A spec cards printed back in the day. I mean, there were some, but they were more kind of like fringe A specs. Like we had a, um, what's it called? Scoop Up Cyclone, which I just saw that it's announced that it's getting reprinted, so you can use your your old copies of it now. And the uh, what's the other one called? Uh, I forgot what it's called. It's kind of like Rocky Helmet. Rock Guard. It's a Pokemon tool. Equip it to your Pokemon. When it gets attacked, your opponent's Pokemon takes, uh, I think, 60 damage? Or you put six damage counters on them. But then you had, like, really bad A-Specs, like the Victini one. I, I, I don't remember what it does. And I think the Kyurem form also had their own A-Specs, which I also don't remember what they did. <laughs> Uh, the original Master Ball wasn't that good because you could just use um, Ultra Ball to search for whatever Pokemon. Although it's funny that nowadays, because Master Ball was reprinted, the original Master Ball really shot up in price. Dank Pokemon Profile says, Oh, nice. I visited Canada back in like 2015. It was mostly just in Nova Scotia. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've only been to Canada once, and that was just for the World Championships during this year. <clears throat> and that year, I did not compete at all. I was just there because my friends got their invites, and so I was just there to you know for for support, but also just because you know I wanted to visit Canada. We did get to do a lot of pretty fun uh, sightseeing out there. Okay, just about done. And... Done! Alright, so it's the first deck of 2013 complete. Got the Telex Selgor. Let me just put this one away real quick. QRMCJN says, I went to Canada in World 2013. It was an amazing year. Yeah, it really was. When uh, Mewtwo EX finally stopped being so dominant in the format, we finally got some you know, more fun, diverse decks to use. This is actually the one that I was running because, you know, of course it is Rayquaza, my favorite Pokemon. Still using the Dynamotor engine. But now you're powering up Rayquaza and you're dealing... A ton of damage with the Dragon Burst. And it also had oh, Keldeo, just to jump into the active spot, because Dynamotor only works on benched Pokemon. So you use Keldeo, rush into the active spot, load up a Rayquaza, and then Float Stone on your Keldeo to retreat for free, send a Rayquaza, and just start attacking again. Although the Electric was pretty weak going up against the Darkrai deck because they could just snipe your Electric with a um, Night Spear attack. Plus it could also be one hit KO'd if they just used the Pokemon Catcher, bring Electric into the active spot, knock it out, and then deal 30 damage to another Electric. 
so they can wipe out your all your electric pretty quickly. I think this deck also runs a Victini. It's in here somewhere. Where's Victini? Oh yeah. Raikou to snipe stuff with the Volt Bolt. Hit something for 100 damage. Oh yeah, there's a Victini. V-Create. Really good single prize attacker. You need to have a full bench to use the attack, but then it hits for 100 damage, which is really good for a single prize Pokemon. <clears throat> Oh yeah, here's the other really good ace spec. Dowsing Machine. Pretty much a reprint of Item Finder back from base set. Discard two cards, get back a trainer card. So I think this card would be pretty good if it got reprinted in today's format. Earlier I was saying it'd be cool if Junk Arm was an ace spec, but then I forgot that Dowsing Machine existed. Pretty much does the exact same thing. Okay, with that, we're done with another box of sleeves. Let's go to the next one. Oh, I didn't realize it's already been an hour and a half. Okay, oh, time flies by. Yeah, I don't know how long I'm gonna be streaming for today. The original plan was to stream yesterday, like do half of my remaining decks yesterday, and then do the other half today and just finish this weekend, but it just didn't work out to to record yesterday, so I had to have to put it off. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta pause for a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Oh, trying to squeeze into my chair here. Okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> A lot of lightning energy. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier, using the Ultra Ball, or even the Dowsing Machine to discard your lightning energy and then just get them back with Dynamotor. Power up your Rayquaza pretty quickly. Yeah, I think this is the deck that um, the Pokemon Company was trying to recreate when they released Flaffy and Rayquaza VMAX in the, uh, what's it called? Evolving Skies. But yeah, it just, it didn't, it didn't work out as well as uh, people were hoping. And I think it's because Rayquaza was an evolved Pokemon, because you have to get the basic Rayquaza V and then evolve it into Rayquaza V Max, which just it was too much setup to be as fast as um, as this one. Because in this deck, Rayquaza is just a basic; you don't have to evolve it. Which uh, again, it's a shame because I really wanted that deck to be good. And then people were trying Rayquaza with other uh, Pokemon. Like recently, at before rotation, I saw people were using it alongside Arceus v, v Star and Armor Rouge, which is a pretty cool idea. But then Rayquaza got rotated out, and now you can't use that deck anymore. Oh well. Maybe someday soon we'll get another good Rayquaza card. I did see that uh, uh, another dragon set was recently announced in Japan. I forget what it's called. But 
I'm thinking that it's going to feature those two new dragon Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet, Hydrapple and Archaludon. I think it's what it's called. But we might see another Rayquaza coming out. How many more? Okay, we're just about done with this deck. I think this is the second 2013 deck. So we'll be able to open another booster pack pretty soon. Oh yeah, I haven't really talked about it, but Pokemon Catcher was really annoying back in this format. This is, this is before you got the errata, so you did not need a coin flip. So it's basically boss's orders on an item card. Use as many as you want per turn. It was crazy good. And then they realized how good it is, so then they eroded it, so you have to use a coin flip to use its effect. And then afterward, they reprinted that effect as a supporter card, so you can only use one per turn. Which is why people were super excited when Prime Catcher was announced as an A spec. Because it's just a better version of Pokemon Catcher. Bring up one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and also switch your own Pokemon. So it's basically a Guzma on an item card. Okay, one more and we are done with Rayquaza Electric. Just put a Rayquaza on top. Get a drink of water real quick. Oh yeah, booster pack time. Okay, let's see what we get. Here we go, here we go. Okay, and... Oops. Hoot Hoot. Beldum. Breloom. Roly Coley, Iron Valiant, Sharpedo, Metagross, Bronzong, Golurk. Oh, another EX, Scizor EX. So I think that's my third Scizor overall. I have two of these regular ones and one of the full art ones. I mean, not the greatest EX, but still pretty cool. I just like Scizor as a Pokemon. It's one of my favorite bug types. I think Scizor needs more, like, actual playable cards. How many good ones has it had? Uh, let's see, there was the Scizor from, I think it was Aquapolis, which is really good, back in 2003. And then we had Scizor EX back in 2007, which was pretty good. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, there was also the Scizor from 2008. And I think that's it. It's only been like three that are have been like decently good. Yeah, I just want some better Scizor cards. Okay, next deck. It's going to be the Team Plasma deck with Kyurem, Deoxys, Thunderous, and I think that's it, right? So this is a really good deck. It was really fast. So it's kind of like the original version of the current format, Iron Hands, like future uh, deck. Because you have Deoxys, put it on your bench. Its ability is that all your Team Plasma Pokemon do 10 more damage. So it's kind of like the equivalent of Iron Crown EX. Use Thunderous EX with Raiden Knuckle to accelerate energy from the discard pile and also deal some good chip damage. So it's kind of the equivalent of Miraidon. And then Kyurem is your big attacker. You have, you have two good attacks, Frost Spear, to hit for 30 damage, you know, plus more with the Deoxys or some damage modifiers in the deck. And also snipe something on your opponent's bench for 30. 
And then Blizzard Burn is your big attack. Hit for 120, but again, you can get bigger numbers with multiple Deoxys and some damage modifiers. So you can take one hit KOs against big EX Pokemon. So this is kind of the equivalent of the Iron Hands EX. So it's another really fun deck to use during that time. I also had this one built back in the day. I had this one and the... What's it called? The Electric Rayquaza deck. But I just preferred the Rayquaza one. Yeah, Cold Rest Machine was really good for accelerating energy. Get a Plasma Energy out of your deck, attach it to one of your Team Plasma Pokemon. I was really hoping that in this set, Temporal Forces, we would get some um, like ancient or future Pokemon exclusive energy. You know, like in uh, Battle Styles, we had the Rapid Strike and Single Strike Pokemon, and they got their own Rapid Strike and Single Strike energy. I was kind of hoping for something like that so we'd have like ancient energy and future energy. Uh, but we still might get something like that in you know some future sets. Because usually when Pokemon have their own archetype, like the Rapid Strike, Single Strike, Fusion Strike, Team Plasma, Pokemon like that, they usually have their very own archetype exclusive energy. So maybe we'll get some in the next couple sets. I really wanted to build the Iron Hands, Iron Crown deck, but I saw some of the prices for those cards, and they're pretty expensive. So I'm going to wait on that one. I do have the Ancient Box deck built, though, because that one's pretty cheap cards. It's mostly just Coridon, Roaring Moon, a couple of uh, Flutter Mains. So no EX Pokemon in, in the deck, so I already have it built. I wouldn't say it's a like a tier one deck. But it's still pretty good, especially for being a budget deck. So for current format, let's see, what decks do I have? I have the Charizard deck, I have the Chi and Pao deck, the Ancient Box. Um, I have the cards for the Lugia deck. I haven't built it yet, but I, um, I can. Uh, let's see. I'm pretty sure I can make the Snorlax block deck, but I don't, know. I don't really like stall decks like that, so I don't think I'm going to build it. I want the Gardevoir deck to be good, but without the Shining Arcana Gardevoir, it's just not as strong as it used to be. And Gardevoir really dropped off after Rotation Hit. So we'll see if he gets some more good Psychic-type Pokémon in the coming sets. I think there's one more set before the World Championships this year, right? Like I think it's coming out next month, Twilight Masquerade. So that's our May set. I think our next set after that is going to be in August. But the World Championships um, are also in August. So I don't think I don't think the August set is going to be playable for Worlds. So Twilight Masquerade might be the the final set for this format. <clears throat> is it coming out next month? I don't remember. I have to look it up again. I have seen the uh, Ogre Pond cards. And they, they look fine. I mean, I don't think they look too, like, overpowered. And I don't really see them becoming, like, a top-tier deck. Like, I don't think they can um, take down Charizard as the best deck in the format. But it has a pretty good um, 
what's it called? Pretty good gimmick to it. You can switch between your different ogre pawn mask forms to hit for different weaknesses. And what's that other archetype that I saw? I forget what it's called, but it's something like a, like the festival archetype or something. Like there's a festival, um, what's it called? Stadium card. And if you have that stadium card in play, your Pokemon have access to like new abilities, which is a pretty cool gimmick. I don't think we've seen that before. Like if your festival grounds is in play, your opponent can use this ability or they can use this attack. Which I think is really cool. Like, what was the Pokemon? I think it was the Thwacky, the middle stage of Rillaboom. If you have... <clears throat> I think if you have, like, a certain Pokemon with an ability in your active spot, your Thwacky can search for any card from your deck. And it didn't have a heart once per turn, like Pidgeot does. So if you have multiple Thwacky, you can search for multiple cards. What the heck? I have one card left, but I ran out of sleeves. <laughs> okay, I gotta open up a brand new box for the final sleeve. Shinku Dragon says, don't see it doing much without further support. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Gardevoir deck, right? Yeah, it needs a, a big boost to be a top deck again. All right, we just finished another deck in 2013, the Team Plasma deck. Oops. Okay, here we go. Cards are sliding all over the place. Here we go. Okay, final deck of 2013. This is another Jason Klasinski World Championship deck, the Dark Rise Sableye deck. Of course, Darkrai is your main attacker. Hit with Night Spear as hard as you can. You have Sableye there for the Junk Hunt attack. Just keep getting discarded item cards back in your hand so you can keep reusing your Pokemon catchers. Keep reusing your, where is it, Hypnotoxic Lasers, if I could find them. Oh yeah, you can reuse your Ace Spec. There's a the Hypnotoxic Laser. Keep reusing your dark patches. Yeah, this stable eye was crazy good. Just keep recycling all your item cards. So this got Jason his third world championship title, <clears throat> which is why people are calling him, well, some people are calling him you know, the greatest trainer of all time. But nowadays, I think that's, that title is being overtaken by Tor, Tord Reklev. And Tord has not won any world championship decks. Sorry, world championships. But, I mean, he did come pretty close last year. He came in second place. But he does have, like, a lot more, um, like, regional and international championship victories. And especially with um, tournaments being even bigger now than they were back in, uh, like, 10 years ago. People are making the argument that Tord is just a better player overall than Jason. Oh, I missed a lot of comments. Ogrepon, actually. Oh, okay, you're talking about Ogrepon. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were talking about Gardevoir. Sableye. Yeah, another really good Sableye in here. Sableye is banned now. Is it? Oh, are you talking about expanded format? Yeah, I imagine that, you know, to keep the the meta healthy and expanded, you do have to ban a bunch of cards. Otherwise, like the, the top decks would just be dominated by the same cards over and over again. But I don't really play a whole lot of uh, expanded. Well, actually, I've never played expanded. I never really got interested in it. Although I did see just earlier today that uh, an expanded tournament was played in Japan, and I saw the winning deck list. 
And it looked actually pretty cool. It used a lot of um, just good cards from back in the day, along with some newer stuff. Like it had four of the um, Bunnel Bee that has an ancient trait you can attack twice per turn. So you give it um, the technical machine evolution. So evolve a bunch of your Pokemon. It ran the Pidgeotto with Airmail to draw some cards out of your deck every turn, alongside the current format Pidgeot EX for Quick Search. So between Pidgeotto and Pidgeot, you can pretty much just draw and search through your deck really quickly. And I think it also ran like three different versions of Vileplume for their abilities. It looked pretty interesting. I find it hilarious that Jason specifically used promo versions of his world deck has the said version. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they always make the, um, what's it called? The minimum rarity when they print these world championship decks. I mean, I don't really see the point of doing that. It'd be cool if they gave us like the maximum rarity of these because, I mean, it doesn't matter. We can't use them in tournaments anyway. They're not real cards. Like in the 2011... Typhlosion Reshiram deck. It would have been really cool if we got like the full art Reshirams. But no, they just gave us the regular ones. I think this was the final year before Pokemon Catcher got the Irata. Because I think it was in 2014. It needed a coin flip. But they also printed um, Lysander in 2014 to use as the, the gusting effect. Which I think was better overall. But in terms of you know just having gusting effects in the game... I don't know. I don't, I don't really think they make for a very uh, good format. I, I prefer formats without Lysander or without you know, bosses' orders and stuff like that. I think that's why formats like 2010 are pretty popular because you don't have cards like Professor's Research to just discard and draw seven. You didn't have bosses' orders to just bring up whatever you wanted. I mean, I did. I guess you did have the um, what's it called, Luxray Level X, but you know that was an ability on a Pokemon, so it it could still give up a prize if it got knocked out. I think a lot of the times the the cards that really make some formats unfun are the trainer cards. I mean, occasionally Pokemon too, because they're just too overpowered or too overwhelming. Like in 2015, we had the Seismitoad. You can essentially turn one item lock with its attack. That wasn't very fun. Or way back in the day, like during the base set through gym format, you had the... Um, Rocket's Trap, and uh, what was that other Rocket card? You just pull trainer cards out of your opponent's hand. So you can pretty much get rid of their entire hand before they got a chance to do anything. That wasn't very fun. That's why I don't really showcase a whole lot of base through gym on my channel, because the battles can be really one-sided, and they don't make for the most exciting gameplay viewing. That's... Wasn't Jason the one who always had blinged out deck? Almost a $300 deck in 2013. That's a lot of money. I uh, know Jason one of the cheapest versions. Actually, I don't remember what Jason played. Full Art Dark Ray X wasn't cheap, and Secret Rare Pokemon Catcher was expensive. Oh, yeah, the, the golden one. Oh, yeah, funny story about the the golden Pokemon Catcher. I had a friend who had, who had a full playset. He had four golden Pokemon Catcher, and... We were at a tournament. I forget which one it was, but um, he didn't do very well. Like he um, actually he did really bad. <laughs> he got a bad record, and then he got so mad <laughs> that he tore up all four of his golden 
Pokemon catchers? Oh, man, it was painful to watch. His opponent had the bling deck in the finals, not Jason. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't remember that, that year. Was this in SoCal? Uh, yeah, it was in SoCal. Yeah. Why, do you know who I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, we finished 2013. Time to do another booster pack, which actually... We just finished half the box. We can do the other half now. Secret Rare Pokemon Catcher 2013 was like 100 bucks. Yeah. It was crazy. <clears throat> okay, next pack. Let's see what we get. Bronzor. Mightyena. Duosian. Haunter. Shiftry. Bianca's Devotion, Reuniclus, Meditate, Screamtail, Drampa, and Fire Energy. All right. So, it's all right. Nothing really too playable in this pack. All right, next one. Uh, I was at a Battle Roads in SoCal and heard someone ripped up their gold catcher. I'll be the same guy, not two different weirdos ripping up expensive cards. It might have been. I don't know. I don't remember if it was a, a Battle Roads or something higher, but <laughs> yeah, it might have been the same guy. Only he ripped up four of them, not just one. <clears throat> okay, now we can move on to 2014, which just, um, in terms of like the... The design of the logo. This is in Washington, D.C. This is my favorite one. Like the, the play mat for 2014 with the Mega Charizard is my favorite play mat. Or one of my favorite play mats. Okay, so this deck is the Fairy Box deck. Use Aromatis with the Fairy Transfer ability. Just move Fairy Energies around on your side of the field to wherever you want. It's the first... Um, championship deck to have a printed Mega Pokemon, Mega Kangaskhan, but it's actually before Spirit Link, so this Mega Kangaskhan does not have a Spirit Link. So you have to evolve, and then end your turn, and hope that your Kangaskhan didn't get KO'd. Although it was pretty difficult to one hit KO something with 230 HP. If it did take a lot of damage, you can heal it up with the uh, Max Potion. Plus Max Potion also had a really good combo with Aromatis. Because Max Potion, you can heal all the damage from your Pokemon, but then you got to discard all of its energy. So Aromatisse, move all the damage off of your Pokemon, heal it, and then just put the energy back on. So it had a bunch of different attackers, depending on what you were going up against. There's a, a spec of the deck, another dousing machine. I remember paying... 156 for a booster box on Dark Explorers. For just one box? That seems like a lot, <laughs> especially back in the day. I remember booster boxes back in the day being like $80 a piece. So I remember uh, one of my friends and I, we split an entire case. So he got three boxes, I got three boxes. And we pretty much got everything between the, the both of us. That was also back in the day when sets weren't as like like um you know as big as they are nowadays that's something i don't really like about current pokemon sets is they're just they're giant with just a lot of versions of different cards like like for example i have four different versions of iron leaves like i have every version the the standard ex1 the full art the gold full art and the alternate art and there's a lot of Pokemon that have that. And I don't really think that's necessary. I mean, some people like it for, you know, the, the collection. But I try to find playable cards. So when my booster packs are just full of filler like that, I don't know. It just seems like a waste of space. Yeah, I paid that much because Dark Explorers has so many playable cards. Yeah, Dark Explorers is actually a pretty good set. 
back in the day. Darkrai, Sableye. Um, what else? The Ultra Ball. Dark Patch. Plus, it was out of print in 2012. Oh, and also, I forgot to mention, this is also the first year that we get to use fairy Pokemon in the TCG, which is a pretty cool addition because we haven't we haven't had a new like official type since gold and silver when we got the dark type and the metal type. So we got a brand new type added this time, but uh, recently, you know, I got it got phased out of the TCG, so all fairy Pokemon are now psychic type Pokemon. Which, I don't know, I think, I think it's a bit of a shame. I don't like that they have to phase out fairy Pokemon. I think it is cool that they brought back dragon Pokemon. But, I don't know, without dragon energy... They're not as consistent because they need like so many different energy requirements. But it is kind of balanced out by the fact that Dragon Pokemon nowadays don't have any weakness. Like when they first came out, Dragon Pokemon were weak against other Dragon Pokemon. And they were eventually weak against Fairy Pokemon. But now Dragons aren't weak against anything. Just about out of sleeves from this box. Oh yeah, Fairy Garden was also good in this format. Any Pokemon with uh, Fairy Energy had no retreat cost. Oh, sorry, not in this format, in this deck. So as long as you can move energy around with the Aromatis, all your Pokemon had a free retreat cost. Okay, and I think that's everything. Yeah, that's the last sleeve in that box, which means that it's the last box in this case. We just finished another case. Oops. Okay, we can move on to the next one. Black and White only had two sets that had a short print run, which was Plasma Storm and Dark Explorers. Oh, really? I did not know that, actually. I always got the Plasma sets mixed up because there was three, right? There was Plasma Storm, Plasma Blast, and what was the last one? Plasma Freeze or something like that? Their names were so similar, I always got them mixed up with each other. Storm, Freeze, Blast. Okay, is that the order they came out in? I just remember that they came out during the time of uh, Black and White 2 in the video games. Because um, Plasma Freeze... It had um, like a bunch of the artwork in the in the Pokemon cards. Like everything was frozen, right? That's what happened in the video game with Kyurem going around freezing the entire city. Oh, and also this guy Koras, he was introduced in Black and White too. Black and White, and then Black and White Two, I think, were had like the best story in in Pokemon games. So, yeah, they're one of my 
favorite generation to play. Okay, just finished another deck. 2014. Slipping all over the place over here. Oh, uh, let's see. It's a cool remix of uh, was it Lavender Town. Was oh, I wasn't really paying attention to the music. Sorry. <laughs> I remember when I switched jobs and got a better paid. It was like online to buy a plasma storm box. Found one for I can't see for one twenty in mid twenty thirteen. I was thinking it'd be like eighty nine ninety nine. I guess not because. Had too many playable cards. Yeah, it happens. It happens pretty much to every set with the, with good cards in it. Like some of them are just duds that nobody wants, or some of them are just really, really good. Like what was that Sword and Shield one? Um, I already forgot the name of it. The one that had like Copper Raja on the cover. That one was bad. Like <laughs> nobody wanted it. But I've been seeing that the uh, Sword and Shield booster boxes are just like shooting up in price now. I've actually been uh, keeping um, sealed boxes of, what are they called, of the Scarlet and Violet sets. I just want to have one of each booster box. I don't plan on selling them. Like, that's not my intention. I'm not saving them aside, you know, to wait for the value to go up. I just like collecting stuff like that. Plus, all the cards from those sets that I need, I already have, so I, I don't have a need to open more booster boxes. Okay, I have them right here, so. There's Scarlet and Violet base set. There's Paldea Evolved. Obsidian Flames. And Paradox Rift. Um, I did have a sealed Temporal Forces, but that's actually the, the one that I'm opening up right now. <laughs> so I'll have to get another one of those. There we go. Oh yeah, I didn't talk about this deck. So it's another uh, Team Plasma deck, pretty much the same as the in the previous year. Qrem, uh, Deoxys, and Thunderous. But this version also has a uh, Latia CX. It's not a Team Plasma Pokemon, but it does have a pretty good ability. Bright down. It can't be damaged by Pokemon with abilities, so it can be really good against certain matchups if they really rely on their um, Pokemon with abilities to do damage to you. This is such a good card back in the day, the Hypnotoxic Laser. Inflict automatic poison to your opponent, plus a 50-50 shot of putting them to sleep. Like, if this deck, if this card got reprinted in today's format, it would make the Cloth deck really good. <clears throat> I mean, it was pretty good before rotation, because you can uh, pair it with the Brute Bonnet and then the Electrode V. The more status conditions are on, are on your opponent the more damage it dealt, which is a pretty cool gimmick. I like stuff like that. Like combo decks that just uh, require, I guess, more creativity than like the really obvious stuff.
Rainbow Energy. I really want there to be a Rainbow Energy reprint. Tropical Beach. I always thought the inclusion of Tropical Beach in this deck was a little odd, because usually you use Tropical Beach in Evolution decks. Just to draw more cards, set up your Pokemon. But this is an all-basic Pokemon deck, so I thought it was... I don't know, it just seems a little weird. Because you're able to attack starting on turn one. You know, if, if you have a Thunderous, just needs one energy. Or even if you start with Curem, you can attach for turn and then use Cold Rest Machine to start attacking. But if you use the Tropical Beach, you can't attack. And that Block Lax back during the day with Hypnotoxic Laser. Not a healthy deck, but still super cool. Um, the Team Plasma Snorlax? Yeah, I think that was the first time it had Block, right? But it also needed like 5 energy to attack. What was the attack called? I forget what it's called, but I think it did like... It's like 20 or 30 damage for every Team Plasma Pokemon you had on your bench or something like that. I've seen lists of that Snorlax deck, but... I don't know, I'm not really interested in building something like that. I mean, I guess I could. I should have most of the cards. Yeah, that one. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got it right. I think the attack card was... The attack uh, name was Team Pact or Team Impact or something like that. Actually, I might have it here next to me. Hold on, hold on. Just my general hollows. Uh, do I have it? I got a bunch of the smear gold down there from back in the day. Uh, actually, no, I don't have the Snorlax. I know I have it somewhere. It's just not in this folder. Oh, it wasn't a hollow, was it? I think it was just a non-hollow, so it might just be in my bulk box. <clears throat> I'm thinking about the current Snorlax, which I think it is a hollow. Oh man, don't tell me we're in 2014. Yeah, we are. We made it to 2014. Worlds in Washington, D.C. I really like Washington, D.C. I got to go see the Smithsonian for the first time. I could have spent hours in the Smithsonian. I love stuff like that. But I was there with a group of friends, and they wanted to go back to the to the convention center to play more Pokemon, I mean, which I get. I mean, not all of us got our invite that year. So most of my friends were just kind of hanging out and watching the games. But I thought, I could just watch these games online later. When am I going to be in Washington, D.C. again? I want to go sightseeing. So I got to go check out the Smithsonian for a little while. But then we all left. I hated that Toad deck. Quick and Punch with the DCE? Yeah. But I think um, that one was 2015 that it got printed. Uh, let me double check, actually. Yeah, the Seismitoe deck got printed in 2015. Oh yeah, next booster pack time. So we did two decks from 2014. All right, let's see what we get. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not talking about the Seismitoad got printed. I mean, it, um, it got printed in the, the World Championship deck. Seismitoad uh, came out in 2015 for the World Championship version. That's the one I was talking about. No, but I get you. Yeah, I don't really like that um, Seismitoad deck either. I've only featured it once on my channel, and like that battle just 
It took way too long for anybody to take a prize. I'm like, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> and here we go. Deerling, Kidev, Pineco, Mawile, Behem, Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, Rapidash, Bramblin, Meltan, and Miraidon. I've got a bunch of these already, so I don't really need too many more. Or, I don't need any at all. <laughs> I, but still, Miraidon is always good to have. It could be good, a good trade card for other people. Alright, next deck. Okay, we have the Trevenant Excelgore deck, which is pretty much the same thing as the Gothitel Excel Excelgore deck from the previous year, but it's better because Trevenant does the exact same thing as Gothitel. What's in, in the active spot? You item lock your opponent, but instead of being a stage one, sorry, stage two, it's now stage one, so it's easier to evolve into. You don't need to use rare candies, but it is a little bit weaker because I mean, you still item lock your opponent. You still use Mew to paralyze and poison, but now your opponent has access to. Uh, is it in here? I don't know if it's in here. I don't think it's in here. No, it's not. But now your opponent has access to Lysander. So if you have Trevenant as your active Pokemon, your opponent can just use Lysander to switch in the Excelgore, and then suddenly they can use your item cards again. So in some ways it got better, but in some ways it got worse. Toad was a really mean, nasty, toxic deck, especially with Lysander's trump card. I'm really glad that they actually banned Lysander's trump card. It just, yeah. It made battles go on forever. Although while I was still in the format, I did build a pretty funny gimmick deck. Um, actually, let me see if I have the pieces for it still. Hold on. Getting back my folder again. Uh, where's my lightning Pokemon? Oh, here we go. So I use my Magna Zone, and what was the other one? I think it was a Kingdra. Yeah, Kingdra. So back when uh, Lysander's Trump card was still legal, I used these two cards in the in the deck alongside Lysander. So I. What I was trying to do, I was trying to recreate the Riptide deck with Feraligator back from Team Rocket through Neo. Um, so you use, you know, for the Feraligator deck, you load up your discard pile with Water Energy, attack with Riptide to deal a ton of damage, but then you got to shuffle the Water Energy back in. And then you use, uh, what's that card called? Trash Exchange to discard more Water Energy and then just keep doing that every turn. So the idea was similar. Uh, load up water energy in the discard pile to power up the dragon vortex. Then you shuffle those water energies back in. And then Magna Zone, the abilities you can use two supporters per turn. So if you were about to deck out, you use Lysander's Trump card to shuffle your, your deck back in. And for your second supporter, you can use... Uh, what's it called? Professor Research, or Professor Sycamore, as it was called back in the day. Discard your hand and just try to... Discard as many water energies as you could with um, cards like the Professor and Ultra Ball and stuff like that. So you just keep doing that every turn. Um, the deck was not very good, but it was still pretty fun. I tried to revive the old archetype. I think at best it was maybe like a tier 3 or tier 4 deck. Okay, anyway, back to sleeving now. Sorry, I kind of got sidetracked there. <clears throat> oh yeah, here we go. Pokemon Catcher, when it was reprinted to require a coin flip. So now it's not as broken as it was the year be before.
a phantom. The uh, the Trevenant will actually go on to become such a a good card when it got its break evolution. I think it was 2016. Trevenant break it was a crazy good card. Use it with uh, I think it was Wally or Wally's training. Evolve your phantom on the very first turn. Establish the item lock. And then your next turn, go into Trevenant Break. Give it more HP and a better attack. Just keep spreading damage to everything on your opponent's side while they were item locked. And then use stuff like the uh, Crushing Hammers to get rid of their energy cards. So Trevenant... It's a really good card in the 2016 era. All right, with that, we're done with another box of sleeves. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> Town map. I like having Town Map in decks every now and then. Turn all your prize cards face up. I just don't really like that we have to do a lot of prize checking throughout games. I don't know. I'm just a lazy person, honestly. I know it's, you know, prize checking is a skill. You gotta practice at it during your first deck check. Just, you know, take a look to see what's missing to figure out what your prizes are. But that's just too much work. I have seen some, um, you know, potential ideas to help with the whole price checking thing. Like um, one of my favorite ones that is at the beginning of the game, you know, during setup. Look at the top thirteen cards of your deck. You keep seven of them as your opening hand, and the other six go to your prizes. That'd be a pretty cool new way to just do know you what your prizes are so you don't have to spend a whole lot of time um, prize checking plus it would give people more opportunity to have you know consistent openings to reduce the chance of getting um, donked on the first turn of the game because I just saw that yesterday in one of the um, the streamed matches in the Orlando regionals it was a uh, Future box deck going up against the Chien Pao Bax Caliber deck. The Chien, Chien Pao player opened just a single. Um, what's it called? Fridge Bax. And they couldn't you know, use their supporter for the turn, so they just passed. And then in the, the first turn of the Future Box deck, they opened with Maridon. They attached, put a couple of uh, Iron Crowns down, and just took the one hit KO and won the game on, the, on their first turn. So, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes luck is not on your side. But I think if you were able to look at the top 13, keep the seven that you want, it might better for, be better for opening hands and just, you know, like I said earlier, reducing the time for price checking. Just about done with this one. Come on. I think Muscle Band is also really good. <clears throat> tool card. Just an automatic plus 20 damage to whatever it's attached to. I mean, nowadays we have the, uh, what's it called, Vitality Band, but that only gives an extra 10 damage, which is really not that much, especially in a format now where, you know, your giant Pokemon have over 300 HP. 10 extra damage isn't all that much. I mean, it can help you with a certain math. Like, it's really good in Charizard decks. If you're trying to get to 280 damage, if you want to knock out V-Star Pokemon and stuff like that. But I think plus 10 nowadays just isn't that good. All right, we finish another deck. 
Trevenant goes on top. Okay, now the final deck of 2014, Genesect Verizian. Open with Verizion. Uh, use Emerald Slash, 50 damage, and then attach two Grass Energies from your deck to your bench Pokemon. So give them on the Genesect. And then Genesect is going to be the one taking the KOs. Megalo Cannon, hit for 100 damage, and then snipe 20 to something on the opponent's bench. And Genesect also has a really good, good ability with Red Signal. When you attach a Plasma Energy from your hand to it, it's pretty much a boss's orders. Just drag up anything you want from your opponent's bench to the active spot to knock it out. And you also have, where is it, the A spec. G booster. It can only be attached to uh, Genesect, but it gives it a new attack. G booster. Discard two energy and then hits for 200 damage. It can also hit through any effect. So if you're Opponent's Pokemon would be like protected by an ability or something. G Booster ignores that, so it's pretty much a one-hit KO against anything you want. So a really good deck back from that format. All right, here we go. Last deck of 2014, then we'll move on to 2015. We'll get to see the magical Seismitoad deck that everyone's been talking about. Oh, my voice is starting to go. Hold on, let me just get a drink of water. Okay, here we go. Oh, I just noticed the time. Been going for two and a half hours. It doesn't feel like it's been that long, actually. So last time I was... Sleeving last week. I went for four and a half hours, I think. But then I got had to stop because I was getting hungry and tired. So we'll see how long I want to want to go for today. I did want to finish sleeving all these this weekend. But I don't know how well that's gonna work. <clears throat> I'll do as many as I can. But we're only on 2014. We got to go all the way to 20. Oops. We got to go all the way to 2013. No, not in the 13. 23. My bad. I was off by an entire decade. But to be fair, there was no world championships in 2020 or 2021. So that is eight decks I don't have to sleeve. Oh, Whimsicast is in the chat. Hey, Whimsicast. Looks like I came in a good time to see Virgin. Shame if Eltel didn't get a 2014 Worlds deck. That would have been cool, but actually, you know what? I already have that deck built. That's the one that I competed with back in 2014. Veltal, Darkrai, Garboder. So I still have my original list back from 2014. <clears throat> actually, I took that deck to a tournament at an anime expo. And I went almost undefeated until the final round. I lost against, actually, this deck in the final round. So I came in second place in the entire tournament, which is pretty cool. I think the second to last match was a mirror match. The other guy was also playing Evel Tonkar Boater. But I just set up faster than he did, so I beat him. But then I couldn't set up fast enough against uh, this deck. You know what? Second place is still pretty good. So I'm happy for that. I wonder if I still have my trophy from that year. I'd be in this room somewhere. Eh, nope. I thought it was going to be behind me. It's not there. Never mind. I think Yveltal is probably best deck in 2014 world format, despite Virgin's good placements. Every time I play that and you Yveltal pops off with like Three Dark Patch on turn two. Yeah, it's a super good deck. I think Yveltal was just a 
a better constructed Mewtwo EX because it had a pretty similar attack with Evil Ball. But I don't know, it just felt more balanced on Inveltal than it did on Mewtwo. <clears throat> because you couldn't just spam it in, in every deck like you could Mewtwo because it just needed um, DCE to be powered up. A Shadow Triad was good for getting back some of your Team Plasma cards. Plus, you can also use it to get back a discarded G booster, as it also counted as a Team Plasma card. Skyro Bridge, a really good stadium for basic Pokemon. Reduce their retreat cost by one colorless energy. So it made uh, moving around a lot easier. Those slings are so slippery. It takes a while to get them broken in. Oh, Enhanced Hammer! I forgot about this card. This card has special energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. I think this card is being reprinted pretty soon. So if you have any of the original Enhanced Hammers, you should be able to use them uh, when the new one gets reprinted. Another town map, like I was saying earlier. It's a good way to look at your prizes without having to spend too much time prize checking. All right, with that, 2014 is complete. Let me just put this one away. Okay, so next booster pack. Okay, let's see what we get in this one. Pikachu, Ghastly, LGM, Sizzlypede, Explorer's Guidance, Latias, Ancient Booster, Energy Capsule, Duosian, BHM, a Cargo, and Metal Energy. That's uh, not a whole lot of uh, usable stuff. I mean, you can use these for an Ancient Box deck, but I've got lots of these already. All right, so I've got a few sleeves left. Okay, now we can move on to 2015 in Boston, Massachusetts. That was a crazy year. I remember when I went there, there was that uh, like incident where the I think it was two guys showed up to the the convention center with like a bunch of um, with like some guns and a bunch of ammo, and people were scared they're going to shoot the place up. That was scary. I remember getting a, a bunch of messages from like my friends and family, like, oh my God, are you okay? And I'm like, I, I had no idea what's going on. So I like, what, what are you talking about? And then everybody told me like, yeah, we just, we saw in the news or like, you know, posted online that two guys showed up with um, with guns and they, were, they might have uh, shot up the place. I'm like, what? I had no idea. So I'm glad nothing happened. Wasn't there an Executor deck in 2014 with Blockade for one energy to lock your opponents from using supporter cards? Actually, yeah, I remember that one. Uh, what's that, that that come out of? Was that Roaring Skies? I don't remember. But yeah, I do remember that Executor. It's pretty rare to have cards that lock 
um, supporter cards. I don't really have. I don't think I've seen that many. I know that Executor was one. And there was also um, Stoutland. I think it had an ability. When it's in the active spot, your opponent can't use any supporter cards, if I remember correctly. Plasma Freeze. Okay, yeah, never mind. I got it wrong. Yeah, I vaguely remember that deck. I don't remember too much about it, honestly. Oh, yeah, I didn't talk about this deck. So Primal Groudon is going to be the main attack of the deck. Gaia Volcano. Just deal a ton of damage. 100 plus 100 more if there's a stadium in play. But then you got to discard that stadium. So it does take a while to get set up because there's not really energy acceleration in the deck. You just got to attack manually. Oh, sorry, attach manually. Uh, I think there does have Mega Turbo. Yeah, Mega Turbo. It only works on Primal Groudon once it evolves. So it did take a while to get up and running, but once you got it, it was really hard to stop. It can... One hit KO so many Pokemon, and it had 240 HP, so it was pretty hard to knock out in return. Plus, if you did, it also ran the Robo Substitute to kind of stall out a couple of turns. So you can use Robo Substitute as a basic Pokemon, and if it gets knocked out, it only has 30 HP. If it gets knocked out, uh, your opponent doesn't take any prizes. So you just kind of sit behind the Robo Substitutes for a turn or two, set up your Primal Groudon, and then just start taking KOs. Pokemon Center Lady, you can heal 60 damage off your Groudon. Plus it also had that um, Hard Charm. I passed it a little while ago. It's, an, it's a tool card. Equip it to your Groudon. Oh, here's another one. Equip it to your Groudon. It takes 20 less damage from attacks. So... Just make it even tankier. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember that uh, a Stoutland card I was talking about, the locking supporter cards. Wasn't that one also paired with the Raichu, with the Evo Shock ability? Was that the same deck? I don't remember. But I know it was part of another lock deck. Like, I think you use Raichu to paralyze the opponent, and then you switch into the Statland to lock their supporter cards. I think it's how it worked. I don't remember too much. And I don't remember if that was an expanded deck or a standard format deck. There's been so many decks across the years, I don't remember them all. Stalin was paired with Raichu. Yeah, an expanded shock lock. Copy Little Pup to recycle Devo Spray. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, so it was expanded. I know Raichu was used in, uh, I think, one deck in standard format. I think it was paired with Heatmore, if I remember correctly. It was also another lock deck. Oh man, my back is starting to hurt again. I've been sitting here for close to three hours now. <clears throat> and I can feel my voice starting to go. Alright, just power through, just power through. Let's see how far I get. Oh yeah, here's the Bunnelby. I was talking about it earlier that I was recently um, showcased in a, a tournament in Japan that they played expanded format. Used this Bunnelby because uh, it can attack twice with its um, ancient trait, Barrage. 
So you can give it the uh, evolution TM to evolve. I think you can use that attack twice, right? You can, or you can just use it to evolve. I think it would go into like you evolve your Pidgey into Pidgeotto and then attack again to evolve Pidgeotto into Pidgeot. If I, if I'm reading that correctly. I also have a Sunlot deck that uses Raichu, but it loses to evolving decks. Oh yeah, because once they evolve, you know, they're not paralyzed anymore, right? I don't know too much about the Sun and Moon through Lost Thunder format. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know too much just about the Sun and Moon years in general. I was not playing or collecting during those years. So all the all the information I have about Sun and Moon, it's just I've been slowly learning about it as time goes on. Yeah, the devolution in the format revolves around Celebi Prism Star, which gets lost on if it's KO'd. Oh, okay. The Grout on EX looking badass. That's a pretty cool artwork to it. I also really like the Primal Grout on artwork. One thing I did, did like about Mega Pokemon is that they have the attack name spelled out in the card. And it's pretty funny that in the English cards we have the Japanese name. But in the Japanese they have the English name. <laughs> so we just swapped them around. Oh yeah, strong energy. I didn't talk about strong energy. This made fighting type decks so much stronger. Boost your attack power by 20 points per strong energy attached. So you can use that in this deck with Landorus, and then later on with Buzzwool, Lycanroc. It was super good support for fighting type Pokemon. Okay, so that's the first 2015 deck done. I'll just put this one away. And here's Landorus, finally. Landorus EX. Another fighting type deck. With Crobat. With the Crobat line. Or Zubat. Um, Zubat doesn't really matter. It doesn't deal damage. But yeah, Landorus, snipe the opponents with uh, Hammerhead, hit the active for 30, and then hit something on the bench for 30. But actually, you can do more with Landorus. Give it a Muscle Band. Give it a Strong Energy. That's already plus 40, so your Hammerhead is hitting for 70 damage on turn 1. And then you use Golbat. When it comes into play, put 2 damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. And then you evolve it again to Crobat, put 3 damage counters. You Super Scoop up to pick up your Crobat and then do it all over again. Just keep spreading damage around. It's a really fun deck. And then Halucha, just a really good single prize attacker, hitting for 60 damage. For just one energy, but it only damages EX Pokemon. That was such a weird choice. Not bad, just weird. Uh, sorry, I didn't know when you posted that. What are you talking about? Oh, you're talking about the Mega Pokemon having like the Japanese names? I have that deck. Landorus EX and Crobat, yeah. Pretty fun deck to use. I like decks with that kind of strategy in mind, just spread damage around. Spread decks I don't really think aren't that viable nowadays because EX Pokemon have such just giant HP that hitting for like 20 or 30 damage isn't that good anymore. And I don't really think there's a good way to balance it because if you increase the spread damage, you know, it's not going to work against... I mean, it's too strong against a single prize decks. But if it doesn't deal that much damage, it's not good against EX decks. So I don't know. I don't know what'd be a good middle ground. I guess if you specified, like, if this attack um, damages a non EX Pokemon, you hit it for like 
30 damage. But if you hit an EX Pokemon, you hit it for like 50 or 60 damage. I don't know. Piss everywhere. <laughs> That's a really funny name. Hey there. Absolutely love the vids. Keep it up. Hey, thanks. Always love the support. Thank you for watching. And then, yeah, they had to edit the file just to change it to a language that isn't what it's being translated to. Yeah, that was a pretty weird choice. When they could have just left it and saved the work, so to speak. But I think when in Japanese, when they had the um, attacks printed, they were printed with the English alphabet. But the, the names, the attack names were still in Japanese. So they'd still have different names than what we got here in, uh, in the U.S. At least I think that's how it worked. I don't really remember. I like the gimmick of like Crobat lines. Ever since the first Dark Goldbat and Dark Crobat came out way back in uh, Team Rocket and then Neo Destiny, they just have the ability when they come into play, they just deal some damage to whatever you want. And they just kept it going. That's a really cool gimmick. I like that certain Pokemon just have like the same kind of ability every time they get reprinted. And just seeing the Shaman EX takes me back. Remember how crazy expen expensive the normal EX was, like $70 in 2015? Mega Charizard attack is Wild Blaze and Artwork in the attack after a quick Google. Okay. What was... Um, what's it called? Um, what, was, what was Mega Rayquaza in Japanese? The um, Not the colorless one, but the, but the dragon type one. I think that's the one I'm thinking of that it had a Japanese name. It was just spelled with them, um, with English letters. Roaring Skies boxes are 399. Yeah, Roaring Skies was such a good set. That's when you got the Shaman EX, the Rayquaza EX. I remember I bought a box of Roaring Skies and I got two of the full art Rayquaza EX. And I was super happy with that because I wanted to build that deck. So to see that I got two of the full art ones in the same box, like, oh, this is this is a sign. I have to build this deck now. <laughs> oh, here we go. Scoop of Cyclone. That one's getting reprinted, right? As a new A spec. So if you have any of these original ones, make sure to hold on to them. The Rayquaza was Ganyo Tensei, Gar Gario Tensei. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought it was. Something, something in Japanese. So I wondered what would have happened like if we kept that attack name for the um, for the English version. Like people would be confused. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm just about to finish another box of sleeves here. And, yep, that's it. Another one done. Next one. Yeah, Wim's posted it, so you're right on that. Would have had a bunch of kids screaming in the playgrounds, probably. <laughs> that would have been really funny to see. Gario Tensei! I'm just leaving some really... Confused parents and teachers. And they probably like get really mad about it. Like, no, they're 
they're promoting uh, like witchcraft and Satanism because those means like those words mean like worship the devil. I remember that was going on a lot back in the '90s when people were saying that Pokemon was like satanic and their names meant like worship the devil or something like no they're just japanese words it was so crazy back then <laughs> people would believe anything i guess people still do i'm not going to get into that <laughs> A fighting stadium oh yeah this is another boost to um, fighting type Pokemon. Each of your fighting type Pokemon in play do 20 more damage. So with that Landora's example from earlier, 20 damage from the Muscle Band, 20 damage from the Strong Energy, 20 damage from the Fighting Stadium. That's already plus 60 damage for just one energy. So fighting Pokemon had a ton of good support back then. Thankfully, we were out of that by that point. Funny we had the scare in the 90s when we also had games like Shin Megami Tensei. I know, right? Yeah. Those actually evolved, involved, like, demons, right? Yeah, it was crazy. I think there's still, like, videos on YouTube of, like, you see, um, like, pastors and psychologists talking about how harmful Pokemon is to kids because, yeah, it's satanic. and Oh, it was insane. Uh, okay, I think that's two decks done from 2015. So now we can move on to the next booster pack. Here we go. Meditate. Turtonator. Hoot Hoot. Beldum. Boltund. Mudsdale. Explorer's Guidance. <gasps> yes! I got another Prime Catcher! Oh, I've been getting super lucky. Like, every box I've opened, I've opened three boxes so far. This is my third one. And every one has had a Prime Catcher. This is my third Prime Catcher. Yes! And then Metacham, Coridon, and Grass Energy. Three Prime Catchers! And I'm loaded. I just noticed a sparkle on camera. That looks really cool. Look at that. Whoa, that's crazy. All right, I got the Prime Catcher. It's a good box. <laughs> Yo, nice. Leave some for the rest of us. Sorry, my luck is just too good. All right, let's go to the next one. The beloved Seismitoad EX deck. Eduardo says, do you have other decks, theme decks? Um, what do you mean, like the structure decks? Like not these world championship ones? Um, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I have all the cards for most of the theme decks that have come out. I just don't have them like sealed. But yeah, if you want to see some more theme deck battles, I can totally do that. I was talking about it earlier, that I want to do a battle featuring the theme decks from Legendary Collection. So it's Dark Charizard versus Dark Blast Toys. I mean, I'm not going to buy the decks because they're crazy expensive, but I have the cards to build them on my own. Okay, so this deck had just a really annoying card. Seismitoad X. For a double colorless energy, Quaking Punch. Oops, excuse me. 30 damage. Your opponent can't use any item cards. So 30 damage, I mean, on the surface doesn't seem like a whole lot. But then you pair it with the Golbat and Crobat line that we just saw a little while ago. Where's the Crobat? Oh, come on. There we go. Golbat and Crobat to deal some more damage. Verbank City Gym with the uh, Hypnotoxic Laser for Poison. 
and then Poison deals 30 damage between turns with the Burbank City Gym. Muscle Band is your tool to do an extra 20 damage with a Quaking Punch, and then you're hitting for a lot of damage. And you just keep spamming the same attack throughout the entire game. Your opponent doesn't get to play any item cards, which was really annoying. One of the most annoying decks to go up against. There's a glare on the cards. Oh, my bad. You just move them to the side a little bit. There we go. That should be better. <clears throat> yeah, I think... On its own, Seismitoad isn't that bad. It's just, it had so many good things around it to just make it stronger. Like the double colorless energy, the Verbank City Gym with Hypnotoxic combo. Uh, the Crobat line. Oh, and you can also use AZ just to pick it up. If it's about to get knocked out, just pick it up and then slam it back down. Keep attacking. There's so many things around Seismitoad just made it such an annoying deck to play against. And then Head Ringer is actually a pretty cool concept for cards that we actually haven't seen since. You can attach this card to your opponent's Pokemon, which is usually something we never see in the Pokemon TCG. Like, cards don't, like, they don't cross that boundary, right, between your side and your opponent's side. But this is like, um, this archetype is like one of the few times you can actually do that. You attach this card to your opponent's Pokemon. Which kind of made things kind of like tricky back in the day. Because if you and your opponent have the same color sleeves, you might have accidentally left this card with your opponent. And then you have to like go chase them down and get your card back. I heard of that happening a couple times. I don't like 2015 to 2016, but I do like Seismitoad making Night March. Was it Maul? Mad? Did you mean Mad? Or Mid? Actually, I really like the Night March deck. I thought it was a pretty fun archetype. It's the first time we see that kind of thing. And then it got repeated later on with um, Lost March and then Mad Party. Now, most recently, we have the, what's it called? United Wings. But nowadays, I think that type of um, <clears throat> deck is not as strong because hitting for 20 damage times, I mean, yeah, you can take knockouts against single price Pokemon, but when you're going up against Pokemon with over 300 HP, you have to hit them like three times. It's just not worth it. Again, if they made like adjustments to stuff like that, like... This attack does 20 damage against your opponent's active Pokemon, but if it's a Pokemon EX, this attack does 30 damage times. You know, just give it, giving it that extra bit of attack power might make that type of a deck a little more viable nowadays. How are we on the music? Okay, that video is about to end. Once it does, I'll go to the third one. I'm just cycling through Pokemon music um, videos on YouTube on the computer behind me. The 20 times modifier isn't too bad, but using double turbo and missing battle compressor dooms the copycats. Mad Party was good and expanded though, since uh, it had battle compressor then. Yeah. Also, I don't know, it might work better if there was just more Pokemon in the archetypes. Like, I think United Wings only has three Pokemon, is, or is it four? I know it has um, Murkrow, Watchroll, and Flamigo, right? So if you run a total of, um, if you run the max copies of four of each, you have a total of 12 Pokemon. 
Unless I'm missing one, I don't remember. And then you can use Ditto to copy their attack from the discard pile. So if you have all 12 in the discard pile, you're hitting for 240 damage. So even if, at your max attack power, you're not one-shotting the big EXs. But you know, I guess, yeah, it does balance out because you're only giving up one prize on KO. So if you're two-hit KOing their big EXs, it does balance out. So yeah, it just takes a long time to set up your discard pile with that many Pokemon. Relaxing Viridian City music. Yeah, I really like the Viridian City theme. I should just make like a top 10 playlist of my favorite Pokemon songs. I wonder if this one will be in it. I don't know, I have to think about it. I already know that my favorite song is Echo Teak City theme. And then the second one would be the Lake of Rage theme. Third one would be Route 10 from Black and White. 33 songs. What other Pokemon songs are good? Oh, there's a couple of really good ones from Scarlet and Violet. I just, I forget what they're called. Oh, you know, the, the Area Zero um, song is really good. I like that one. But you know what? Yeah, I think, I think this song, Viridian City, might be up there too. After VMAXs and tag teams, I've learned to appreciate Seismitoad. <laughs> really? I don't know. I think the more time goes on, the more I don't like it. Honestly, I don't really have too much of a problem with tag team Pokemon, except ADP. That one, I think, was too strong. But for the most part, I think they were fine. I think when they tried to outdo themselves with VMAXs, that's when the game got out of control. I didn't really like the VMAX era. But I don't think, in my personal opinion, <laughs> I don't think tag teams are, are all that bad. Because we still had access to other pretty good Pokemon during those formats. It wasn't like tag teams were like the only viable decks. We need a good evolution format like EX and Heart of Gold Soul Silver through Black and White. And then Pokemon music's always great. Yeah, I, I agree. I love Pokemon music. I usually use Pokemon music in the background when I'm doing my workouts. <clears throat> and every time I post uh, a new battle video on my channel, I'm trying to find like a good, good song to, to play in the background. I usually try to use um, a song from the same like generation that I'm playing in. So if I'm playing, you know, like a 2006 or 2007 deck, I try to use music from Ruby Sapphire or Fire Red and Leaf Green, that kind of thing. Okay, we just finished another deck, the Seismitoady X. Actually, I'm out of space on my box. I gotta start using my new storage box. Uh, give me a sec. I just gotta set it up real quick. Uh, just gonna use this real quick. I'll keep the cards from sliding all over the place. To me, it felt you either played Picaram or Charizard or losing. Shinku, yeah, especially in the first form of Picaram came out since there wasn't Bench Barrier. Anything that wasn't a tag team got tag bolted for three to four prizes. What's the best way to get older Worlds decks? Oh, you know what? I, I don't think there's an easy way to get them nowadays because they are so hard to find, like on eBay and stuff. And if you can't find them, they are expensive. They're like hundreds of dollars. So it really depends on what kind of deck you're trying to build. You might just have to pick up a couple of um, like individual cards every now and then and just slowly build them up. 
Or if you really want to play them, you know, just proxy them. Just print them yourself. Because these aren't tournament legal to begin with. So there's nothing wrong with just proxying them if you're just going to play them for fun. Hey, Whimsicast, you have a, a video on your channel on, on proxying cards, right? I, I think I saw it a, a while back. So, so yeah, if you're interested in proxying cards, I would recommend checking that one out on Whimsicast's channel. Oh, yeah, so the, this deck, Blast, Archie's Blast Toys. Let me just go over it real quick. You use... Where's Archie? Oh, man. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Archie. So you can only use this card if it's the last card in your hand. So just play through your hand as quickly as you can. Uh, get a Blast Toys thrown into the discard pile with cards like Battle Compressor or Ultra Ball, stuff like that. And then when you play this, you can put a Water Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench. And it doesn't have to be a basic. You can just... Get the Blastoise, put it on your bench right away, and then draw five cards to load up your hand again. And then with Blastoise's ability, just uh, attach as many water energies as you want to your Pokemon. And your main attackers are going to be the Keldeo. And I believe it also had Mewtwo in here. Yeah. Keldeo and Mewtwo. So both of these, the more energy they have, the stronger they get. I remember watching the finals. It was, uh, oh, what's the guy's name? Jason or something, Van Wagner, he set up Blastoise turn one and then loaded up like a Keldeo with a bunch of energy and then his opponent just scooped <laughs> like on the first or second turn of the game. It was really funny to watch. It was like the fastest game I've ever seen in a finals match in the World Championships. Oh, hold on. Music stopped. Let me load up the next video. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, I should remake that video. I made it in five minutes and somebody asked, but I made it re <laughs> really lazily and I feel bad since they got like 3,000 views. Yeah, I saw that it was one of more, your most uh, popular videos. I think the way to find the video, thanks. It was Jacob. Okay, Jacob Von Wagner. Okay. But I really like the concept behind this deck using a Archie to set up a Blast Toys. I think it was in the expanded format, right? There was there's the maxi equivalent. Put a fighting type Pokemon from your discard onto your bench, and then people would pair that with Archeops. And with Archeops ability, your opponent couldn't evolve their Pokemon. I think they got one of uh, those cards banned, right? Either the Archeops or the maxi. I don't remember. Oh god, this background music will be in my head all day now. <laughs> Either I'm sorry or you're welcome. I don't know if you like this music or not. <laughs> I hope you guys do. Just something to have in the background so it's not just me talking the entire time. Oh, Waylord! I remember that Waylord deck. I think it was in the finals of, the, of Nationals. It, it never attacked. It was just a stall deck. It was so funny. That battle went on forever. I think it was it was Jason Kalzinski playing against it, right? With the Seismitoad deck, so he just kept on using Lysander. Or somebody kept on using Lysander just to recycle their deck so like the battle never ended. I think that was the game that got Lysander um, banned. They both got banned. It's Ar Archeops got the boot. Okay. Yeah, I do remember seeing that combo and expanded. Black-white music is awesome. It's just a total earworm. <laughs> yeah. I really like the, the music just in general for black and white. <clears throat> I'm not really too much of a fan of the music from... <clears throat> oh, what's that format? Or what's that era? The Diamond Pearl games? I don't know, just... I never really got attached to any of the music. They all just kind of felt like too generic background music. Like, nothing really stood out to me from Diamond Pearl. Like, it didn't have its own, like, unique feel. 
Like, if that makes sense. You know, like, gold and silver had their own, like, flavor to them. Kind of, like, more subdued, almost kind of, like, nature-ish vibes, if that makes sense. And then Hoenn, like, the Ruby and Sapphire games, it was just all trumpets. <laughs> like, you knew when you were listening to a Ruby Sapphire song. But then Diamond Pearl was just, I don't know, it didn't feel as inspired. But then Black and White came out, and I think they had really good music. Shiftery from Next Destinies also got banned in the expanded format. Oh yeah, didn't Shiftery combo really well with the, uh, what are they called? Uh, Forest of Giant Plants, you could just evolve into it right away. I forgot what it does. Is that the Shiftery that you pick up one of your opponent's benched Pokemon or something like that, so you, you donk them? I don't remember. Trumpets was so good. <laughs> I know. Actually, uh, back in high school, I was a trumpet player, so I'm all about playing the trumpet. Okay, just finish another box of sleeves. Let's go to the next one. The Sinnoh things were piano based. That was their base. Yes, that's correct. Okay. I don't know. I just, I never really got into the Sinnoh music. The only one I did like was the champion theme for Cynthia. That one was really good. I think it's the only one I like for Diamond Pearl. Keldia was so good. Do we have a Pokemon with this ability in the current format? Rush in? I don't think so, right? If we did... Um, I think... Oh, actually, no, never mind. I was thinking if, if we did, it would be good against Blox Snorlax. I mean, it, I guess it could be if we had a Pokemon like that with a good attack. We just keep jumping into the active spot and just hit whatever's in front of you. <clears throat> Unless the Pokemon was um, EX, then you could just stall it out with the uh, Mimikyu. I'm holding out hope that they print the broken time space. Never gonna happen now. Oh no, I, I don't think that card is ever gonna get printed again. That was way too strong. Turn one Lugia, <laughs> I know, right? Solgaleo had the ability from Celebrations, but it just rotated out. We have Gengar that switches in, but I think that's it. Oh, okay. That's a stage two, though. This Keldeo is just a basic, so it's a lot easier to use. Oh, Jirachi, really good ability. What was this, the... Um... Was it the second card that has this ability to search your deck for a supporter? I think the first one was just a Lapras. Right? Or did we have something else? And then Jirachi, and then we have Luminion. So it's always just been a pretty good ability to search your deck for any supporter. Gengar and Decidueye have different switching abilities. Russian Keldeo would have... To have one retreat to be good right now since we don't have floats down. Yeah. I think that's another reason that the Flaffy Rayquaza VMAX deck didn't work out because we didn't have a card like the Keldeo to jump into the active spot, power up your Rayquaza, and then switch it out again. <laughs> I mean, it did have, um, what was that stadium? The Tower of Waters. It gave Rayquaza a free retreat cost, I think, right? Because it was a Rapid Strike Pokemon. So you, you had to, like, have two Rayquaza set up. Retreat the active one to promote the bench one and just go back and forth. But it was just too much of a hassle. Ooh, 
bring bra bring black uh, floats down. They should. It was so good. I mean, they're, they're bringing back like nerfed versions of it, like the ancient booster capsule. Oh no, sorry, the future booster capsule gives a free retreat cost, but only for future Pokemon. And then we also have the escape board, but it doesn't give it a free retreat, right? So I think it's just minus one retreat cost. Okay, we just finished another deck. 2015 Blastoise. Yeah, let me just put this one away real quick. Future Capsule is Muscle Band and Floatstone for future Pokemon. Yeah, it's really good. Two of like the best tools combined into one. All right, here we go. Starting off into 2016. So this was um, this is the first time since what year? Since 2011 that I didn't go to Worlds in 2016, and that was because I started going to grad school during this year, so I couldn't do much of anything. So Darkrai, Giratina, pretty fast deck. Use Darkrai as one of your main attackers. Just load up on Dark Energy to attack with Dark Pulse. You can use cards like Max Elixir to get energy out of your deck, or Double Dragon Energy, attach it onto your Giratina. Counts as a two Darkness Energy. The more Dark Energy you have, the stronger your Dark Pulse gets. And plus, you also have the Garbo Toxin. Give the Garbodor the tool card and shut off all abilities. Which is pretty good in that format. Actually, I think Ability Lock is just good in any format. And also, we have the Chaos Wheel on Giratina. 100 damage. Your opponent can use Poke Tools, Special Energy, or Stadium cards during their next turn. So, pretty much stops. Uh, What's that deck called? Night March, because they only ran double colorless energy. You just keep attacking with Giratina. And then they never attack because they can't attach their special energy cards. Double Dragon is another card. Never getting a reprint. You know what's a shame? I wish they would. That'd be cool. Heck, I don't even think I settle for just a single uh, dragon energy. It's a rainbow energy, but it only works on dragon Pokemon. What kind of dragon Pokemon would use that, though, now that I think about it? Are there any good dragons right now? Well, I guess there's the Coridon Miridon. Uh, what am I doing? I lost track of what I was doing. My bad. Let's keep going here. <laughs> Oh man, my brain is all over the place. I've been going for over three hours. Two energy, but it does 20 less, like double turbo energy, maybe. It might work, yeah. I'm surprised they got rid of fairies instead of dragon type. When they keep dunking on dragon Pokemon with unplayable attack costs. I know, yeah, it's so hard to use a dragon Pokemon because they need like such crazy energy types. Okay, I got a question for you expanded players because I genuinely don't know the answer. Are you able to use Lysander and Boss's Orders in the same deck? Like, I know back in the day, you were not allowed to use Professor Sycamore and Professor Juniper, because they did the same thing. It was just um, slightly different names. I mean, I don't know why you would run eight uh, boss's orders. But I mean, you could you? Nope. Okay. Nope, same rule as Sycamore Juniper Research. Okay, okay. I figured... 
but I am not an expert in expanded, so I did not know. <clears throat> Are there any cards, any other cards like that that you can't use multiples of because they do the same thing as another named card? Like the boss's orders, Lysander, or Sycamore Juniper? Or is that the only two? You can't mix and match either. Like two Lysander, two boss. Really? Oh. That's weird. Like if it equals four, what's the. I mean, what's the harm? But I don't know. Also, I do really like the concept of these uh, reversible stadiums. Like, depending on which way you play it, it has a different effect for you and your opponent. I thought that was a pretty cool little gimmick. It'd be cool if you brought something like this back to the current format. I just don't know what it would do. <clears throat> Oh, you know what? I just thought of something. What if it's like a, um, like I don't know, like a paradox Pokemon thing. Like one side has future Pokemon, one side has ancient Pokemon, and I don't know. Just depending on on what you have, it either deal more damage or you take less damage from that other archetype. That would be interesting to see. Let's see. I have another question for expanded players. Is it possible to use black white Pokemon catcher? The one that doesn't require you to flip a coin. You can play four, hop, four, how, friends, and etc. Really? You can do all those even though they're the exact same thing? I mean, I guess they're not that good to begin with, so I don't know why anybody would. You can, yes, but it's considered to use the errata text. Okay, so you need a coin flip for the original Pokemon catcher? I figured. Yeah. I think it's like that nowadays, right? You can still use the original Pokemon Catcher and standard decks, but you need to flip a coin for them. Oh yeah, this is another one of my favorite songs that's playing right now, the Cherry Grove City from... Uh, Gold and silver. Yeah, that's good music right there. <clears throat> I played my old quick balls with the completely different effect from 2010. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I have a couple of those. Uh, actually, I used a full set of four of them when I made some decks for 2021, which, I mean, we didn't have a world championship, but we did have the Players Club, sorry, Players Cup. So I, I made some of the lists from the, the global finals, and I used the original Quick Balls in one of the decks from that. Also, I think it's really funny that you can use the original Super Rod back from, I think, either Neo Genesis or Neo Discovery, one of those two, that has a totally different effect, but you can still use it in current uh, decks, as long as you you know make sure to use the, the correct effect on it. I've seen some people use those online, on, on stream in the uh, tournaments. <clears throat> yeah. All I remember is that the old Master Ball had the current Great Ball effect. Yeah, and the original Great Ball has the current Nest Ball effect, I think. Search your deck for a basic, put it onto your bench. And then they gave Great Ball the original Master Ball effect, and then Master Ball got its own effect when it got printed as an ace spec. When Bill got reprinted in Heart Gold Silver, it was absolutely gutted. The base it won by turning into supporter. Yeah. The original one was super good way back in that format. <clears throat> then again, you also had access to four, you know, Professor Oak in turn one, four computer search, four item finders. 
There wasn't so much of the Pokemon that were overpowered in uh, in base set. It was the trainer cards. That's why I kind of want to do that battle that I talked about a little while ago, using some like base set era like Pokemon, just the Pokemon, but use trainer cards from standard format. That might be a fun little video idea. All right, just about done with this deck. Computer search also can't replace a spec computer search. Oh yeah, because it needs to say computer, I mean, it needs to say a spec on it, right? Which really sucks because I have a ton of those original computer searches, but I couldn't use them. All right, here we go, just finish another deck. Darkrai Giratina. We got the next one here. Wait, am I missing a deck? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about this one. Okay, let's do the Omega Break first, and then we'll do Greninja Break. I guess Unlimited is the only format that allows to use of cards with whatever is written on them. Old Rare Candy would be busted on Charizard EX. Yeah, if you could play it turn one, that would be really good. <clears throat> Greninja Break. More like, oh, I can't see what the... Something's covering the, the word there. I can't see what it says. I have to wait for the text to scroll up. Oh, here we go. Forest of Giant Plants. Broken time space, but only for grass-type Pokemon. I think we need some more good grass-type support nowadays. Charizard needs to be reined in. And then we have a couple of decent grass-type Pokemon, like the Iron Leaves and maybe the Torterra. But we don't have a really like a lot of stuff to support the grass type. Oh yeah, I didn't really talk about this deck too much, huh? So let's let's go over some of the main Pokemon. We've got the Yon Mega, Yon Mega Break. Vestaquin? Where is it? Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Yon Mega, there we go. So these are your main attackers, Yon Mega. Kind of like the Yon Mega Prime back from Heart of Gold, Soul Silver. It has an ability that lets you attack for free. If you have exactly four cards in your hand, ignore all the attack costs. So Assault Boom can hit for 120 if your opponent has a tool. Or Barrier Break on the on the Break version, hit for 100. And it's not affected by weakness, resistance, or any other effects. And then you've also got the Vestaquin. B Revenge, hit for 20, plus 10 more for every Pokemon in your discard pile. So it just gets stronger as the game goes on. It's a pretty good deck right there. Also load up your discard pile with Pokemon with... Uh, battle Compressors. And it only runs four energy cards, I think. It only has the four double colorless energy, but you can just keep recycling. That was wild about the 2016 era. Like, you could get away with just running four energy cards because there was so much draw power back then. You could just shuffle your energy back in and then just draw back into them. Oh, 
Oh, here we go. Greninja break, more like fell on my lap break. <laughs> yeah, that did help. Thanks, yes. I want to make the 2017 version of Greninja Break. I'm just missing a few cards for it. Actually, I have the Greninja Break line, but what else does it need? I think it needs... The version that I saw has a 1-1 Starmie line, which I don't have. I only had one to begin with, and I used it in a Volcanion deck. And what else am I missing? I'm, I'm missing some other cards. I know that. <clears throat> Oh yeah, Special Charge. This is a card that you use to shuffle the double colorless energy back into the deck. And then you use stuff like Shaman EX to just draw back into it. Plus you didn't always need it because the Yon Mega can just attack for free anyway. The DCE was just for the Vespaquin. Greninja was such a great deck, so annoying to play against. <laughs> I don't know, I liked it. It was kind of tricky to play against when it started um, ability locking you, though. What was the attack called? Shadow Stitching? So if your deck really relied on abilities, yeah, you were kind of screwed. <clears throat> Lugia could use some special charge. You know what? Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think Lugia is, like, oppressive enough, this format, like it was way back when it was introduced. But I, I think it could use a buff from, like, special charge. Get some energies back into the deck. Because Lugia nowadays, I mean, it's good, but it's not, like, overly busted like it was when we had Aurora energy back in the day. Because you could just pair that thing with anything. My favorite was using those amazing rare cards like the Raikō and the Eveltal. Those are really good. I played Volcanion by then, so yeah. So you can figure out how well that went. Oh yeah, fire versus water. <laughs> I imagine you did not do very well. Lugia cooked the format so much they can't print any good special energies anymore. I'm guessing, yeah, that's why they haven't printed any good rainbow energies recently. Like, like we only have the luminous energy, but you can only use one per Pokemon. Otherwise, it just counts as a colorless energy. <clears throat> they might be waiting for Lugia to rotate before they give us some good rainbow energy cards again. And Volk added its damage from using the ability. Greninja kept saying no. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can discard fire energy to boost your damage output by, like, 30, right? Yeah, that was really good. Plus, you can get the fire energy back with the, the baby Volcanion. Get the fire energy back onto your bench Pokemon. I really wanted the Volcanion deck to get printed as one of these decks. But we had other ones to print that year. It was 2017, right? Yeah. But eventually I just went ahead and built it myself. That's a pretty fun deck. I do like using the Turtonator GX just to get back five energy <laughs> using its, att its uh, GX attack. Just about done with this one. And last one. Okay, just finished another 2016 deck. I think with the exclusion of Shaman EX, this is like an exclusively bug type deck, right? Because we have Yanmega, Vespicoin, and Ariados. Or is it? Yeah. That's a pretty cool uh, theme they had going on. I, I don't know if like they did it on purpose. Like, 
like they had like pretty good synergy together. But yeah, just having an all bug themed deck again with the exclusion of Shaman. Okay, so let's go on to the next booster pack now. Here we go. <clears throat> Meryl. Also, I want to say, seeing Meryl as a psychic type is just so weird to me. Like, I know it's a fairy type, that's why it's psychic, but I don't know. I always just saw it as a pure water type. All right. Golette. Dunsparce. Snom. Iron Treads. Oh, buddy, buddy. Keeping that one aside. Lycanroc. Roselia. Hoot Hoot. Relicant and Water Energy. All right, not bad. I got the Buddy Buddy Poffin. Always a good card to have. Yeah, fun play pattern was my expanded deck with Volcarona. Actually, I don't know that deck. What does Volcarona do? I got the Greninja Break deck here. Here we go. It's two different Greninjas. Where's the other one? Here we go. So we got Water Shuriken and Giant Water Shuriken. Discard Water Energies to deal damage to your opponent. And this is the main attacker. Use Shadow Stitching, 40 damage, and then lock abilities on your opponent's side. So kind of like the... What was that attack card called? Um, Psychic Lock from Gardevoir back in 2010. 28 through 2010. So, spread damage and lock abilities with Greninja. Pretty good deck. Ice types doing super effective damage to fire types in TCG will always be funny. I know, right? Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. I remember way back in the day when I was a kid and I was um, still collecting the original booster packs. The first time I saw Articuno, I thought it was a mistake because, you know, the original Articuno was a water type. And then I thought, that's not right. Articuno is an ice-type Pokemon. So I kept on, like, looking for ice Pokemon cards before I realized that they don't exist. That's not a thing. Like, all ice types are automatically water types. That always messed with me as a kid. Or seeing poison types as grass types. Like, I saw, like, coughing and wheezing, and they were grass-type Pokemon. Like, that's not right. These are poison types. Where's the poison-type Pokemon cards? But again, <laughs> that wasn't a thing. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Deals 20 damage for each fire energy in the grave. Shuffles them back into the deck. Use some strike at the discard hand and draw four. Volcanion to buff up the attack by 50. Could also scoop up a Volcanion. Oh, okay, so Volcarona is kind of like the, um, what's it called? For Alligator Riptide. Damage for every energy in the discard and then shuffle them back in. That's pretty cool. Blaze through your deck and deal massive damage every turn. Oh, that's awesome. See, some expanded deck ideas sound pretty interesting to me, but then the, the format as a whole just kind of, I don't know. I'm not really a fan of it. Expanded Pokemon reminds me a lot of, like, Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, there's just so many decks that could just shut you out on turn one that I just, I'm not into that kind of thing. <clears throat> and yeah, that's kind of why I don't like Expanded. Because it just reminds me too much of Yu-Gi-Oh. Of current Yu-Gi-Oh anyway. Like, I like the older formats, like I said. I love playing Edison format Yu-Gi-Oh. Exactly the same, only one energy cost. Yeah, that was a bit before we got into what Expanded is currently. Okay. Yeah, I haven't paid attention to current Expanded. But I don't really think Expanded has gotten a whole lot of support. At least in, um, in the English side of the game. Oh, this Frogadier was cool too. The Water Duplicates attack. 
get as many froggy deer from your deck, put them directly onto your bench. The original one, uh, using that attack before um, Mirage Step Curlia. All right, this Talon Flame was pretty cool too. The Gale Wings ability. If you start with this Pokemon in your hand, you could play it as your active. So even though it's a stage two, you can play it directly to the active spot and just use it as your opening Pokemon. And then Arrow Blitz was a really good attack too. For one energy, I mean, you only deal 40 damage, but you, you could search for any two cards you want. It's a really good way to start off the game. Just search out any key pieces you need to get your combo going. Oops. Pokemon Ranger. I saw that this card kind of killed ADP in the expanded format, right? Because with this, you can shut off the um, Altered Creation GX ability so they no longer get extra prizes. So I remember thinking that ADP would be broken in the um, expanded format because, you know, they had access to double dragon energy. But then I saw that people were just playing the Pokemon Ranger to um, shut off that ability, and then they couldn't do it again because you only have access to one GX attack per game. So it's a good way to rein in the ADP. Still got a few more to go to finish up this deck. Running out of slaves in this box, though. So we'll get to the next box pretty soon. Oh, this chair is really uncomfortable. How long has it been? It's been almost four hours. Wow. Been going for a long time. So I'm coming up to same amount of time that I did last week, but we'll see if I can keep it going longer this time. So I did start two hours earlier today. <clears throat> oh, that's it. This one's done. Next box. Another bursting balloon. I think we need more cards like this in the current format too. Might help make some decks a little more viable, just to give them some more attack power. And one more. Okay. okay. Cool. With that, we are done with Greninja Break. Okay, put it on top. On to the next deck. ADP may have been much more manageable if we had Ranger and Standard. I know, right? Yeah. But because we didn't have anything like it. Kind of ran through the entire format. I think what really made it like super broken was just the introduction of Zacian and Sword and Shield. Because they were just perfect partners for each other. Alright, the so last deck of 2016, the World Championship winning list, Mega Audino EX. I remember when I saw this thing in the finals, like, what the heck is that thing? 
because I've never seen this dark deck archetype before. So evolve from your Dino, obviously. And then you just start attacking with Magical Symphony. Here we go. Three energy. Magical Symphony hits for 110. And if you play a supporter during that turn, it can snipe anything on your opponent's bench for 50 damage. So you pretty much destroyed Night March. Because all their um, attackers are 50 HP or less, right? Unless they had the Fighting Fury Belt. But yeah, that was kind of like a surprise archetype that ended up winning the World Championship that year. to say about this deck. Like I said earlier, I didn't really play too much of this format. I wasn't around for it. I was hoping that the Greninja Break deck would win, but this Ardino deck just set up faster. I just got them piling all the damage with the Magical Symphony attack. Plus it didn't really run like too many abilities outside of the setup. So the Shadow Stitching didn't do all that much. I mean, it could still use, um, Greninja could still use the second attack, the Moonlight Slash. But Mega Adina was just like really tanky because it had a ton of HP. Plus you could heal it with the Pokemon Center Lady. And since that counted as your supporter for the turn, you could deal that extra damage to the opponent's bench. I think I still have to showcase this deck in a battle, don't I? Oh, wait, no, never mind. I forgot that I have done a battle using Mega Audino. That was a long time ago. I should probably do another one. <clears throat> but there are still a bunch of decks that I have not used on the channel yet. I think the next video that I do might be a 2019. Because I want to use these two decks, the ones that I have built up here. I want to use Rampardos and Ultra Necrozma. I don't know how they're going to pair up against each other. I've never played these decks. I just built them, and they've just been sitting here. I imagine the Ultra Necrozma Malamar deck might win it, but I don't know. The Rampardo decks just seems like a lot of fun. I've just always really liked the concept of uh, fossil Pokemon. Although they're not always given the best support. Like, it's hard to get if, um, fossil Pokemon evolved. Because you got to play the fossil down and then evolve into their final forms. And the fossils themselves don't have any attacks or any way to defend themselves, really. But the Rampardos deck does have some support. I think it's a stadium card. You could just put your stage one fossil Pokemon into play. So it makes it um, a little more consistent and a little faster. So we'll see how that, uh, how that video goes. If that's the one I want to go, there's a lot of different videos I want to make in the near future. Still want to do a 2005 battle with Metacham going up against a ZRE. I still want to do a current standard format with Charizard X and Chi and Pao EX. Let's see. I want to do a raid battle. I haven't done one of those in a long time, so I've been wanting to do one of those. I think it's pretty funny that this Absol got reprinted from the Power Keeper set. Well, at least the ability did. It's the exact same thing when it comes into play. Move three damage counters from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another one of their Pokemon. But now it got reprinted as just a normal basic instead of an EX one. Just a good way to set up some math 
or your Mega Adino to take some um, quick KOs with its attack. Just about done here. Oops, sorry to slide. I think Hex Maniac might be a pretty good card nowadays too. For a single turn, you can shut off abilities. So that might help out with certain decks or certain matchups. I mean, it would really help against a Lost Box deck. You could shut off their, what's it called, flower selecting abilities for a turn. That'll really slow them down. But I guess it would really work against anything, because Charizard and Pidgeot are revolving their abilities. Chi and Pao uses Baxcalibur's ability. So I don't know, I think it just might hinder most decks in the current format. Okay, so it's another deck done. We are finished with 2016. Let me just put this one aside. And next booster pack. Hex Maniac is absurd. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a reprint of um, what's that card called from Pokemon Fossil? Um, Goop Gas Attack. Pretty much the exact same thing. Until the opponent's next turn, all Pokemon powers are shut off. Yeah, that was crazy. But that was before it was um, a supported card, so you can, you can play that card and still use your other trainers. All right, here we go. Next booster pack. We got Heatmore, Roly Coley, Azumarill, Yamper, Colossal, Perilous Jungle, Unpheasant, Ribambi. Oh, cool, another full art. Meltan. All right. I'll save that. Iron Valiant and a Darkness Energy. All right, so we got another full art to add to the collection over here. Okay, before I go on to the 2017 decks, I do need to go, go take a little mini break. So just give me a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, 2017. <clears throat> Starting off with Golisopod. Oh, we got Garbo Toxin again. Trash Alanche. Okay, that was the 
Garbo version. Another, I know Galisopod had two decks in this format. Okay, so this one, use Galisopod as your main attacker. First impression, when it moves into the active spot on that same turn, you can hit for 120 damage with uh, one energy. Garboda to lock abilities, because you know, Glycopod doesn't have any abilities, so it doesn't really hurt you. And then the other Garboda, Trash Lanch, 20 damage for every item card in your opponent's discard pile. So if your opponent plays a lot of items, you can punish them with the one energy attack for a single prize attacker. Really good uh, Pokemon in that format. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> We're already in 2017. I started the day slaving 2011 decks, so I think I'm doing pretty good so far. Oh, it's a glare on the screen. There we go. A little better. Also, Glycopod is just one of my favorite bug type Pokemon. It's got a really good design. I think it's wearing like samurai armor. Also, for anybody who's played the new Pokemon Snap game, in the underwater level, when you just see the Galisopod just walking around the bottom of the ocean, that was like creepy looking, <laughs> but like in a, in a cool way. In general, I'm just like afraid of the, the deep ocean. That's just a fear I have. <clears throat> so just imagining like, you know, you're at the bottom of the ocean, you just see this giant insect just walking around. It's like pretty terrifying. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, I've been talking for a long time. My throat is drying out. Actually, let me get a drink of water real quick. <clears throat> okay, there we go, that's a little better. Yeah, about to hit hour number four of live streaming here. And after I'm done with this case of sleeves, I still got the final case over here. So how many boxes is that? So aside from this one, I still have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I still have 13 more boxes of sleeves to go through. So it's 1,300. <clears throat> well, you know what? We did make it past the halfway point already. Uh, 2017. Um, where was this world held? Oh yeah, it was um, Anaheim. Anaheim, California. It was actually really close to my hometown. I grew up in Santa Ana, California in, um, in Orange County. <clears throat> and then I moved to Oregon 2016 for grad school. And then when I saw that they announced the worlds in Anaheim, California, I was, I was really mad. I'm like, really? The year that I move away is when you have worlds, like, pretty close to my hometown. <laughs> so actually, I, uh, I flew back home for the weekend just to attend worlds. I mean, I didn't play. Uh, I just want to go watch. And it actually worked out for me cost-wise, because I, uh, I didn't have to get a hotel or anything. Um, I just stayed at my parents' house. <laughs> And I got to go to the World Championships. That was a lot of fun. Okay, I'm just about to finish with this box of sleeves and then go on to the next one. <coughs> Last one. Yep, okay, next one. Here we go. I think what made this deck so good is because we had the Forest of Giant Plants in the format. Because you can evolve into your Glycopod in one turn, right? Where's the where's the forest? Have I passed one yet? Nope, not yet. 
Does it have a forest? No, I thought it, I thought it did. Oh, I know. I'm thinking about the De Decidueye deck. Never mind. The Decidueye deck has the forest of giant plants. But anyway, yeah, if your Golisopod in the active spot is getting too damaged, you use Acerola to pick it back up and then send in an another one from the bench if you have one set up. And that counts as moving from the bench to the active spot. And then the new one can attack for a ton of damage with just one energy. Also, 2017 is the first year we had GX Pokemon, and it introduced the concept of a GX attack, so an attack you can only use once per game, which is a really cool way to implement the Z-Move gimmick from the Sun and Moon video game. Just something you can only do once per game, but you have access to a really powerful attack. <clears throat> I think they trans translated that really well into the trading card game. And then they kind of brought it back during Sword and Shield for the V-Star powers, which could be either an ability or an attack. Which I think is a really cool way of just kind of keeping that gimmick going. Oh, you know what? That, can, that reminds me of another question. Again, for the expanded players, is it possible to use a GX attack and a V-Star attack in the same game? Because I know they're both once-per-game things. But I don't know if you can only do one or the other. Anybody know the answer to that one? I've always wondered that. Like, it'd be cool like if you're playing an expanded game, you have a, both your GX and your V-Star counter. And you get to flip both of them. Yep. Okay, so you can do that? Oh, that'd be cool. So you can use like Arceus V-Star with Arceus Diaga Palkia GX. Use uh, your V-Star to search out the double dragon energy and then use your GX for the altered creation. That'd be crazy. The mind game is to bring both counters and use none. That's pretty funny. You know, I've actually seen people do mind games like that. Like, like for example, like they'll bring a, a playmat that features like a really popular Pokemon. Like they'll have like a Charizard playmat and then Charizard slaves. And then you expect them to have a Charizard deck, but then it's like Chien Pao backs Caliber. <laughs> I've seen people do that. It's really funny. All right, we'll just finish our first 2017 deck. The next one. <clears throat> okay, this is the one I, I was thinking about. Decidueye with, where is it? Glycopod. This is the one with the Forest of Giant Plants, right? Yeah, that's the one. Forest of Giant Plants. Evolve your Grass-type Pokemon in a single turn. So same thing with Glycopod. Just hit with uh, First Impression. And then your Decidueye. You can evolve. What's the other one? Rowlet, Dartrix into Decidueye. And then De Decidueye once during your turn. Just put two damage counters on any of your opponent's Pokemon. So just uh, increase the attack power of the Glycopod every turn. Plus it stacks. So if you have multiple Decidueye, you can place four damage counters anywhere you want. It's a little more in inconsistent because you're running two different evolution lines. But the Force of Giant Plants really does help out. Plus it also has that... Uh, where did I... Espeon. Spread a lot of damage around, and then Espeon, Miraculous Shine, de-evolve all of your opponent's Pokemon. So if you have enough damage built up, built up on their side, you can take multiple KOs per turn. Right, here we go.
Decidueye in general has just been my favorite grass type starter. Most of the time, grass type starters don't really, I don't know, they don't do it for me. But something about like a Robin Hood owl, it's like so cool. I don't really like its Hisuian form though. I don't know, it just doesn't seem as cool as the original one. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't really think I like too many of the other grass type starter Pokemon. Like Venusaur is fine. Meganium is, again, is fine. Sceptile... I, Sceptile gets a lot of love. Like, it's a lot of people's favorites, but I don't... I don't know. It's not for me. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get the love for Sceptile. What else is next? Torterra. Torterra's fine. And then... It's Generation 5. Superior. I don't really like Superior too much. And then Gen 6 was Chestnut. I was just having this conversation with my wife yesterday. I think Chestnut looks a lot like Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. But then we've got Decidueye Generation 7. And that one is just like the first grass type that I really liked. And what else did we have? Rillaboom in Generation 8. Yeah, not really a fan of Rillaboom. And then... Scarlet Violet, Meowscarada. I think it's the second one that I've I've liked. Meowscarada and Decidueye are my favorite grass type starters. <clears throat> Normally I like the fire types. Ever since um, the original games Red and Blue, because I started with the Charmander, I've always just been attached to the fire type starters. Like, every, every time I get the new Pokemon game, my first playthrough is always with a fire starter, no matter what the other two choices are. But then on my next playthroughs, that's when I switch it up. I think the only fire type that I haven't really liked is Embor from Black and White. That was the third time we got the fire fighting type combination and i was just by that point i was just over it plus i didn't really like the design of embor i think it could have been done better like when we when i saw like the the first form tepig i thought cool it's like a little fire piglet thing and i was expecting like its final evolution to be like a like a giant warthog on fire like kind of think like um ganon from legend of zelda kind of like that but, you know, just covered in flames. That would have been so cool. But then we got Embor. I'm like, this thing looks bad. <laughs> I didn't like it. My brother, same. <laughs> on which on which point? Sorry, I, I, I said so many things. Um, which one are you agreeing with? <laughs> Let's see, what other fire types did I not really like? I didn't really like the Sword and Shield one either. The Cinderace? I really like the first form, Score Bunny. It's got such a cool little first form, but then its final form, it's just, it's just a person at that point. It's just a soccer player. And I did not like that. By that point, we were on our third firefighting, too, starting with red and fire Pokemon every time. Oh, yeah, cool. Nice. Yeah, fire Pokemon all the way. If we ever get a Pokemon Generation 10, it doesn't matter what the grass and water ones are. I'm going to start with the fire one. Actually, even for the upcoming Legend ZA, they haven't announced what the starters are going to be, but it's going to be the fire one again. Even if they choose Tepig, <laughs> I'm still going to choose it again. Maybe they'll, if it is Tepig, they'll do like a new form of Embor, and it'll actually be better this time. Like, which ones would be cool 
starter Pokemon for the the new Legends game. Like we know, well, if the first game is any indication, they're going to use the same starters from past generations, but just give them new final forms. So if they're going to go with Tepig, I really want the Embor to be a really good version of Embor. And let's see, what would be a good water Pokemon to use? Um, I think probably Totodile, because for Alligator hasn't really gotten a whole lot of attention. About, I don't know. They might not do that, because they are... I don't think they would do the same kind of like generations from the first Legends Arceus game. Like, we had a Generation 5 with Oshawott. Generation 2 with Cyndaquil, and Generation 7 with um, Decidueye. Or, sorry, Rowlet. I really hope they don't redo any of the Kanto starters, because they don't need any more attention. We don't need another Charizard form, or Venusaur, or Blastoise. So if they skip Generation 2, because they already used Cyndaquil... Uh, let's see, Generation 3... I don't know, because they all got Mega Forms in Gen 6. But if I had to choose one to use in a New Legends game, let's see. I would say probably Trico, because like I said, Sceptile is not really my favorite grass type design, so I'd be down to see another form of Sceptile. Where's, uh, where's the Sidrui? There it is. Okay, so we just finished another gen. I'm in 2017 deck. That's two down. We can go on to our next booster pack. All right, let's see what we get. All right, here we go. Carvana. <coughs> Ekans. Turtwig, Poochiena, Palafin, Airy. Oh, there's a good one. Say that. Colossal, Ponyta, Bolton, Maridon. Okay, we got another Maridon out of the box. Okay, so the Airy was good. Set that aside. Oh, running out of space over here. Okay, next deck for 2017. Alolan Ninetales GX. So you got your Aqua Patch to power up your Alolan Ninetales. Even the Vulpix by itself is really good. It was used in other decks just for his first attack. Octillery is good for drawing cards. And we got Tapu Koko to spread damage with Flying Flip. I think that's all the key Pokemon. Yeah, here we go. So, Octillery is pretty much the same thing as current format Bibarel. Draw until you have five cards in your hand. Vulpix is a really good starter in the uh, beginning of the game. Free attack with Beacon. Search your deck for two Pokemon. Add them to your hand. So, if you have like a what's it called, Remoraid on your bench, and you open it with Vulpix, just a Beacon to search out the Octillery and Ninetales, and, and then just evolve them both in the next turn. Ninetales has really good attacks. Ice Blade, snipe anything for 50 damage. Blizzard Edge, hit for 160, but discard two cards from it. And then Ice Path is a really good GX attack. Move all the damage from Ninetales to your opponent's active Pokemon. So if you got like 200 damage on it, like just short of being KO'd, just Ice Path, move all the damage so you're completely healing yourself and dealing a ton of damage in return. So you can kind of do some mind games with your opponent. Get them to not deal that much damage to you because they'll just reflect it back to them. Thank you. 
Oh, yeah, and the Aqua Patch is uh, kind of like a reprint of the Dark Patch, but only for water, water Pokemon, obviously. Oh, Wonder Tag. That's the one that I forgot earlier. When I was talking about um, Pokemon that adds the porters to your hand. So it's Lapras, Jirachi EX, Tapu Lele GX, and then Luminion V. That's the one that I forgot. I knew I forgot one. And also for Tapu Lele, it has an energy drive attack. It's pretty much the same thing as Mewtwo EX's attack. Double colorless energy for 20 damage times the number of energy attached to both you and the opponent's active. But they did finally give it the clause to ignore weakness or resistance so the game just doesn't de-evolve to Tapu Lele versus Tapu Lele. <laughs> So I think that's what they should have done with the original Mewtwo back in the day. And okay, that's it for this deck box. Let's go to the next one. Not deck box, slave box. Oh, and of course, Guzma. Really good supporter in the format. That's pretty much what um, the Prime Catcher does nowadays. Bring up one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, and then switch your active Pokemon. And I'm pretty sure this card was designed to go with the Galisopod GX, because in the video game, uh, Guzma uses Galisopod. So bring up one of your opponent's weak Pokemon, and then you switch into your Glycopod to deal 120 damage. So I think it's just a pretty good way to kind of carry on the the lore from the video game that Guzma is Glycopod's trainer. I think it's pretty cool. I like when they do stuff like that. Bridget, kind of a reprint of Pokemon Collector back from Heart Gold Soul Silver, with a couple of um, caveats. You can either search for one basic EX or three basic non EX and put them onto your bench. But then once GX Pokemon were introduced, you could just search for three GX Pokemon. The thing is, they don't go directly to your hand like they do with Pokemon Collector, they go straight to the bench. So if they have any coming into play abilities, like Tapu Lele GX's uh, Wonder Tag, it does not activate, because you need to play it from your hand. Okay, and then we had Pseudo Wudo tech against Rayquaza with its ability Roadblock. The opponent can't have more than four benched Pokemon on their side of the field. And Rayquaza needed a lot of benched Pokemon, especially with Skyfield to deal damage, so you could just put Sudowoodo and say nope. That would cap out their damage to 120 every turn. Okay, we're now over four hours into this live stream, so I'm about to catch up to my uh, previous record. But you know what? I'm going to keep it going, see how, how far I can go. What time is it right now? It's about to be 2.30 over where I am. All right, so I can keep going. Still have a ton of decks left after this, though. Still got, let me see, 2018, 19, uh, 22, 23. And that's how many decks? 16 more decks. 16 times 60 cards a piece. 
I'm gonna use that. A lot. <laughs> I'm not gonna do the math right now. I'm thinking about it. What is what is it? What's sixteen times six? I can't. I can normally do math pretty well, but I'm so tired right now. Times six is ninety. It'll be ninety-six. So nine hundred and sixty more cards. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh yeah, I think that's about right. Yeah. So not a, not including the rest of these twenty seventeen cards. Got about a thousand more cards to sleeve, and then I'll finally be done. Okay, last card for this deck. And we're done with Alolan Ninetales GX. Right, let's put that away. Decidueye deck got mixed up with my Galisapai deck. Uh, hold on, let me just fix that real quick. Final 2017 deck, Gardevoir GX. Another time Gardevoir got printed as a World Championship deck. Has a really good ability and attack. Secret Spring. Uh, once per turn, attach a Fairy Energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. And then the Infinite Force attack does more damage for every energy card attached to you and your opponent. So you can just load up your Pokemon with a ton of energy, give it a Choice Band, and you can take one-hit KOs against pretty much anything. There's no damage cap to this thing. So Guard of War, just kind of continuing the theme of energy acceleration. So a lot of uh, Guard of War cards just have that ability. Like the original Guard of War, way back from Ruby Sapphire. You could get energy out of the deck. This one, energy from your hand. And then current format, Guard of War EX, get energy from your discard pile. So, with all three of those Gardevoir, you can pr pretty much get energy out of anywhere. <laughs> Hand, discard pile, and deck. It also ran the Octillery package that just to help you draw in case you get end down to like one or two cards in the late game. Use Octillery to just draw back up to five. It was just a really consistent deck overall. And it just outclassed the other Gardevoir deck um, from earlier in that year. Because prior to this one, there was that Mega Gardevoir deck. I think the attack was called Despair Ray. So you use, um, what's that stadium card? Skyfield. Load up your bench with up to 8 Pokemon. And then Despair Ray hits for 110 damage. And then you discard as many bench Pokemon as you want in your attack. Increases by 10 for every Pokemon you discard. So it can hit for a lot of damage, but it just kind of starts to run out of steam towards the late game because you just don't have that many more Pokemon to discard. And then this Gardevoir got introduced and just uh, overshadowed the Mega Gardevoir. Which is a shame because I just, I like Mega Gardevoir better as a Pokemon. 
But in terms of the actual deck, yeah, the GX one is way better. Oh, oops, oops, oops. Spilling stuff over here. Oh yeah, and there's that Devolt Picks that I mentioned earlier. It doesn't evolve into Ninetales, it's just used for the beacon attack. Really good attack. <clears throat> of course you're going to have your Tapu Lele GX. Pretty much a staple in most decks of the format. Search your deck for any supporter you want, add it to your hand. And you also had access to Versus Seeker. Get back a discarded supporter back into your hand. So we just had a lot of really good cards during this format. 2017 has kind of turned into one of my favorite Worlds formats to come back and revisit. Just about done with these. I think this was the last time that Double Colorless Energy was printed in the game. We haven't seen a reprint of it since, I don't think. Because nowadays we have, let's see, we've had Twin Energy and Double Turbo Energy, but Double Colorless Energy on its own, I don't think they've made. It's just too strong of a card, so usually when they reprint it, they kind of give it some nerf. Like, I think Twin Energy, you can't attach it to a Rule Box Pokemon, and Double Turbo reduces your damage by 20. to run out of sleeves in here and cards. I wonder which one's going to run out first. Feels like the sleeves or might be the exact amount they need. Well, that'd be cool. Hope so. Let's see. One more Ralt, and then oh, three Ultra Ball, all in a row. <laughs> oh, I've only got two sleeves left. Again, we're short one sleeve. It's weird. All right, here we go. Well, by the end of the video, we should still have a bunch of sleeves left over. So it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Next one. Just one sleeve out of that one. And done. All done with 2017. Let's shuffle this a little bit to get the Ultra Balls split up. And these feel really smooth. Feels nice. Makes the decks a lot easier to shuffle. Now that they're finally sleeved. All right, put Gardevoir on top. Okay, we're finished with 2017. Now we can go to our next booster pack. All right, here we go. I already got two Ace Specs, a Gold Art, and an Alternate Art, so I don't think I'm going to be getting any more of those. Would be cool though. Right, here we go. Golet, LGM, Meltan, Nuzleaf, Foratris, Full Metal Lab, Golurk, Iron Hands, Eerie. Ooh, another one. Drampa and Lightning Energy. 
then they got the reverse hollow version of it too. So I'm keeping that aside. Okay, next one. Going into 2018, which was, where was this? Oh, Nashville, Tennessee. By this point, I had finally finished grad school. And actually, um, my wife and I got married right before, <laughs> right before this world championship. So we actually went to Nashville for Worlds as our honeymoon. It was a lot of fun. Nashville was pretty cool. Uh, which tech won Worlds that year? I don't think it was this one, was it? I mean, I don't remember. Oh, no, it was a Zoroark deck. I think that was the one, right? I haven't gone back to 2018 format in so long. What I remember about this format, it's that, like, three of the four decks that were printed kind of had, like, this rock, paper, scissors kind of relationship because this one, we have Bayonet. The Psychic type, weak to dark types. And then we had Zoroark, the dark type, weak to fighting types. And then we had Buzzwolf, which was a fighting type, which the weak to psychic types. So they're kind of hard to showcase on video because usually the battle is like so heavily one-sided just because they're hitting for weakness. The only deck that doesn't kind of play into that whole weakness dynamic is the Rayquaza GX deck. Which is pretty cool. You can use uh, Ray Rayquaza GX against any of these decks for a good battle. <clears throat> well, I guess unless you're going up against Garboder, because it'll just shut off Rayquaza's ability. And then it can't accelerate energy onto itself. Buzzwell was a really good Pokemon during that format. Single prize attacker. And, well, you can hit uh, Zoroark for weakness, which was one of the best Pokemon in the format. But also, if your opponent has exactly four prize cards remaining, you can hit for 120 damage for just one energy, which is really good. So if you hit into the, what's it called, Zoroark, you can pretty much one-hit KO it. Which is why this deck kind of ran it to begin with, because the Bayonet is weak to the Zoroark, so you needed that Buzzwell tech just to have a chance against it. Oh, plus, you also had the Jirachi to help against your Zoroark matchup, because the first attack, Stardust, you discard special energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, and usually uh, Zoroark attacked with double colorless energy, so you just use the Jirachi to get rid of their energy and just hope that they don't have any more. Although Zoroark was really consistent because you can just keep drawing more cards with its ability. So it's likely that they might have another uh, DCE in their hand. Oh, this Drempo, I kind of forgot about this one. Drempo is really, another really good attack with Berserk. If your bench Pokemon have any damage counters on them, it is 80 plus 70 more damage, so 150 for 3 energy. So you power it up with an energy card and then a DCE, and then you can attach a rainbow energy onto anything on your bench. Rainbow energy gives it 10 damage, which activates um, Drampa's uh, ability to hit for 150 damage, which is really good.
Oh, there's that Garboder again from earlier. Trash Lynch. 20 damage. Times the number of items in your opponent's discard pile. So kind of um, <clears throat> made it difficult for you to play your items because you'd always be afraid that your opponent has a, a Trash Lynch Garboder waiting for you. And if you play too many item cards, it can pretty much one hit KO anything. Because if you, if you played like 10 item cards, or if you got 10 items sent to the discard pile, it'd be hitting for 200 damage for one energy, which was insane. Yeah. So players have to learn to be really careful against uh, Garboder. Hold still. Here we go. We're just about done. And, okay, last one. We're done with our first 2018 deck, Bayonet GX. Oh, where'd I put it? There it goes. All right, on to the next one. Here we go, the Buzzwall GX deck. We had Buzzwall, Baby Buzzwall. We still have the strong energy in the format. And Lycan Rock. Oh, and I guess also Brooklyn Hill, which helps search out water and fighting type Pokemon, which is good because you also run the Octillery. And Beast Energy. So this is a really strong, consistent deck. These two guys were your main attackers. This guy was kind of like a better version of Landora CX. Had pretty much the same first attack. For one energy, hit the opposing active for 30, and then snipe something on the bench for 30. But then you can do the special energy combo, increase the attack power of your Jet Punch. Knuckle Impact hit for 160, but then it can't attack the next turn. But you also have the GX attack. The attack does 40 damage for each of your remaining prize cards. So if you use this uh, before you take any prize cards, you can... Uh, how much damage would that be? 240 damage, which pretty much one hit, one hit KO anything. Lycanroc GX had the ability Bloodthirsty Eyes, so pretty much boss's orders. When you evolved, bring something on your opponent's bench to the active, and then knock it out with either Lycanroc or one of the Buzzwall. So really strong deck. You also had the Beast Ring. It was only used with um, Ultra Beast Pokemon, like the Buzzwall. If your opponent has exactly three or four prize cards, search your deck for two basic energy and attach them to one, one of your Ultra Beasts. So kind of similar to Mirage Gate nowadays. Search your deck for two energies to accelerate, which was really good back in the day. And here we go. And this Lycan Rock actually it got used in a lot of different decks just because it had a really powerful ability. It was basically the Luxray level X of this format. It was like I've seen it being used alongside the Zoroark GX. And also there was that one, I think it was a rogue deck. You used, um, oh, what's that legendary Pokemon? Zygarde? Zygarde GX with, uh, with the Lycan Rock. Yeah, the ability to bring up any of your opponent's bench Pokemon was just really good. It's pretty much good in any format.
I think this deck also had the um, Diancy Prism Stone. I don't remember. Well, if it's in here, we'll see it. So Prism Star is another cool little gimmick that was introduced during Sun and Moon. So yeah, if, if we get to it, I'll go over what it does. Oh yeah, I forgot this deck also runs the Max Elixir. Just another way to accelerate energy cards. So you had Max Elixir and the Beast Ring. You have two different ways to get energy out of your deck. I think this deck might have been the best deck in format if it wasn't for its Psychic Weakness. Because that made it uh, lose pretty hard against uh, Garboder with Trashalanch. Because you kind of needed to use your item cards for this thing. I mean, well, I guess technically you didn't have to, but it would just really slow down your deck if you didn't have access to your Max Elixirs or your Beast Rings. But yeah, it lost pretty hard to the Bayonet Garboder deck. But it did really well against Zoroark because Zoroark is weak against fighting type Pokemon. Oh, I made it for Buzzrock. Yeah, I am currently in the middle of the 2018, yeah. I was about to say 2017. <laughs> this is the second 2018 deck that I'm sleeving. I did the Bayonet one a little while ago. Oh yeah, here's Diancy Prism Star. It's got a pretty cool little Prism Star rule. Uh, you can only have one uh, Prism Star of the same name in the deck, so you can only have one Diancy. But they usually um, have pretty good abilities to go with with that restriction. So with this one, when it's on the bench, all of your fighting type Pokemon do 20 more damage. So just another way to boost up your Buzzwool or Lycanroc's attack power. In addition to the strong energy, and the, the choice bands. Still got a couple more sleeves in here. Yeah, but then once the the Prism Star card got sent to the discard pile, it actually got sent to the Lost Zone instead, so you, it would never come back. All right, we just finish another box, which means we just finished another case. We're finally on to the last one. Okay, I see the end in sight. And four, been streaming for four hours and 43 minutes. Oh yeah, I definitely beat my previous record. Definitely have to build more 2018. Fun to play, but so many cards overlap with my needs for other formats. <laughs> what other decks are you trying to build? The one that I really want to make is a Zygarde GX deck. I don't remember if, it's, if it was 2018 or 2019. I'm pretty sure it's 2018, though. Just about done here. Oh, starting to slide all over the place again. Just move some stuff around. There we go. I should brace the cards up against something. Oh, another Prism Star card, Beast Energy. Attach it to an Ultra Beast. It counts as a uh, Rainbow Energy, but only for Ultra Beasts. Plus, it gives it 30 more attack points. Just another way to boost your attack power. Yeah, Buzzle just had a lot of things going for it. Beast Energy, Strong Energy, Diancy. It was such a good deck. And 
One more card. All right, done. It's two decks down for 2018. Buzz roll Lycan Rock. Let me just put this one away. Okay, next booster pack time. I'll probably do a Veltal Break. Zoro Galley, Zoro Pod, maybe Zygarde. And I need the Ray Worlds deck. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Eveltal Break. Yeah, that's another one I want to make. Actually, recently I just bought the two Eveltal Break that I need. Um, I just need well, basically everything else. But it does look like a lot of fun to play. What song is this? Hold on, let me check something. I hear whistling. Oh, it's from Sun and Moon. I did not know that. I don't know too much about the Sun and Moon soundtrack. It's a good song, though. I like it. Here we go. Mudbray. Mancino. Rockruff. Litten. Delcaddy. Future Booster Energy Capsule. Iron Hands. Yamper. Grotal. Oh, cool. The right on EX. I don't think I have this one yet, so this is my first time getting one of these. Nice, nice. All right, set that aside. Okay, now we can go to the next one. Rayquaza GX. Once again, my favorite Pokemon. I do think it's kind of weird that Rayquaza needs grass and lightning. Because normally Rayquaza cards use fire and lightning. I think the only time it didn't use those was, uh, aside from this one, was the, what's it called? Rayquaza C and Rayquaza C level X. What kind of energy did that one need? I don't remember. It had some weird energy requirement, like colorless energy, psychic, fighting, I think. I don't remember. Yeah, it was, it was weird. And then we had this one, which needed grass and lightning, which I never understood why. But then after that, we went back to using fire and lightning for Rayquaza. Grass and lightning seems weird in this format. Oh, and Max Elixir Rotator got paired with the Vika Volt, which is what it was probably intended for. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that makes sense. I never thought about it like that. I do have that um, Vika Volt Tapu Bulu deck. That was a lot of fun. I like playing that one. I have seen the Vikavolt Rayquaza decks, but I've never actually built one myself. <clears throat> oh, Puzzle of Time, I forgot about this card. This is a cool card, actually. I like the concept behind it. If you play two at a time, get two discarded energy cards, I'm sorry, two discarded cards back into your hand. So, I don't know, I think that might be a pretty cool gimmick to come back to. But, I don't know. Now that I think about it, it might make A-spec cards too overpowered because if you have, let's say, four Puzzle of Time, that means you can use Prime Catcher three times throughout a battle. That seems a little much. Zerka Tree. What does this thing do? I forgot. Your opponent reveals her hand, add a card you find there to their prize cards face down. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, the Ultra Beast always had some weird GX attack related to prize cards. Like this one, give your opponent an extra prize. Buzzwool did more damage for every prize card you still had. Uh, what else was there? Kartana, who just attack and just automatically take a prize. Blacephalon, flip over. Was it flip over or discard? No, I think it was discard one of your prize cards. And if it was a fire energy, you can attach it, I think. 
Yeah, they just had a weird gimmick with the prize cards. But it was pretty fun. I like that. Puzzle of Time got banned and expanded, so I doubt we'll get it back. Oh, really? Oh, man. Yeah, I guess like any card that can like potentially make like infinite loops, I imagine would get banned. Like Save a Life from Dark Explorers, Oranguru. I forgot where it's from, but the resource management one seems like another one. A puzzle of time. Yeah, Expanded just seems too similar to modern Yu-Gi-Oh! for me to enjoy. Snape was giving me some trouble. Mm -hmm. It's another puzzle of time. on Mysterious Treasure. I never really noticed it before. That's pretty cool. It's got the psychic symbol and the dragon symbol combined into one. Was it Mysterious Treasure that got like a really cool promo in Japan? I remember seeing something similar to that. Oh, I think I'm thinking about the um, Diamond and Pearl. I think they were giving out a, giving out as prize cards in Japan. I don't remember what they did. I, I've looked them up before. I think I also was looking to pick them up and buy them for myself, but then I saw how expensive they were, so I thought, never mind. <clears throat> All right, so another one done. Rayquaza GX. That's three decks done from 2018. Let me just put this one away. And last one for 2018, Zoroark GX. With the trade ability, discard a card, draw two cards. Really good ability just to draw through your deck. And then Riot is beating. 20 damage for every Pokemon you have in play. So you have, if you have a full bench, you hit for 120 damage. So it's just been, been a really consistent deck with pretty good damage output with uh, with Zoroark's attack. It also ran the Trashlanch Garboder, which just gets stronger into the late game if your opponent has a lot of items in their discard pile. Oh yeah, there's a the Kartana. Yeah, the GX attack, you just take a prize card. That's it. <laughs> it's as simple as it gets. Just attack, take a prize. All right, here we go. I also just noticed that on top of hitting Bayonet for weakness, Zoroark also resists Bayonet. It's resistant to psychic Pokemon, so just even more oppressive to Bayonet decks. And that's why Bayonet really needs to use that 
Buzzwall to take down Zoroark. Oops. Unit energy. You know what? If we don't get back like full on rainbow energies, I would settle for stuff like this the unit energy. It counts as three energy types. That are the, the blend energies from black and white. I think they're called blend energies. Let me just double check. Yeah, blend energy. So, unit energy is just a weaker form of blend energy because instead of providing four energy, it only provides three. But I still think that would be a pretty cool idea to to visit again. I guess I just have to kind of give it a a different um, blend of energies that won't make certain archetypes too overpowered. I don't know, but I guess I guess I could still see Lugia just really abusing that. Yeah, no, <laughs> no rainbow until Lugia rotates. Yeah, we don't need to go back to that era where it was just... Uh, what's it called? What's, what, what are those formats called? Tier 0 format with Lugia V-Star? That was insane. Okay, just finished another one. The only reason I want Rainbow Energy to come back is just for the the Reggie Gigas deck. I really like Reggie Gigas. That was one of my favorite decks in 2022. I remember November 2022, Lugia had 40% MetaShare in Day 2. Yeah. In day two, that is crazy. Like every top eight was just like nothing but Lugia V Star. I don't think we usually have too many tier zero formats in Pokemon. Like I know Yu Gi Oh has had a couple of tier zero formats. I played in one back in the day. I did not like it. The Dark Arm Dragon format. Man, that was brutal. Especially because they were so expensive. I couldn't afford Dark Arm Dragon back in the day. So if I went to any um, tournaments, the people that could afford them usually ended up winning the whole thing. Now I think it's funny that the Dark Arm Dragon just got reprinted as a common in a lot of the structure decks and just pick them up for a couple cents. But back in the day, they were like $500 a piece. And I really don't know why they made them secret rares in English. I, it must be like just corporate greed. It was really dumb because in, in Japan, Dark Arm Dragon was just like a normal... No, it wasn't a common, but it was just a regular rare card. Like, it wasn't that hard to pull. But when they printed it in English, they printed it at the highest rarity, a secret rare. So even if you bought an entire box, you were not guaranteed to get a Dark Arm Dragon. And I just hated that. That was one of the reasons why I got out of Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day. Just stuff like that. But the cool thing is about going back to retro Yu-Gi-Oh! formats. Since Yu-Gi-Oh! keeps like reprinting a bunch of their playable cards. 
it's really easy to go back and just make um, retro format decks, which is what I've been doing. Now the trick is to actually find some pe some people to play against. There's not a whole lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players out in my area. I wish we got the expanded. Uh, what does it say? I can't see that word after expanded. Ex expanded reprints like Japan gets. Do they get reprints like that? I didn't know. Oh, format. I wish we got the expanded format reprints like reprints like Japan gets. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know they did that. Like, what kind of uh, reprints do they do? Okay, we just finished 2018 with the Zoroark GX. Let me just open up the new booster pack. Here we go, let's see what we get. <clears throat> Relor, Ponyta, Chatot, Cottony, Perilous Jungle, Unpheasant, Santa Scorch, Fluttermane, ooh, hold on to that one. Haunter, Whimsicott. Hey, I got a Whimsicott for you, Whimsicast. <laughs> cool. Got a, another Fluttermane for the Ancient Box deck. Each time there's an expanded event, they give away an Altart supporter. This weekend it was Raihan. Oh, that's pretty cool. Then you get a prize pack with one of eight reprints. Stuff like the Wobbuffet, com Computer Search Battle. Really? Oh, wow. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, that would be cool if we got stuff like that here. Man, Japan gets all the cool stuff. Like I, yesterday, I was looking up on eBay some um, Japanese cards. They're promos. I, I forgot how they gave them out, but it was from the e reader format. So there's a warp energy, um, a boost energy and something else but they had like really good artworks and with the with the e-reader barcode going down the side oh they look so cool but they were really expensive and most of the ones that i found were also um what are they called they were graded so even if i picked them up i wouldn't be able to use them until unless i broke the case open but i really wanted to get the warp energy because warp energy was actually playable back in the day All right, here we go. 2019. Starting off with the Blacephalon GX deck. It's going to be your main attacker with Mind Blown. Put any amount of fire energy attached to your Pokemon into the Lost Zone. And then 50 damage times the number of energy. So hit for big numbers. Oh, you've also got Naganadel. You get snipe stuff with Venom Shot. Mostly you're sniping the Dene GX because you can one-hit KO them, take an easy two prizes. And you've got the baby Naganadel to load up your Pokemon with energy from the discard pile. So get energy back with this guy and either snipe with the big one or mind blown for big KOs. So. Oh, you've also got one of the best supporters ever printed. Welder, attach up to two fire energies from your hand to one of your Pokemon. And it doesn't have to be a fire Pokemon. You can give them to anything. And then draw three cards. So with this thing, you can pretty much attach three energy from your hand. And also built in draw support. All right, let's go. <clears throat> oh, I just saw the time. I've been going for over five hours. 
my back really hurts right now. I'm gonna get a drink of water. <clears throat> okay. I really want to finish slaving all these today. How many more do I have? I got all of 2019, 22, and 23. That's 12 more decks. Let me double check. That's one here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, just 12 more decks. Okay, okay, okay. Just power through. I really want to finish tonight. Another beast energy as Blacephalon is an ultra beast. Custom catcher. And you know what? I think this is a, a balanced way of using a, a catcher type card. You have to play two of them at once to use the Pokemon catcher effect. So it's not always live. That one or the counter catcher that you can only use if you're behind in prizes. I think when you give them restrictions like that, it makes them a lot more balanced. I mean, I know the, the current format Pokemon Catcher does have a coin flip behind it, but I don't know. I, I prefer the other ones, the Custom Catcher and the Counter Catcher. And I think there was also another one, um, Great Catcher, I think. Yeah, Great Catcher, right? Discard two cards from your hand and then bring up one of your opponent's GX Pokemon. something hold on oops there we go <clears throat> one of my favorite casual formats is next destiny's xy for flip catcher escape rope nine tails and genesect dx are the only ways to guess makes for good games yeah i prefer formats where we don't have a guaranteed um gust trainer There's just something just inherently unfun about just finishing games with a uh, boss for game. Yeah, I just I don't like that kind of those kinds of formats. I prefer when those abilities are tied to Pokemon instead of trainer cards. So Luxray, Lycanroc, Genesect. I never used the the Nine Tails one though. What else was there? Oh yeah, Umbreon VMAX recently had that. I don't know if they'll ever do it, but I really want them to stop printing bosses orders because I just want that card rotated out of the standard. We've had it for too long. And while we're at it, get rid of Professor's Research, too. I think we got rid of those two supporters. It would make for just, I don't know, more, more interesting games.
Almost done with these. We'll finish our first 2019 deck. Now we can move on to the tag teams, everybody's favorite. It's hard to believe that I've been going for five hours. Last week I did four and a half hours. So I've done almost, I think almost 10 hours of just sleeving Pokemon cards. Like that's an entire work shift right there. But unlike a normal work shift, this actually costs me money. <laughs> These were expensive. All right, let's put this one away, move on to the next one. Okay, on to the first tag team deck, Pikachu Zekrom. <clears throat> We talked about it a little earlier in the video. Tag Bolt GX, really good attack. I mean, it does need six energy cards to use. If you're just using it with three lightning, you can hit for 200. But if it has at least three more attached, that's 200 and then 170 to something on the bench. So if you knock out two GX Pokemon, that's four prizes taken for just one attack. It's crazy good. Tapu Koko, Dance of the Ancients, get some energy from the discard pile onto your lightning Pokemon. Thunder Mountain, reduce the attack cost of your lightning Pokemon by one lightning energy. So you can actually use full blitz for two lightnings, accelerate three more by its effect, and then use Tag Bolt on the following turn. That's crazy how just consistent that was for attacking. Electro Power, increase the attack point, attack power of all your Lightning Pokemon by 30. So it just had a lot of options to take quick KOs. <clears throat> yeah, this is a, a format that I think a lot of people just kind of lost interest in the, in the Pokemon TCG. It's because battles were just down to giant basic Pokemon. And usually for me, big basic Pokemon formats have never really been my favorite. Like the original um, base set format with um, Hitmonchan, Electabuzz. Yeah, it's not not all that fun for me. And then 2012 with Mewtwo. What's it called? Um, Dark Ray. Not all that fun. But I think this one has more variety than the other ones because you can actually use some evolved Pokemon. So to me, that makes it a little more interesting. Everything from Team Up on just didn't appeal to me at all in the meta. Yeah, like I said, I know that tag teams really turned a lot of people off to, to the game at that point. <clears throat> There are a lot of decks, though, in the format that I really do like, the ones that aren't kind of focused on tag teams. Like the <clears throat> Quagsire, Naga Del deck. I think that one was a lot of fun to use. That Chandelure deck. Um, who used that one? Jimmy Voigt's. Just use Chandelure to discard fire Pokemon off the top of your deck and then put them directly onto your bench. It was such a fun deck idea. I love that one. Um, this one right here, the Rampardos Fossil deck, is another interesting looking one. So yeah, the ones that aren't focused on tag teams, I think, are really fun and creative. There are a lot of cool rogues, but they're always going to be rogue is the unfortunate part. Yeah, I get that.
Yeah, I don't really do a whole lot of uh, tag team battles just because they're over too quickly. I think I showcased um, this one, Picaram versus Charizard once. I think the battle was over in like under 10 minutes. It was really fast. And then I also did Shadow Rider Calyrex. I mean, those are VMAXs, but still, they're three prizers. Shadow Rider Calyrex versus Urshifu VMAX. So, more three prize Pokemon. I think that was also over like in eight minutes. It was a really fast battle. So, yeah, tank teams and VMAXs don't really make for like long and exciting games. Volkner. I think it's really funny that they reuse the exact same artwork for this Volkner that they used back in uh, Diamond Pro Platinum. I think it was Vol Volkner's Philosophy. He's sitting in the same pose. I think it's just the background's different. Zero or I keep forgetting that this deck is sorry, this card is in the deck. Each of your Pokemon that has lightning energy has no retreat cost. I, mean, I didn't really play too much of this format. Was this card just used for the ability or did it attack? I'm gonna the attack does decent damage. You can load it up with um, Pikachu Zekrom if you needed another attacker. But I think it was just used for the ability, right? Just to give your Pokemon free retreat. The attack, the GX attack sometimes got used, but usually just for the ability. Okay, yeah, I figured. I mean, giving your Pokemon a free retreat cost is usually pretty good in any deck. Bench Barrier. Yeah, you had to run Bench Barrier in this format because if you're playing against another Pika Rom deck, they could just snipe your bench with, uh, with a GX attack. So Mew was pretty much a staple. Its attack was pretty good in Sun Moon through Lost Thunder Bike Array, though. You know, I didn't actually read its GX attack. Full voltage GX. Attach five basic energy cards from the discard pile. Oh, okay, so it's the same as Turtonator. Uh, but used for... With lightning instead of fire. Oh, wait. Did it specify lightning? Oh, no, it doesn't. You can use it with any energy. Oh, that's pretty cool. Quick way to get some energy back in play. Just about done with this deck. And we'll be halfway done with 2019. And here we go. Okay, put Pika Realm on top. That's done. All right, 
We're running pretty low on booster packs. We're almost done. Okay, next one. Let's see what we get. Grubbin, Metacham, Tranquil, Mr. Mime, Airy. Oh, another one. Send a Scorch. Oh, another Buddy Buddy Puffin. Nice. So, good booster pack right off the bat. Poochiana, Rapidash, Melmetal, and Fire Energy. I think these two trainer cards made it worth it. Next one is going to be, oops, glare. Here we go. Reshiram and Charizard GX, which is the first time I would say that a Charizard card was good. But I kind of don't count it because I'm thinking that Reshiram is the one pulling all the weight. <laughs> Charizard is just there tagging along. <clears throat> this deck was crazy good, though, with a com combination of uh, Welder, Giant Hearth, just keeps searching out fire energy. Accelerate them with Welder, and then just take KOs with Flare Strike and Double Blaze. Plus, if your um, Reshi's are took too much damage, just you Outrage. Deal that much damage back to your opponent. It was really good. Just the fact that we had Welder in the format made Fire decks, or really anything using Fire Energy, really fast and consistent. Oh, yeah, Fiery Flint. Yeah, there was just a ton of fire support back in the day. I think we also had a... Oh, we have this one, Heat Factory. What was the other one called? Fire Crystal? Fire Pokemon were just given a ton of support. They really wanted Charizard to be good. So they gave it as much support as they could. Oops. Kind of reminds me in Yu-Gi-Oh. Going back to Yu-Gi-Oh again. Uh, the Blue Eyes White Dragon. So Blue Eyes White Dragon is essentially the Charizard equivalent in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a really popular monster. It's kind of like their mascot or one of their mascots. In 2016, they really wanted the Blue Eyes White Dragon to be good because it's usually never been good, like Charizard. So they gave it a ton of support. And it actually won the 2016 World Championships. Yeah, even though I don't play a whole lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore, I still kind of keep up with it every now and then. Like, there's some YouTubers that I'll watch that'll kind of keep me informed on what's going on with Yu-Gi-Oh! I just, I don't actually play the game. Oh yeah, this Jirachi with his skateboard is such a good combo. Jirachi, you Stellar Witch. Ooh, sorry, Stellar Wish. Look at the top five cards of the deck. Reveal a trainer card you find there and put it into your hand. So it could be any kind of trainer. Uh, supporter, stadium, item. Put it in your hand. But then it goes to sleep. And then you give it an escape board. It gives it a free retreat cost. Plus it can still retreat even if it's asleep or paralyzed. So after you use... Jirachi's ability, just switch out and go with your attacker. Heatran was a pretty good surprise attacker. Uh, the ability, once during your turn, when it moves from the bench to the active spot, move any number of fire energy from your other Pokemon to it. So as soon as it hits the bench, if you can switch your active out of the active spot, Promote the heat train. Just give it a ton of energy. Get it ready to attack. Mm. 
Nine Tails. Oh, yeah, that's the one you were just talking about, huh? I kind of forgot about this guy. Discard two fire energies from your hand and then bring up one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Yeah, so basically boss's orders by discarding two fires. How did I forget about that guy? Oh, yes. Welcome back. Got a haircut and came back. Oh, nice. I recognize his energies. 2019. Yep, this is the Reshiram Charizard deck. 2019. This is the third 2019 deck we've done the Blacephalon GX and Picarom so far. Oh, the Nine Tails I was talking about, like Bright Look Luxray, not the team up one. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Not this one. I guess I don't know my Nine Tails that well. Here's the, the main Pokemon, Reshiram Charizard GX. To run out of sleeves here. Nice, that means you're almost done. Yeah, I am actually. I mean, it'll still take me a couple hours, I think, but I think if I power through, I should be able to finish by today and finally get this whole thing over with. I, I still can't believe that I thought I could finish this in one day. When I thought, hey, you know, I'll just, I'll sleeve them all in, in one go. <laughs> oh man, how naive I was. Okay, gotta go to our next one. Yeah, it's been about five and a half hours, so between last week and today, it's, I've been sleeping for ten hours now. We still need more streams in the future, though. Really? What kind of streams would I do in the future? I don't know. I have been thinking about doing those. I don't know if you've seen my videos of them. But those um, like pixel art pictures where I just get like a ton of Pokemon cards and make Pokemon um, like the, the pixelized forms from the Game Boy and stuff. I've been thinking about doing like a live stream of that just as I make some Pokemon. Just um, have it recording so I can just chat with people. But I haven't gotten, gotten around to doing that. I haven't made one of those pixel art things in a long time. Oh, yes, I did. Those are awesome. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I haven't been able to do a whole lot of them because what I wanted to do is I wanted to start doing them using the Scarlet and Violet cards because I want to use the Silver Border cards, but I just didn't have enough. I had a lot of the you know original ones with the Yellow Border, but I want to switch over to the Silver ones. But now I think I have more than enough. Now the thing is just to actually make room to make those because I do those pictures in, in this room, but it's really crowded because you know I got this table in the way. I got my bulk boxes back there. I have my deck boxes over there. <laughs> it's just really crowded in here and I haven't gone around to cleaning up in here. But yeah, the ones I want to do are, um, I want to make uh, Suicune, Raikou, and Entei. And what else? I already made the, the Gen 1 and 2 starters. I might move on to the Gen 3 starters. So Blaziken, uh, Swampert, and Sceptile. Those would be cool to do. All right, done. Just finish another one. Let me just put this one away.
uh, the Danny GX is adorable. It really is. Actually, I like the the promo artwork when it's just got like the the cheeks kind of like <laughs> puffed up. Those that, that was my favorite artwork of it. Okay, it's gonna be the final one for 2019. The Mewtwo and me, Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX Toolbox deck because it has the perfection ability. It can use the attacks of any GX or EX Pokemon on your bench or in your discard pile. So just send a bunch of uh, strong GX Pokemon to the discard, and then Mewtwo and Mew can copy their attacks. Now, here we go. And I believe this is the one that won the World Championships. Where was the World Championships? I didn't talk about that. Oh, Washington, D.C. Yeah, that was another year that I could not go. I wanted to go, but I was broke. I could not go anywhere. And speaking of worlds, I do want to go this year to Honolulu, but it's another one of those years that I just cannot afford to travel. Oh, well. Maybe next year. I'm not going to compete, you know, competitively to try to get my invite. I think my time has long since passed for that kind of thing. I'm no longer a competitor, but it would be cool just to go and check it out. I wonder how well these decks would perform against the current meta ones. I don't know. I don't think they would do too well because, I mean, back in the day, 270 HP was a lot, but it gave up three prizes in exchange. And nowadays you have Pokemon with over 300 HP that only give up two prizes in exchange. So the, the, prize, um, the prize exchange would not be very balanced in these guys' favor. So yeah, I think current format is just too strong. Never say never. Maybe one day you'll get back into the scene if the meta is appealing. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I, it would be super cool to go to Worlds like as a, as a competitor, get my invite and all that. But, you know, getting that many championship points, it's just, it's too expensive nowadays. Like traveling to all the, the regionals and internationals and all that stuff, it's just not really feasible. And I don't really, I don't think I, I'd be able to get all my points just from like um, cups and league challenges and stuff like that. So I, I'd have to go to the bigger regionals and internationals, but I, I can't afford to travel that much. Yeah, current format is crazy fast, too. Pretty much every tag team besides Lucario, Melmetal, and the Dragon types fell off and expanded. So yeah, these guys wouldn't make it in standard. I think the only way that I might I might see them be like, I don't know, have somewhat of a chance is if, let's say, for example, I use this deck against, I don't know, like Charizard. If I were to make all the tag teams just give up two prizes instead of the usual three, that might give them a little more of an edge because instead of having to knock out just two Mew to Mew, they have to knock out all three of them. So that might work. But just as things are right now, yeah, it would not work out for them. Hold on. What song is this? I don't recognize it. Oh, it's from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. I never played those games, actually. Never got into them. Okay, this one I recognize. This is from Diamond and Pearl. <clears throat> she and Pal is a nightmare. Can 
one of KO VMAXs with 330 HP. I tried an old Dragonite V deck, Gyarados V, and regretted it instantly. <laughs> yeah, there's usually a, a deck like in most formats like that that can just hit for like unlimited damage, depending on how much energy you discard. Like I just uh, sleeved up the Blacephalon GX a little while ago. Had a really similar thing. I mean, what other Pokemon have been have there been that can do that? Um, hold on, hold on. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, let's see, what was I talking about? Yeah, I don't recognize that song too. Not a fan of those either. Oh, the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? Yeah, I think I tried playing it once and I, I just couldn't get into them. I can't really get into the spin off games like the Mystery Dungeon or Pokemon Ranger. The only, I guess, Pokemon spin-off games that I really liked were the Pokemon Snap games. Uh, just because I'm a photographer, <laughs> I like taking pictures. And what else? Pokemon Pinball was a lot of fun back in the day. But that's pretty much it. Didn't really get into the other ones. What about Pinball? Yeah, Pinball was fun. I actually really liked the first Pokemon Ranger. Yeah, I tried getting into Pokemon Ranger. I just... I couldn't do it. I did really like the GameCube games, though. The Pokemon Coliseum and stuff. Those were a lot of fun. But that was mostly because they were... They were pretty similar to the mainline games. You know, just going around catching, battling... But Pokemon Coliseum had a really cool story to it. Like, you go, go around stealing other people's Pokemon. That was really good. And then you had Shadow Lugia in the Gale of Darkness game. That was such a cool concept with the Shadow Pokemon. I think they should bring back Shadow Pokemon. <clears throat> I think they have Shadow Pokemon in uh, Pokemon Go, right? And what else? I've seen Shadow... What's it called? Shadow Mewtwo in the Pokémon Tournament. But I haven't seen them again in mainline games. I hate to call it a spin-off, but obviously the best one is Pokémon TCG. <laughs> to me, that's a mainline game. I'm going to put the second one best uh, Game Boy Color games. Didn't the second one only get um, come out in Japan? I did really like the original Pokemon TCG game on the Game Boy. That one was a lot of fun. Okay, just finished. The final 2019 deck, Mewtwo and Mew GX. Let me put this one away real quick. Okay, just eight more decks. 2023, oh sorry, 2022, and then 2023. 
Oh, I can actually see the end in sight. All right, next booster. Shrimish, like a tongue. Slugma, Solosis, Heavy Baton, Mist Energy, Sandy Shocks, Metagross, Solosis, <laughs> Iron Leaves. This is the third Iron Leaves I've gotten out of this box. I got the gold one, the alternate art, and now the full art. I guess this is the Iron Leaves box. <laughs> All right. Full art hype. Sadly, there's an English patch online now. Just like gold and silver, there are two regions, so to say. Oh, really? That's pretty cool. Maybe I should check it out sometime. Okay, so after 20... 19 we jump all the way to 2022 because there wasn't any worlds for 2020 and 2021 because we were all locked down but here we go when worlds came back uh, to the pokemon tcg it was in london the first time in europe so we got the new vmax deck so of course people that play standard know that new vmax has been one of the best decks since it came out Cross Fusion Strike, copy the attack of Technoblast, and Genesect with cross uh, with the Fusion Strike system. Just draw cards until you have the same number of cards in your hand as you have Fusion Pokemon in play. So just load up your bench with Fusion Strike Pokemon. You can draw up to six per Genesect, and then Mew, just copy their attack and win games. Here we go. This is my main deck last year. <laughs> After a while, I just kind of got tired of Mew VMAX. It was everywhere. <clears throat> it's a shame that we didn't really get to have a full 2020 or 2021 format. Because I just wanted to see what would have been like the top decks. I know we had like other tournaments to kind of um, take the world championships place. Like we had the Player Cup Finals. That was the official one by, by the Pokemon Company. But then 2020, we also had that... Uh, actually, I, know, I think both years, 2020 and 2021, we had like a, a fan one called the... Pokemon Online Global Championship or something like that. So for 2020, I kind of used some of the deck lists from the unofficial fan-made one. Just because they actually use like the proper, or what I call the proper format of that year. But then for 2021, I made decks from the Players' Cup, like the official ones. I just love the new VMAX artwork. That's kind of classic. I did like the, the full art one. That was a pretty cool picture. Yeah, even the even though the original one looks pretty good. I think Mew VMAX was really the first deck that just abused battle vip pass because i don't think it was like as prominent in decks back in the day and then mew just came around like yeah i'll put four battle vip pass because even when you you know when you can't use them anymore they're still good discard fodder for fodder for your chronomatics if you get lucky on the coin flip you could search out for anything you want and here it is the infamous battle vip pass on your first turn Search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon, put them onto your bench.
Yeah, that was a pretty busted card. So a lot of people were, were happy to see it go. And now it's kind of been replaced by the Buddy Buddy Poffin. But it's a lot more balanced. about done with sleeves from this box. And done with another one. All right, next box. I can't believe I'm almost done. After this one, just seven more decks. I can finally put this ridiculous project to rest. And then people will finally stop telling me to sleeve my World Championship decks. Those were always interesting comments to get. What's good about the Buddy Buddy Poffin is you can use it anytime, not only your first turn. Yeah, so it's not like a dead card later on in the game. <clears throat> Plus it just makes some evolution-based decks a little more consistent, like the Charizard and Chien Pao ones. But it does also help the Lost Box deck, which I think was pretty strong to begin with. Although they did lose, what's it called, um, Escape Rope. They don't have Escape Rope anymore. But, yeah, I, I don't think I really slowed them down too much. Lost Box is still a pretty good format. No, not format. Pretty good deck in this format. I also think it's just a really cool gimmick of using the Lost Zone to fuel your abilities. And it just kind of keeps adding, like, the more cards you send to the Lost Zone, the more things you can do. Like, at 4, you can use Cramorant's Attack. At 7, you can use your Mirage Gates. At 10, you can use Sableye's Attack, Giratina's um, V-Star Attack. There's one more, I think, but nobody uses it. I think it's Fantina? The supporter. If you have 10 cards in the Lost Zone, your Pokemon take 100 less damage during your next turn. But I don't know, I don't think it's really worth using your supporter for the turn. Almost done with this one. And done. Mew V Max 2022. Sleeved and ready to go. But this is not the last time we're going to see Mew V Max. We're going to see it again the following year. Right, let me just put this one away real quick. All right, next one, Origin Form, Palkia V-Star. Actually a pretty fun deck. I like I like the introduction of the V-Star powers, like GX attacks. You can only use them once per game. You really got to be careful with which V-Star power you're going to use. <clears throat> oh, and of course, this deck ran... 
the really good consistency line of Intellion, Shady Dealings. You can pretty much search for anything. I mean, the, the card itself says search your deck for either one trainer card or two trainer cards with Intellion. But with those trainer cards, it just kind of opens up the rest of the deck. If you need Pokemon, you can search out Level Ball or Ultra Ball. If you need Energy, you can search out the Capacious Bucket or Energy Search. So yeah, a really good search engine. And then Palkia V-Star is just a really good attacker in general. Two energy for a pretty strong attack. And the ability was really good too. Get three energy from the discard pile back onto your Pokemon. So just power itself up in one turn. You, you can also power up uh, Radiant Greninja in a single turn too. To potentially snipe two Pokemon on your opponent's bench. So overall, it's a pretty fun deck to use. Ew, Palkia. <laughs> Maybe in the future you can show off your updated collection. Would be a nice idea for a stream also. I don't think I would do a stream for that one. Because I'm already planning on just doing um, a regular video for that. But it's going to be a very long video. Where I do... Like breakdowns of every single one of my decks. But that is going to have to wait until summer when I have some time off. Because that is going to be a giant commitment. I've kind of started to write down the script for that video, but I'm nowhere near finished with it. I used that Palky in a fun deck I made last year with Pokemon Go Blast Toys. Nowhere near competitive, but a fun deck. I do like the, the Pokemon Go Blastoise and Charizard. I mean, their, their abilities were good for, like you said, kind of like casual fun ideas. I did like the combination of uh, Charizard and I think it was Scentiscorch. And you combine it with the Blastoise too. And I think it was um, Scentiscorch. For every fire energy on Scentiscorch, discard the top card of your opponent's deck. So you use Blast Toys, get six energy onto your Scentiscorch. And it doesn't have to be water, you can use any energy, right? Six fire energy onto Scentiscorch. And with Charizard's ability, it doubles them, so you basically have 12 energy cards on your Scentiscorch. And discard the top 12 cards of your opponent's deck with one attack. <laughs> that was really good. I have to find whatever they were smoking when they decided Suicune V. Already was a great deck. Needed to do 40 more damage and have 70 more HP. Oh yeah, I forgot the Suicune V was a, already a, a deck. Um, it was used with, the, what's it called, Ludicolo, right? Yeah, I didn't really play competitively, competitively during that time. I was kind of getting settled. Into uh, into living here in Oregon because that was around the time that I moved, so I didn't have a whole lot of um, time or resources to commit to playing Pokemon. <clears throat> On speaking of that Suicune V, actually I just got one yesterday when I was opening some uh, Evolving Skies booster packs. That was one of the cards that I pulled. Oh, there's Radiant Greninja. I would say Radiant Greninja is the best Radiant Pokemon we have. Combination of a really good ability and a really good attack too. I mean, the attack can only be used with water energy, but the ability can uh, be used in pretty much every deck. I think the only Radiant Pokemon that can maybe come close to being as good as the Greninja is maybe Radiant Charizard, because it's such a good attacker in the late game. But I say overall, Greninja is a way better card. And what other Radiant Pokemon do we have? Um, Alakazam is... Yeah, it's okay for like 
spread decks. It was better when Metachain was still in the format to set up some uh, Yoga Loop combos. Uh, what else? I don't know. There's not a whole lot of good Radiant Pokemon. Radiant Gardevoir was kind of good just to give your Pokemon some more um, longevity. I really wanted the Radiant Eternatus to be good when it comes into play. Bench two V Maxes. I was hoping that'd be a good card. <clears throat> but it did not work out that way. Oh, Radiant Jirachi flipped two heads and one hit KO something. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was such a fun gimmick. I think I actually saw some people play it, like, uh, like in tournaments. So every time they flipped one heads, like it would get really tense because they might get the second heads. <laughs> it was really fun. Okay, we just finished Origin Form Palkia V-Star. I believe that's the second deck. Uh, hold on. Just got to put some stuff away up here. There we go. Next one, Rapid Strike Urshifu V Max. Gale Thrust, pretty similar to the Galisopod GX. When it moves from the bench to the active spot, deals more damage, but this one can go up to 150. And then G Max Rapid Flow, discard all energy, and then pick two of your opponent's Pokemon, hit them each for 120 damage, which is really good. Take some quick KOs with this, uh, with this combo. Also ran the Inteleon search engine just to get whatever trainer cards you needed. And there it is, Metacham. If you can set up a Yoga Loop knockout, you take a second turn in a row, which is really good. But you cannot use two Yoga Loops in a row. Although I, I did think it'd be pretty funny if you could like use... Use... Yoga Loop, take another turn. Dialga V-Star, take another turn. Back to Yoga Loop, take another turn. That'd be funny. It's really impractic impractical, but if you could somehow pull it off, you can do four turns in a row while your opponent just sits there. I plan on the fun Blasters Go deck for Lulz. Oh, the Radiant Jirachi. I used that expanded, and it was quite good if you, if you could dodge item lock. Also, Greninja is the reason people have wasted card slot for Manaphy nowadays. Yeah, it's true. You don't want to get hit by a Moonlight Shuriken. Just about out of slaves from this box. Oh, wait, did I forget to open a booster pack? I think I did. Hold on, let me just finish this one right here. Uh, yeah, I sleeved up the Mew deck and the Palkia deck. Oh, yeah, I forgot to open a booster pack. Hold on, hold on. Okay, next booster pack. And hold on. It's been six hours. I'm so tired. Oops. All right. Right shoe. Big T. Bronzor. Oh, it looks like ads will be running shortly. Uh oh. Um. Well, I guess I have to wait for after the ads to finish seeing what I got. Uh, nothing good.
Actually, a Cheryl. I forgot to mention the Cheryl. Heal all damage from your evolution Pokemon. If you do discard all energy from the Pokemon that were healed in this way, it's a pretty good way to keep your Urshifu VMAX around a little longer, especially after using GMAX Rapid Flow because you, you'll discard all your energy anyway, so you just heal up all the damage and then just keep attacking. I mean, you have to find more energy to attack with, or you could just retreat into another Urshifu and just keep dealing damage that way. <clears throat> Sobble Sobble is actually a pretty good Pokemon in this type of archetype. Keep calling the attack. Uh, search your deck for up to three Rapid Strike Pokemon. So you can get more Sobble, you can get the Remoraid for the Octillery, or you can get more Urshifu V. They're all Rapid Strike Pokemon. FDO 2808. What's up? Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the live stream. I've been going for six hours. I'm slowly going insane. But I'm actually almost done. I'm sleeving up. This is the third uh, 2022 deck. After I finish with this one, I'll just have one more. And then the last four will be the 2023. Wait, did I say 2023 earlier? If I did, I meant to say 2022. And then I'm almost done. Just five more decks after this one. And then I'll finally call it a day. I've been going for six hours and I am exhausted. I'm hungry and my back hurts. But I'm almost done. I can keep going. What the heck? Oh, this, this thing feels weird. It's not ripped, but I can't... Something is wrong with it. I don't know. Okay, I'm not going to use that one. Here we go. That one feels better. Almost there. Victory is right before your eyes. <laughs> Definitely worth the efforts. Yes. Almost done. And also, thank you so much, guys, for just keeping me company. Otherwise, if I was doing this by myself... I definitely would have gone insane by now. <laughs> oh yeah, here's the Manaphy. Wave Veil. Prevent all damage done to your benched Pokemon from attacks. So you need that when you're going up against other Urshifu VMAX or Radiant Greninja. How many Pokemon have we had in the TCG that can protect your bench like that? Like recently we had the Mew with the bench barrier. I think we also had a Mr. Mime during Black and White. Oops. Have there been any other Pokemon that protect your bench like that? I think there was a Machoke that can also do that. I forgot what the ability was called. <clears throat> And I think Rhydon, there was a Rhydon back from um, Ruby Sapphire that can also protect your bench. I think it was used in the Needle Queen deck back in 2005. Oh, now I gotta go back and double check. But I think that the Rhydon could also, like, work as an attacker in case you needed it. Because most Pokemon that can protect the bench, they just sit there and protect the bench. They don't actually get used for their attacks. But I think Rhydon was one of the exceptions that can actually deal some damage back. <coughs> oh, hold on, I gotta get another drink of water. Oh yeah, here we go. Manaphy, Mew, Mr. Mime, Machoke. It's funny, most of them start with the letter M. <laughs> so if you're, po if you're a Pokemon starting with the letter M, you have a pretty good chance of protecting the bench. Uh, Rapscock. Oh yeah, I've seen the Rapscock. Uh, just came out in this set, right? Cloister, Ducktrio, Rhydon from Hidden Legends. Yeah, that's the one I was just talking about. 
Bastiodon. Shining Arc. Only if active. Okay, actually, I didn't know about that one. <clears throat> Mr. Mimes times two, since there's Fairy and Psychic Prince. Oh, yeah, I did see the Fairy one, too. I kind of forgot about that one, though. I was only thinking about the Psychic type one. I keep forgetting that Mr. Mime is now technically a Fairy type. That's weird. I said me an extra two in 2010. Oh yeah. yeah! There's been a lot of Pokemon with that ability. <clears throat> but I guess they just, um, they become more viable the more Pokemon there are that can hit the bench. Like currently we have the Greninja. And then back during Black and White we had Kyurem. Um... Landorus, Darkrai, we had a lot. <clears throat> Alright, here we go, we just finished another one. Rapid Strike, Urshifu, VMAX. Let me just put this one away. And last one. Oops, I dropped some of the cards. Here we go. Uh, hold on, let me just get the last four decks out of this box, too. They keep sliding all over the place. There we go. I've got the rest of my championship decks on the table, so we're almost done. This is the last one for 2022, and then just four more for 2023, and we're done. Oh, true. Main deck trick is everything except itself. <laughs> last one. Last one for 2022. We still have the four decks from 2023, and then we'll be done. Oh, the uh, music just finished. Hold on. Let me put on the next one. Uh, which which one should I put? Okay, I'll just go back to the first video I did. <clears throat> okay, so this is the Arceus V Star deck featuring Flying Pikachu and Hisuian Decidueye. The new ADP. So Decidueye was just to hit opposing Arceus for weakness, and the Pikachu was to hit uh, Palkia for weakness. Plus it's also really good just for not taking damage from basic Pokemon. All right, here we go. Oh wait, hold on. This is that weird. Sleeve. I'm just gonna throw that one away. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with that sleeve. It just feels like really loose, like it's about to rip at any moment. I hate Bidoof and Bibero as Pokemon from the video game, but I also refuse to play them in the TCG. I know they're good in heck. Oh, and heck no. <laughs> what's wrong with Bidoof? I hated this ADP deck. Such a far cry from the cool Arceus and Teleon deck. Yeah, I think this this deck was just a meta call. Like Pikachu for the Palkia matchup and the Decidueye for the for the mirror match. <clears throat> But I do like just the Arceus V-Star card on its own. I think it's got a really good balance of V-Star power. And it's got a really good attack. Just um, accelerate 
three energy to your V Pokemon, but it doesn't feel overpowered, you know? Like, it doesn't do too much damage. Like, you can't one-hit KO other big V Pokemon. And the ability is just once per game. But nowadays, I don't think Arceus is as good as it used to be because a lot of the good V Pokemon have been rotated out or they've been power crept by stronger EX Pokemon. Everything about it, a straight up hated. <laughs> they could have given the ability to center it and fur it, but no. <laughs> you know what? You're right. They haven't shown center it and fur it a whole lot of love. <clears throat> now that I think about it, have there been any good centered for it? I mean, I know they had one back in the e reader format. Shuffle two cards from your hand into your deck and then search your card for any energy you want. So you, it'll be played alongside Scizor, just to load up Scizor with um, special metal energies or rainbow energies. But other than that, have, have there been any other good ferret cards? I don't know. Furret in 04 was really good, and Furret 08, search two cards for free. Saw a lot of use in mats. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Oh, 08 is definitely a blind spot of mine. And playing BDSP was a nightmare. Every time you use HM move in the game, they had to show a dumpy doof. <laughs> I think that was just kind of like a callback to the original Diamond Pearl. Everybody used the barrel as their HM slave because they can learn like most of them. Like strength, surf, rock climb. Um, what else? Whatever other HMs there were. Can it learn cut? I don't remember if it can learn cut. Definitely cannot learn fly. Well, I guess you could give Bibero the flying Pikachu treatment and just give it some balloons. Then it could learn fly. Oh yeah, so earlier I was talking about Hisui and Decidui, and I don't know, I just, I don't really like the design too much, especially compared to the original Decidui. I like the the normal one better than the newer one. Oh no, please don't give him my ideas. Your Bidoof can't learn fly. Sounds like a you problem. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm just not good at this game. If I can't train my Bidoof to fly. Robin Hood Decidue was better. Yeah, I, I way prefer the original Decidue. You guys have any ideas of what you want the starter Pokemon to be in the new Legends game? Like, I want Tepig to be a, the fire starter just to give us a better form of Embor. Because <laughs> I do not like the original Embor. And for grass, what did I say? Septile. I think Trico could be the a good grass starter, so we can get a new Septile form. Chikorita. Yeah, Chikorita could use some love too. Meganium is like so overshadowed by like everything. We just finish another one. We only have four. Sleep boxes left. <clears throat> oh, 
I think they're just going to use the Callow starters. The Hisui ones will probably change so they don't overlap with Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl having the same. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. It still would be cool though, to get different ones from different regions. But if we do get the original Kalos ones, I'm hoping they either get new forms or maybe some like actual Mega Evolutions. I'm surprised that, you know, for being the region that introduced Mega Pokemon, their starters did not have Mega Evolutions. But of course, the original Kanto ones did, because of course, of course they did. And of course, Charizard had to have two of them. All right, just finished the last of the 22, 2022 decks. And finally, let's go on to the last ones. I'm going to set them aside over here. We got Lost Zone Kyogre, Lugia V Star, Mew V Max, and Gardevoir EX. The last four, and we're done. All right, I'm going to start with the Kyogre. I think this is the one that won the junior division. I actually collect Chikorita cards. There aren't many, so it's easy to get them all. There are a few Japanese exclusive Chikorita line cards that are nice. Yeah, not really too much of a fan of, of Chikorita. I mean, I got nothing against it, but it's never been my favorite. Out of the Gen 2 starters, I would say For Alligator is my favorite one. So it would be cool if Relegator got like another, another form or a Mega Evolution. That'd be cool to see. Oh, you know what? I actually, I forgot to open the booster pack again. Hold on, let me just do this real quick. Booster pack time. All right, for this one, we got Scyther, Skitty, Electabuzz, Bramblin, Behem, Rapidash, Boltund, Shaman, Latias, Roaring Moon, and Grass Energy. And we're actually down to our last three booster packs, so I think at this point I could just open one after every deck. And that should be good. Oops. I've been going for almost six and a half hours, but I'm almost done. We're on the final four decks. I can call it a day. Oh, Forest Seal Stone. Such a good item card. Attach it to your V Pokemon. Use the ability as your V Star power. Search for any card in your deck. Only thing I don't like about it is it just it was another another way to mu make a Mew V Max um, consistent because that's the last thing Mew V Max needed. <laughs> a guaranteed Chromatic. So this is the Lost Zone box deck. Use Comfey and Colress's Experiment. Load up your Lost Zone with cards to unlock the abilities of your other Pokemon and trainers. So Cramorant can attack for free. Mirage Gate can accelerate energy from your deck. And then Sableye can place up to 12 
uh, damage counters on anywhere on the opponent's side of the field. And because it doesn't count as damage, Manaphy cannot block it. We've also got some pretty good uh, V Pokemon. You got the Dragonite, can be powered up in a single turn with the um, Mirage Gate, attack for 250. That's a lot of damage to be powered up in a single turn. There's a Chloras experiment. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Keep three, put the other two in the Lost Zone. And here's the other good V Pokemon, Raikou. Lightning Rondo does more damage the more benched Pokemon there are. And it can also hit Lugia and Palkia for a weakness. Something else that I hate about it is its price. Dragonite! Yeah, get yourself a Dragonite! <laughs> I got it. We got the Dragonite. Hold on. Where'd it go? There we go. I'll leave that one aside for you. I'll keep it on camera. I wonder if we'll get like a Mega Dragonite in the new Legends game. A lot of the um, Pseudo Legends got Mega Forms. The Tyranitar, Salamence, Metagross, Garchomp. And Dragon ain't got nothing. This one would be called Dragonite Dite. <laughs> that would sound awkward. Dragonite. -ite. That's true. Or if um, Yon Mega got a Mega form, it'd be Mega Yon Mega. I think in Japanese, Yon Mega is just called Mega Yanma, right? So it'd be Mega Mega Yanma. Hopefully we'll finally get Flygon Mega. I know, yeah, I'm really hoping to make that one. Developers admitted last time that they should have gotten one, but they couldn't come up with a good enough design. Yeah, Artist Block was the only reason we didn't get a Mega Flygon. <laughs> What other good Mega Pokemon should they make? I don't know. Not something that's already like popular or strong. Like a Pokemon that actually needs like the boost. Like Furret that we were just talking about. <laughs> or maybe a Mega Bibarel. That'd be cool, right? Mega Bibarel? <laughs> Mega Go Lurk. Oh, yeah, that would be cool, actually. Tried to make up for it by giving Dragon Dance and Sun and Moon, but it wasn't enough. Oh, heck no. <laughs> no. No Mega the Barrel. I'm going to manifest it. I'm going to put that energy out into the world, and we're going to get Mega the Barrel. You just watch. All right, we are done with the Lost Zone Kyogre deck. Just three more to go. Okay, next up is the Senior Division Champion, Lugia V-Star. Oh yeah, booster pack time first. All right. You know, let me just put the booster packs on top of these so I don't forget. Alright, from this one we're getting... Ghastly, Finizen, Dunsparce, Pikachu, 
Future Booster Energy Capsule. Iron Hands. Rescue Board. Oh, that's good. I'm going to keep that aside. Colossal. Breloom. Bramble Gas. And a Water Energy. Okay, Rescue Board. Not bad, not bad. Just three more decks and two more boosters. We're almost done. The non-OP Iron Hands. Yeah, they gotta give us a little version of it too. Okay, so Lugia V Star. Use Summoning Star. Get some Archeops out of the discard pile. Put them directly onto your bench. And then use Archeops Primal Turbo ability. Search your deck for up to two special energy cards and attach them to one of your Pokemon. So back in the day when we had access to the Aurora energy, which was basically a rainbow energy, Lugia V-Star and Archeops can pretty much power up anything in the deck, which is why it was such a such a strong deck. And also, I'm pretty sure why we don't have any rainbow energies in the format right now, because it would just make Lugia V-Star overpowered again. Oh, there's a huge glare on that. My bad. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so this version of Lugia V-Star only runs the colorless energy, or different forms of it. We have therapeutic energy, V-Guard energy, double turbo energy. Um, what was the other one? Gift energy, I think. Is it called Gift Energy or... Oh, yeah, Jet Energy. Forgot about that one. Yeah, Gift Energy. So a lot of different colorless energy to power up your attackers. You're hitting with uh, Snorlax, a really good single prize Pokemon. And with, uh, with the Therapeutic Energy, Snorlax doesn't go to sleep after attacking, so that's pretty good. We are due for the late late game. Frontier Road, move all the damage. Sorry, all the energy from your Pokemon onto it. And then it does 40 damage for every energy attached. I can't wait to buy this Lugia V Star deck and then never touch it again. <laughs> I mean it's better than the Aurora energy version. <clears throat> it's not as oppressive. Oh, excuse me. My voice is going. I'm going to get some more water real quick. Okay, here we go. Almost done. <clears throat> Been going for six and a half hours. I'm going to have to catch the highlights on the Orlando... <clears throat> Orlando Regionals. I was watching it this morning before I started live streaming. So if you guys caught the ending, please don't do not spoil it for me. Okay, we're just about done with sleeves from this box, then we can go into the next one. It looks like I overestimated how many cards, I mean, how many sleeves I'd be needing, because I still have three sealed boxes over here, but I'm not going to need that many for these last two decks. So, I guess I just have some leftover sleeves I can use for other stuff. Oh, Radiant Serena! I forgot about this Radiant Pokémon. Once during your turn, heal 20 damage from each of your Pokémon, so good against Lost Zone Box, if they're trying to knock you out with the Sableye or Radiant Greninja damage. Okay, last one from this one. Go on to the next. There's a giant pile of boxes next to my feet on the floor over here. Okay, almost done, almost done. Just about done with this deck, and then two more. 
And then this chapter of our lives will finally be behind us. I was slacking wasn't a good attacker. It couldn't attack if um, if you had exactly two, four, or six prize cards because of its ability. But you could turn that off by putting in uh, Path to the Peak in play, shut off Slacking's ability, and you just attack every single turn. Your recycling handler is going to love you this <laughs> Yeah, I don't really have any use for these empty boxes now. I was you know, planning on using them to just store some decks. But since I got the new storage box, I don't need them. So yeah, they're just going straight into the recycle bin. So tired. I know I keep complaining about how tired I am, but sitting for six and a half hours, it's pretty painful. I use them as placeholders for boxes and ETBs that aren't full, so stuff doesn't slide around. Yeah, it's actually what I'm doing right now when I'm putting these decks away in my storage box. I'm using one of these to hold everything in place because I was having that problem a little while ago that stuff was just sliding around. Almost done. Just four more cards in this deck. And done. Just two more decks to go. Keep it the Lugia B star on top. Next one, going to Gardevoir EX, the runner-up in the Masters Division. You got to do some stretching and lay down a bit when you finish. Yeah. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go eat. I am hungry. <clears throat> but yeah, then I just got to, like, take a break. All right. So second to last booster pack here. Let's see what we get. Giraffe rig. Roselia, Cutie Fly, Drillbur, Mudsdale, Cypher Maniacs, Code Breaking. It's a good one. Let's set that aside. Sawsbuck, Totodile, Meryl, Feraligator, and Basic Darkness Energy. Okay, I'm going to keep the Feraligator too. I just think it's a fun little gimmick deck. It does hit for a lot of damage, though, with its ability. Your favorite Johto boy. <laughs> I'll have dinner ready. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's my wife in the chat. She's in the other room. <laughs> okay, second to last deck. Masters Division runner-up. Gardevoir EX. I really wanted this deck to win. Because I was so sick of Mew. But I just couldn't pull through in the final round. <clears throat> Zoshin V. He's a really good attacker, combining with Gardevoir. There were surprisingly a lot of really playable cards in the 25th anniversary set. Like we got the Mew, the Zoshin. Um, what else was there? I know there was, there was at least one more, right, that was playable. I forgot what it was now. Oh, the Kyogre. I just saw it.
course, the obligatory mana fee to protect you for, from a Radiant Greninja, especially when you had a bunch of the Curlia on your bench for the refinement ability. You didn't want them to get knocked out. Reversal energy. If you're behind on prizes, attach it to your um, Gardevoir to quickly power it up and start dealing a lot of damage. For a Seal Stone, of course, for your V-Star power, attach it to your Zacian to search for one card out of your deck. I was playing in a tournament. I was using the Gardevoir EX deck with, uh, what's it called, Screamtail. And I was going up against uh, a Chien Pao player. And every turn, he tried to set up a new Frigibax on his bench. I would just knock it out with, <laughs> with a Screamtail. I never let him get set up. And I mean, he knocked out my Screamtail just by manually attaching to a Chien Pao. But I kept on using Super Rod in combination with the Nest Ball just to get the Screamtail back into the deck, back into the bench, power it up with the Gardevoir, and just keep sniping his his Frigibex. Yeah, I don't think he was very happy with me. <laughs> oh yeah, there's the, the Mew. Chin Pao. I can't with... It's so annoying. It's, <laughs> so it's deserved. I like Chien Pao the Pokemon. Like, I like the story behind, like, those four Treasures of Ruin Pokemon. Chien Pao, uh, what are they called? Wo Chien, Ting Lu, and Chi Yu. And my favorite one out of the four is Chien Pao. I just like the concept of having, like, a broken sword as its teeth. It looks so cool. Same, I see it as a cat, and I love cats. Yeah, it is a saber-toothed cat, right? Like, literally, it has sabers as its teeth. <laughs> Maybe not sabers, but it's a sword. You know what I mean. <clears throat> but the, <laughs> the deck can go away. I mean, all you gotta do is just use a... The de-evolution TM. De-evolve their Bex Caliber back into Frigibax and just run them out of their uh, rare candies. If you can use Eerie, the supporter, with the de-evolution, just take the rare candies out of their hand, de-evolve their Bex Caliber, they can't do anything to you. Okay, so I like, I just like swords, like in general. So I want to, I was trying to find if somebody made like artwork of it. I haven't found it yet, but I want to see like a, an artwork of Zacian with its sword fighting against the Chien Pao and its sword teeth. That'd be such a cool picture. I tried to draw it myself, but I'm not that good. Although I am getting better. Slowly. I've been, um, I've been teaching myself how to draw over the past year. I even got like a Skillshare account and I watched some videos on how to learn to draw. So I've actually, I have made a pretty noticeable improvement over the past year, but I'm still nowhere near good. <clears throat> Just about done with Gardevoir EX. Oh yeah, and Cresselia. Cresselia was such a good counter to Sableye. If they tried to spread damage to your side of the field, just Moonglow Reverse. Move that damage back to their side. 
You can even snipe with a Sableye too. Oh yeah, but this is the, the attacking guard of war. I was so sad when it was rotated because it has such a good ability and attack. It just had perfect synergy with Guard of War EX. <clears throat> so now we don't really have a good partner for Guard of War in the current format. I mean, people are trying Screamtail and Drifloon, but I don't know. They're, they're just not as good. Oops. Crunchy and Pow is fast, even for the for this version of Guard of War. So stressful to play against. Yeah, but even with <clears throat> with how good Chien Pao can be, Charizard is still better. <clears throat> because it can just um, accelerate energy onto itself from the deck, and then has Pidgeot to back it up. You can just search out whatever you need every turn. All right, we just finished Guard of War EX. Let me put this one away, and then we're we're down to the last one. Okay, final booster pack. Here we go. And then we can finally do the last deck and finish. All right, here we go. Snom, Scyther, Sizzlipede, Meryl, Sandy Shocks, Hand Tremor. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm going to set that aside. Rabska, Electivire, Scent to Scorch, Iron Boulder EX. All right, we got one more EX out of the box. That was our last one. And I was hoping it'd be Iron Crown, but you know what? An EX is still an EX. I'll settle for that. And the, the booster box is done now. That was every booster pack. So let's see what I got for today's, uh, from today's pulls. Oh, where did I put them? Uh, what does Hand Trimmer do? Oh, uh, each player discards cards from their hand until they have five cards in their hand. Your opponent discards first. So it can be good like for and against um, Snorlax stall because Snorlax usually just builds up a giant hand after drawing with um, Rotom V. You play a hand trimmer and you discard all but five of their hand the cards in their hand. But they can also do the same thing to you. Was that it? I thought I had another one. Oh yeah, there it is. Scizor and... Where did I put that other one? I know I got that little deerling. Oh, Ferrigraph. I forgot about that one. Where's my deerling? There it is. And I think that's all of them. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that is all the hits that I got from today's pulls. So I did get a second ace spec. The first one I got last week, it was a hero's cape, but this time I got another prime catcher. I got Iron Leaves EX, which is uh, the third one I got from this box. Aside from the prime catcher, this is probably my favorite one. I just love the artwork on this dearling. And then the rest are just like bulk EXs. So maybe sometime down the line, they might be good. There we go. <clears throat> Hand trimmer makes me miss playing Hue and my expanded deck, which is like which allowed me to snipe plus five mulligans. Oh wow! <laughs> All right, and we're down to the final deck. Mew V Max, the world champion of last year in Yokohama, Japan. Which I actually got to co go to. That was a lot of fun. 
<clears throat> Again, I didn't compete. I haven't been competing for a long time, but I did want to go for a couple reasons, because it's Pokemon World Championships. I try to go as often as I can, but also because it was in Japan for the first time. I've been wanting to go to Japan for most of my life. So I just decided to, like, you know what, I'm going to go, and I'm going to take my best friend with me. So one day I just kind of called him up, like, hey, you want to go to Japan with me? Like, yeah, heck yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so we ended up going to Japan. And we did get to visit um, Universal Studios in Osaka, which is super fun. It wasn't as crowded as the one in California, so we got to go on like pretty much every ride in like half a day. Okay, so this new VMAX deck isn't all that different from the one from the previous year. It did get a couple new toys to play with, so like it got the um, Forest Seal Stone just to give it more consistency. Use this path to the peak to shut off other um, Pokemon abilities. Oh yeah, the Box of Disaster. If people try to one hit KO your Mew VMAX, you deal 80 damage to them recoil. And oops. Lost City, if you knock out one of their Pokemon, send it to the Lost Zone. So pretty good against Lost Box decks because they rely on recycling their Pokemon with um, Super Rod. Just get rid of them for good. And yeah, that's the Mew VMAX deck of 2023. I was supposed to be in Japan right now, but our trip got canceled until next year. Unfortunately, since the end is really weak right now. Oh, how come it got canceled? That's not good. Yeah, I still have um, some yen. I kept uh, some leftover money. I think I kept like 40,000 yen. Um, they're in the other room right now. I just decided I want to keep some of the currency as a souvenir. I did the same thing the year before when I went to London. I kept some of the British pounds. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have a lot of sleeves left over. So I just opened this one. And I still have one more brand new over here. So I'll have enough if I want to make some new decks after this. Oops, they're sliding all over the place. Here we go. Okay, almost done. I can see the finish line. In almost seven hours. It really is almost an entire work shift. <laughs> but I said I was going to do it, so I'm going to do it. Now I'm thinking about what kind of decks do I want to make after this. Well, I'm almost done with the Spirit Tomb deck from 2021. After that, I don't know what I'm going to build. We talked about it last time, but I kind of want to build the Empoleon uh, Bronze Zone deck from 2008. But that one seems kind of pricey for right now. Uh, same thing with 2007. I want to make the flag on EX deck, but I have to wait on those. Probably just take a break from building new decks for a while. 
Oh, how many more cards do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven more cards. I'm almost done. Let's count them down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. <laughs> two. One. Finished. I am finally finished. Oh my god, I'm so relieved. Oh, I'm just, I'm over this. I am over sleeving cards for a long time. I don't want to do this anymore. Almost 12 straight hours. Well, not straight, but 12 hours combined of sleeving decks. I am done. <sighs> okay, put that one away. Something with Dragonite. Uh, what other Dragonite decks are there that I don't already have? I don't know. Let's see, I have the 2005 Dragonite Electro deck. I have 2007 Dragonite Metagross deck. Um, there are some decks, like in 20... I think it was 2016 or 2017. They have the Dragonite EX as a tech card. Um, what else? Oh, you know what? Um, Light Dragonite. I've been wanting to build a Light Dragonite deck for the... Um, what's that format? 2003. Oh, Neo through... Uh, Sky Ridge? That could be an, a good Dragonite deck to build. I pretend 2020 and 2021 doesn't exist in my collection. <laughs> really? Why? I mean, yeah, there was a lot of VMAX Pokemon, but and there's still some pretty fun decks to play. But yeah, we didn't have World Championship tournaments during those times, so I totally get it. Boom! <laughs> RSPK 08 Dragonite EX Delta 04 Dragonite EX. Um, actually, I don't know about the 2004 Dragon ADX deck. Is that the... Okay, yeah, that's the one that uses water and lightning, right? I don't think I've ever seen that deck. Is it any good? I don't even know what it does. You could even try something with the V-Star one. Oh, the V-Star? Yeah, that's not that's not a good Dragonite. The basic V is better than the Evolution, I would say. I don't know if it's good, but I remember someone recently made a deck around it. I'll have to look it up. I used to have that Dragonite back in the day, but I gave it to my friend for his birthday, because Dragonite is one of his favorite Pokemon. Okay, yeah, but you know what? I'm done. Thank you guys for stopping by keeping me company, but it's time for me to go rest and have something to eat. All right, thanks a lot for hanging out. See you later, guys. I hope you enjoyed the stream.